And I am live. Well, hello everyone out there watching in the future. As usual, um, skip forward if you want to wait to the juicier parts of the live stream because um, I usually kill some time waiting for people to get in here. And in the beginning, I hang out with the chat. And um, once some people get in here, I will go over what is going on. All right. So the notifications are going out okay. Hey, Evan. Hey, Cole. Hey, Linda. Yes, Linda, I am on early. John, Donald, Brickett fan, plugs, Noah. Good to see people here. And I am glad that the notifications are going out quickly today. <laughs> Vaughn man, yes, I guess that's your signature. All righty. Barbara, Junior Osborne, Mark. All right, good to see everybody coming in. Um, while I'm waiting for some people to roll in, and before we get started with what I got going on tonight, uh, or I should say it's not tonight, today, I just started, decided to start very early. Um, I kind of have a futuristic plan maybe for this uh, Tuesday thing we got going on. Whether I switch it to another day or not in the future, I don't know. Um, but I got some ideas for the future. So anyway, while we're waiting for some people to roll in here, um, I got my lunch. We were talking about this before the Chinese place around me that of lately I may be single-handedly helping them stay in business. We're going to chow down on some chicken and broccoli with steamed rice. The steamed rice is so white, you can barely even shows up on the camera with the glare. Oh, yeah. We're digging in right now. But uh, I'll go over what's going on after we hang out here for a little bit, and we'll kind of get started into the evening here. Um, I have some coins to go through, but I do not have sealed boxes um, sealed half dollar boxes from my bank. So I'll tell that story here in a minute, but I do have some coins to go through. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Plugs. Oh yeah. No, we're not doing three bags of gummies. I'll go, I'll go over that too. I'll go over the, the, uh, the results of last week as well. But I figured instead of just uh, eat lunch here by myself, I'd start the stream early and hang out with our, with everyone. I apologize if uh, those of you who don't like watching other people eat, I don't know what to tell you um, because I do long live streams sometimes and sometimes I eat on the streams. But yeah, I got some I got some good news today, but I also have some not good news at all. So what what has everybody got going on? Yeti yeah, said just ate lunch. What did you have for lunch? Yeah, everybody put in the chat what you ate for, what you ate for lunch. I'm having a late lunch today. Well, I ate, I ate a bit last night, so I wasn't real hungry today until now. Now I'm very hungry. Wisconsin Gold Rush had crumpets. All righty then. So when I'm done eating here too, I'm going to do the usual highest super chat today is going to get something. And it is something very, very interesting today, to say the least, of what I'll be giving away. JR said, when are you going metal detecting again? Um, possibly tomorrow. Once again, still didn't edit. Any of the, I actually wanted to get one video out last week before this live stream. Just didn't happen though. I apologize for that. Ha! 
a pound of bacon for lunch. That's probably not the healthiest thing for you, but uh, sounds good. Planting a field of cannabis at the moment. There you go. Chicken and wild rice soup with quinoa. I'm not a huge fan of soup. I was when I was younger, but I'm not a huge fan of soups anymore. They always have such fresh broccoli in here. It's really good. Plug said an apple exclamation point chicken sandwich. Please tell me you don't mean you had an apple on your chicken sandwich. That sounds awful. I hope you mean you had a chicken sandwich and an apple. Well, Linda, for me, I don't know why it is, but as I get older, it seems like with soup, especially if you get it from different places, you pack so many ingredients into one thing. And um, sometimes your stomach just doesn't know what it wants to do with that crazy mixture. Like uh, I can't drink anything like bone broth or something like, like that type of stuff. It really messes up my stomach actually. So a lot of people are into the real, the soup craze. I'm not really into it, but um, I'm definitely into the Eastern foods, Chinese, Japanese. No, I know this specifically is a highly Americanized version and you wouldn't dare call this real Chinese food, but I like the authentic stuff too. And I like spicy foods. So Anthony, what's going on? I love apple and sandwiches. One of my favorites is turkey, cheddar, grain, Smith apple and cranberry sauce. See, I can't do that. Uh, I, I just absolutely hate sweet stuff like fruit on a sandwich. To me, it's awful. It's the same as like putting fruit in a salad. If I'm going to have fruit in a salad, I'm going to have fruit salad. There's not going to, because see, when I have a, a salad, I want it to be savory and it's going to have like oil and vinegar or ranch dressing or something like that, like creamy and savory and have like chicken on it, maybe bacon, a bunch of vegetables. But no, you don't put fruit on sandwiches and ex except Tomato. Tomato is an exception. I know it's technically a fruit. That's the only exception. But you don't put fruit on salads or, in, or on, sa on sandwiches. Just awful. Now, Linda, apples and cheese is not a bad mixture. Um, when I was young, my mom always used to do that. She would have like pretzel sticks, cheese, and apples. And that kind of turned me on to it a little bit. Probably never would have done that if she didn't. Is something she used to do. I agree. No pineapple on pizza. You just don't do it. It's nice to actually start the stream early enough to that, that I have to keep remembering. It's not going to get dark here shortly, so the lighting should be a lot better. It, it's been raining almost all day today, so it's darker. So it feels like I'm starting my stream at my normal time, but I'm like, oh, it's 20 after three. Linda, Waldorf salad, oh, salad. Waldorf salad is probably one of the most disgusting food inventions of mankind to mix things together, like grapes and grapes and mayonnaise. Like, who who came up with that? Like what what crazy sad excuse of an individual <laughs> came up with that? Just hideous. Oh yeah, I'm, Anthony, I'm sure the little one keeps you busy. They put a lot of sauce on this this time. This is very uh, brown sauce. 
Yes, I'm early today. Very early today. Of course, I am okay. The bad news isn't personal. And I'm going to explain what's going on here in a second. But the bad news is not like um, a problem with me or a loved one or something like that. So no one be scared. The bad news is you'll see. You'll see here shortly. As soon as I finish up my chow. Yeah, Anthony, if I have kids, that'll that's going to be one of the huge adjustments for me because I'm not a morning person, and unless I have something like scheduled or planned in advance, I don't naturally like ever get out of bed before like – it would be rare for me to get up without a reason before 8 o'clock, but I'm usually in bed till at least 9 or, or, you know, I'm usually in bed between like 9 and 10.30, but I'm usually up later too. Um, but yeah, getting up at 5 or 6, that would be a huge adjustment for me. Hey, well, there's a plus. It cured your, <laughs> cured your insomnia. I, I think when you're a dad, you have to learn to be able to sleep. Um periodically whenever you're able to get a few spare moments <laughs> at least that's how it seems sleep when the opportunity is there take it <laughs> that sounds interesting alex i'm going to try to grow some of my own tomatoes this year because now the yard work's kind of slowed down and I, well, not slowed down, but I kind of got it up to where I wanted it to be. So maybe I, maybe I can get a few things planted this year that are simple to take care of, like tomatoes. Seven to eight hour stretches are definitely better than three to four hour stretches. That's, that's no joke. Hey, see it my way. All is good with me. Just running into some complications here that you'll all see in a moment. So it kind of resulted in something interested, interesting and helped me buy some time. JJ said, should I eat chips or nothing at all? Well, that depends on how hungry you are. Um, I would say go ahead and eat some chips. Thank you, AAP. Plugs, I am not I am not blending up a meal. I've seen enough crazy concoctions over the last month or so. So my mom's having problems with um getting partials in between her teeth. She had an allergic reaction to getting stuff before. So the whole process got canned. So she literally for the last several months in trying to sort everything out doesn't have a lot of teeth to chew with, but she has a lot of teeth in front yet. So it's one of those weird in-between things where she can like chew like nothing at all. Um, so she's been mincing and blending all sorts of stuff like grilled chicken. and. But my mom, <laughs> she, she knows I pick on her for it. I always say my mom eats some of the weirdest combinations already that just make your head spin and your stomach churn. But um, she's been making all kinds of crazy minced and blended concoctions. And yeah, it, it looks really nasty. I try to eat healthier, Gary. Um, now, this isn't like incredibly healthy because I know that that sauce is like heavy, probably on the soybean oil and the salt and stuff. But there's a lot of broccoli in there and um, you know rice, so this this is this is better than the average American meal. Certainly, I've been really on a broccoli kick. I wasn't for a while, but now I've just been like, I've literally been ordering this like at least two days a week right now.
Hey, Arlene, how's it going? Plug this, um, your local Chinese restaurant for a lunch portion like this. All you get is the bowl and then a fortune cookie. Um, with tax, it's like, I think, I think it came to 741 or something, something like that. I got to pick it up, JR, but it's right by the post office in the bank that I go to. So on days that I have to go to the post office over there in the bank, um, sometimes I'll stop and pick it up. Did I say raw chicken? I meant, I, I meant grilled. Somebody else was mentioning me to eat raw chicken, but when I was saying what my mom does, I meant I meant grilled chicken that's put in like a mincer slash blender thing. Like you would put nuts in uh, a food processor. That's the word I'm looking for. She'd have like minced grilled chicken with other stuff. Evan said, where I live in Colorado, all food is expensive and something like that would be 15 to $20. Wow. Um, so I live in an area that's not extremely populated. So prices are generally lower here because, you know, local businesses kind of have to compete. Um, there's just a lot more budget stuff around here. There's actually not a lot of specialty stuff. It's actually hard to, harder to find quality places to eat and buy groceries around here because there's not as much of a demand as there is in like larger cities and stuff. Oh, you live in a ski town? Yeah, that'll do it. Boston baked beans. I'm not a huge fan of cherry tomatoes. I guess because I don't like fruits that have a high skin to innards ratio. So cherry tomatoes are a lot of skin. Sometimes I'll put them in a salad. I'll, I'll slice them in half um, and put them in a salad. I don't think I'd want to grow them though. I'm the same way with the grapes. I don't like grapes. Well, I mean, once in a great while, but maybe like literally like once or once a year, maybe. Um, I don't care for grapes. Um, I used to eat them a lot when I was a kid, but I, I like almost despise them anymore. Anything that has a lot of skin and not a lot of not a lot of else going on. Thank you for the suggestion, James. Evan said, let's get to the bad news. I'm almost done. The bad news and the good news, well, the good news for tonight. We'll get into it here in a moment. JJ, hopefully more metal detecting videos soon. All right. Let me get this thrown away. I'll be back in a second. Okay. So... First of all here, uh, just to go over, ooh, half the, half the burp, hold on a second. All right, sorry about that, excuse me, but it had to come out. Okay, daily dose, what's going on? So here is what's gonna, going to be going to the highest super chatter on today's stream. Now this, um, 
I'm only going to, just so there's no complications, I'm only going to ship this to just in the United States. So if you're the highest super chatter and um, you're out of the country, I'll swap it with something else. Like something that's a little bit easier to ship, that's easier to ship that's flat in an envelope, like a bank note or something like that, a collectible note. Um, so years ago, many, many years ago, um, almost a decade ago, leading up to a few subsequent years from there, I used to sell all sorts of numismatic and bullion related items. I was creating, like at my peak on eBay, I probably had like 2000 unique items. I had like a variety store, um, until certain other avenues took off for me in business. Um, my business model, I was going to make like sort of, I wanted to become like the Walmart of sort of like a new numismatics. And um, I never developed it because I never wanted to hire employees and I got really busy myself and I focused on my ventures that were really uh, being is, you know, the most lucrative things. So eventually that was just too much work for me and I scaled back from it. So back in my days of selling all sorts of crazy numismatic and bullion related uh, items, I used to have almost, as, I used to sell bars of almost any different metal you can think of. I literally like 10, I have 10 bars, uh, aluminum bars, brass bars, copper bars, you name it. I used to get a lot of products um, from small private mints. One, I don't know if they're still in business, the CMC mint um, and a lot of different places. So today I'm going to give one of my leftover ones I've had uh, for years and years and years. And it's very interesting. And um, I don't remember what I paid for these, but I knew I, I used to sell them for, you know, like as a more of a novelty thing alongside other items for um, like 10, 10 or like 10 or tw like 12 bucks a piece or something. But anyway, today to the highest super chatter, I'm giving away one Troy ounce of lead. It's got a rhino on there. 0.999 fine lead. This is not a joke. <laughs> you can see there it says CMC Mint on it. This was made by the CMC Mint. Now, I'm just going to show this. Just, I mean, some of these were in softer bags and they're not perfectly flat. You can see there, this is lead. These are malleable. Malleable. So you can bend this bar. Um, I don't want to do it too much because I don't want to damage it you know, too much. But this is literally point <laughs> they advertise it as 0.999 fine lead it's very chunky you can see it's not perfectly straight but this one was stamped i mean they got a lot of detail um stamped on the lead um and whether you should touch this and handle this too often I'm not a doctor, so don't listen to me. I know lead is not the most friendly uh, material to interact with. But um, I'm going to put it on my scale, actually, and see what it weighs. So I'm giving that bar away to the highest su sh super chatter on today's stream, which is no no one so far. Um, and when um, – so, like, if the stream cuts out and ends, it goes to whoever it is. So, or if the stream goes for five hours, whoever the end of five hours, just whenever the stream ends. So I'm going to just wait here just to see how close it is to. So since it's Troy ounces, I mean, it's, it's reading on my scale, 1.165 ounces. So it's pretty beefy. And um, these things are super cool. But anyway, I have, I have a few of these left quite a few of these left, actually probably like 20 of them. So I was going through my, uh, the bags of leftover bullion bars I had. And I'm like, I got to give one of these away. They're just so crazy. Yeah. So 1.165 ounces. Yeah, Sherry, don't let the kids lick it. Um, that would not be preferable. So, uh, going to be sending that out to the highest super chatter on today's stream. Kathy, I'm actually, not an expert on magnification, so I wouldn't be able to suggest what I think would be the best. Uh, one of the things that I actually have really good close-up vision and horrible distant vision, um, so I actually can see most details on things without magnification. So I basically use a USB pluggable coin scope if I want to see 
things that are really small on coins and look for very small errors. I, I just use a pluggable, you could look it up on eBay, just a pluggable USB microscope. Uh, that's what I use for getting really, really close. It's better than just basic, you know, magnification. So I don't really use loops like most people do, like old fashioned coin dealers and stuff. I'm either using my naked eye or I'm using an actual microscope. There's really no in between for me. Um, so that would look really cool when that white patina, that white patina lead gets uh, when it's been in the ground for a hundred years. You know what? That's really cool. Maybe I should bury one. What do you all think? Should I bury one and, and get up in like 10 years? Probably wouldn't change color much. But yeah, can you imagine if this was in the ground for 100 years? First of all, it'd probably be all bent up and mangled. Um, but that would be cool if this was like solid white, like the mini balls get. Um, that would be super cool. Okay, so into the good news and bad news. So in order to show this first, I kind of have to get set up. Okay, well, I'll, I'll explain it first. So I go into my bank to pick up my um, my boxes today and, um, my two boxes that I order weekly right now for the live streams. And, um, I don't always check my voicemail. So the lady at the bank there said, um, Hey, I left you a voicemail. We weren't able to order your coins. And I'm like, Oh no. I, I thought once in a great while they'll forget there. Um, like they'll, one of them will write a note and it doesn't get translated. But, um, so she said, they're not able to order coins right now. She actually tried to order them for me and her system was locking her out of ordering the coins. And they said they were not able to order coins right now. So she said they don't know what's going on, if there's another coin shortage or what, but it seems to be like a branch wide thing. So they didn't tell me they won't order them for me anymore, but it was kind of a little bit fuzzy. How can a bank branch not order coins? I didn't ask that, but you know, I just wanted to be very kind. So I said, yeah, that, that's cool. I said, you know, if you notice in your system that they'll let me let you order coins for me. You know, I try to like to take two boxes a week. So I said, if you happen to notice that they let you order them, please do it for me. You know, I'll pick them up on the usual Tuesday. And, um, so I went through that. Um, and so that's the bad news right now. So right now I do not have a bank that will sell me or order me or I should say, order me boxes of half dollars. That was my only bank I was working with um, that I was able to set that up with without paying a ridiculous surcharge or something like that. Um, so I'm kind of at ground zero right now, and I'm going to have to try to sort something out. Maybe for a while I might have to go to some random banks and try to get some pennies, nickels, uh, whatever I can get my hands on, because I, I like to coin roll hunt while I'm doing these streams, so it's not just a talking head, and so it's interactive. So the... So I'm, that's going to be ongoing. I'm going to be trying to sort some of that out this week to see if I can get more coins. Um, so that being said, because I asked her, they could, they wouldn't even give me pennies. Um, I said, well, you know, what can you give me now? Anything? And I'll explain what I got here in a minute. I did get some coins to go through. So here's the interesting thing part of this. This, this would have never happened had this issue not come up. So we kind of um, thankfully were able to sort something out for today. So she told me, and they know I go through half dollars. I'm not, I'm not sure why nobody ever told me this. I've been banking there for a few years now. They said, well, I know we can't order you halves, but they said, we have some half dollars in the vault that have been there for like ever. And I'm like, yeah, I'll take them, bring them out. Now, when I first said that, I, I kind of said, yeah, I'll take them. Cause you never want to read. Honestly, when you're building up a relationship with a bank, you never like want to be really picky. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll take them off your hands. You know, whether even if they were all clad ones, I'd have been like, yeah, I'll take them off your hands because I dump them at another bank anyway. But I was thinking when my teller that used to work there that really liked me, he would order as many boxes as I wanted. He would order like 10 boxes. I, I had him order me once when we did those big videos back in 20, I think it was the summer of 2018. I did like a massive coin roll hunt where I bought 10 boxes of half dollars. Like he's like, yeah, I'll order you 10 boxes. And, and like he, he'd help me wheel them out to my car and we were always chatting. So he doesn't work there anymore. So I figured, but I knew that one time he said there was another person that came into that branch and it was a lady asking if she could get a box of half dollars for her kid. So I don't know if her, um, um, her son was, uh, watching YouTube videos and other coin roll hunting videos and wanting to get in on the action. I live in a pretty low, low populated area. But I'm like, well, that's kind of interesting. So he ordered one box for them. So then like 
a couple weeks later, she came back in with the same box minus like two rolls and they had rewrapped them. So I think the, her son went through them, picked out what he wanted. I don't know if he found silver or, or proof coins or anything, but he did keep some of them. So he brought the box back in. Um, I think that he, he said like two rolls or something. And he asked me if I wanted them. Um, and they were rewrapped. So it was like, I don't know, like 400 and it might've been like $470 worth of half. So maybe less than a roll and a half. And I said, well, to be completely honest, that situation sounds like somebody that absolutely coin roll hunted them. And it would be a waste of my time to go back through those rolls because I know if there was any silver in there, they pulled it out. So when the late, when the teller at the bank told me we had a bunch of half dollars back in there and they'd been in the vault for a long time, I was thinking it's probably that, that box, right? Cause that was a couple years ago. Um, so I'm thinking she's going to pull out this, you know, box of half dollars that were rewrapped and almost a full 500. But when she pulled them out, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll definitely take them. Cause I could tell they were not them, or at least some of them were not. Um, so I'm going to show you what she gave me. Uh, it was an interesting variety of sealed and customer wrapped rolls. So we could be into something really good today, or it could be a complete dud. I have no idea. Um, I have not peaked, no peaking. I have not peaked in any of the customer wrapped ones, but there is an interesting variety here. So I'm going to show you what I picked up. It's $350 worth of half dollars, a couple sealed Loomis rolls. I don't know why they had them or if somebody cashed them in. There's a few sealed Loomis yellow rolls. And then I think the rest are customer wrapped. I have to look at them again. And also since she wouldn't give me any pennies, I said, well, can you sell me some nickels? She said, how many rolls? I said, well, can you just give me like 10 rolls of nickels too? Um, and she said, I, I can give you five. I said, I'll take them. So today I have $350 worth of half dollars, mostly customer wrapped and five rolls of nickels. Um, and I'll show you all here in a moment. This could be really interesting. So she put them in a diamond penny box for me so I could carry them out to my car. So let me first get my printer unhooked here and set up the ledge and I'll show you all exactly what this all looks like. All right. And we got 122 people in here. I guess that's what happens when I start earlier. And I'm doing dunks for super chats tonight too. So somebody send a first super chat. Let's let's get the adrenaline pump in here. Even if it's 99 cents. Let's let's get it going. And let's get somebody on the board to get this awesome lead bar, right? In case the stream ends. I mean, you could snipe that bar if my internet goes down. You might end up with a cheap hunk of lead. All right. So I'll show you what we're working with here. Awesome, Alex. That would be cool. So first of all, let me show you. I have a few things mixed in here. So first of all, I have the five rolls of just wrapped nickels, which are circulated. So that's good. Um, just a lot of newer ones on the end, but they are circulated. So that's good. Um, hopefully there's a war nickel or at least a couple older ones in those rolls. So I did get the five rolls of nickels. Now, most of the re-rolled halves are these kind. Now, I don't know. I can't remember when my original teller at that bank showed me the halves that somebody bought back that were re-rolled. I think they left them in the original wrappers and tried to just open the end and push them back in. So I don't think these are from, like I said, that person that brought them back in um, a few years ago. That was That would have been in 2019 when I talked to him about that. So... All in here is these type of customer wrapped half dollars. Um, and there is this full box of these. Yeah, I'm going to move this back just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better here. So I'm going to go really quick tonight because... I mean, those are customer wraps and super easy to open. Thank you, Alex, for the $5 super chat. You are the highest so far, and I'll give you a dunk in a second after I show everybody else here. So at least we were I was able to get some coins for today. 
Um, but next week is going to be a scramble until I get this sorted out. So here was something that I wasn't expecting because when I order coins, I've only ever once had a Loomis box come into my bank, which was weird. It was a fluke. So there are three. Oh no, I thought these were Loomis. Never mind. These are older. Check this out. Um, I don't know how these are really worn around the edges. I don't know how long these have been stored. Tell me what you think, guys. These are NF string and sons rolls that are sealed. And they're kind of worn around the edges a little bit. Um I got three of those. So this was a, a weird mix of stuff. Um Somebody that knows more about these currently than I do, do you let me know if you know, do they still roll them like this or are these a certain age? Somebody in the comments, please let me know because I have never actually had these type of rolls before. I mean, I may have to save those. Um, here's another interesting thing. Check out these wrappers. Those look older to me. What are these ones? Uh, Kirk Products Company, Clifton, New Jersey. Um, I've never looked through coins in those looking half dollar rolls, but they look older than the other ones. So, and then the rest, oh, actually... Although there are some different ones here. Let me show you the other ones. Most of them are these, like I showed at first. But then there's also a few that are slightly different. There, well, there's one more here. So there's also three of these, which don't look super old. Um, but they are a slightly different. They're slightly different than these ones, which are, you know, the really modern ones. Um, I mean, I think these are both modern, but they're slightly different types. So I think I have coins here from a bunch of different sources. So I'm going to sort them by the wrapper type. Um, I think all the rest are like these ones here. So that's what or they're mostly is. Now, could these have been ones that people coin roll hunted in the past and put in modern wrappers? Yeah, that's possible. Um, but I won't know until I open them. I'm very interested in these yellow rolls um, and especially these ones here. Wouldn't that be awesome if some of these rolls were like full of all silver? I didn't peek. I promise I did not peek in the ends of any of these. Anthony, I normally don't ask the tellers for old bills because um, the branch that I go to mainly now, the tellers there, um, don't really put anything interesting aside or anything like that. Um, so I don't even bother. All right. Well, that's pretty cool there. Well, so that's, that's the good news. That's the good news. We have some, uh, let me give a, let me give a dunk for Alex here real quick. He did a $5 super chat. Oh, and the, the famous balloon still up there. Oh, it's really small now. It has survived. It's getting very small, though. Now as it gets smaller, look how nasty all the fingerprints are on it. That's a good uh, lesson for germs. Uh, JJ, I did not hear about that. I will look into that later. Um, all right, let's do this dunk real quick. Ah, all right. So that is that. Um, maybe I, I'm going to probably wait a little bit till I start doing the coin roll hunting. I know more people here coming a little bit later, but I am going to go through them. Um, I want to take a, I want to take a peek. See, let's, let's just take a look at some enders. What do you say? I just want to take a peek. I'm just going to look. Oh yeah. Let me put this back down here a second. So for first here, and I didn't have anything planned for like 
weird foods or anything that today, but I do have a box I have to open uh, from somebody that sent me something. So I'm just going to peek at the ends of these. Now I'm, I'm assuming at least most of these are clad, um, but okay. So there's a 1973 on the end. I just wanted to check, check one of them. I didn't, I didn't expect this to be like all silver or something. Uh, I'm just going to randomly check one more roll. Um, 1971 on the end there. So I'm going to take a peek at the end of one of these because I think these are just modern wrappers too. And that's a reverse side. appears to be clad. And I'm just going to check the other end here. But uh, I am going to peek at the end of one of those too. Um, that's another reversed end, uh, reverse end, but it's not, not silver. Um, wasn't expecting it. So I, I do, I'm very curious to peek at the end of one of these rolls and hope. That looked really bright there for a second and had me. I thought it was silver, but it's a 1983. I don't know if you can see it in there. Really shiny though. For a minute, I'm like, oh my goodness, is that a whole roll of silver? <laughs> my mind's going. Um, let's just check the other side. 1992. Okay, so there's no like full rolls of silver here, I don't think. Uh, I was hoping. Um, I was really hoping. So I guess maybe, what do, you, what do you say, guys? I should start going through some of them, and then we'll take a break and do some other uh, stuff later. I don't really have any much, I don't have anything else planned, so... Um, oh, where did I put that? I remember, where did I put that? Is that in the garage? Uh, where did I leave that? Did I bring it in here? I may have to, I, you, you all have to bear with me here a second and I'm going to be streaming for a while. So we're, we're not going to be going like warp speed through all of this stuff. Um, so I'm trying to think if I forgot to go over anything else here. So I think I'm going to start by going through some of these coins and then we'll take a break in the middle to go through uh, the package I got and do some other stuff and chatting. And maybe I'll run to the grocery store later and get some weird foods if I'm here later. But let's check out the chat here for a second. Robert said that would be nice to have a large amount of silver. Yes, I was hoping there might be a full roll of silver in one of them strange looking rolls, but don't think so. Sandra said, hand rolled a lot of the time is teller rolled coins. Yeah, sometimes they'll save them as they get them in, then roll them up as they have, you know, per $10 worth. So, yes, these could be teller rolled. Um, I, I really don't know. I mean, there's, like I said, a lot of different kinds there. Alex, that's not good. Yeah, that Ecuadorian 50 cent, I know, right? Cassidy said, uh, JD, got a question for you. When did you first cut all of your hair off? I cut my hair off in, uh, I had my hair shaved for the first time in 2014. And I've never gone back to long hair since. And I am also the type of individual where I look really goofy with in-between hair. So I'll probably never get past that stage of once it goes over your ears and then all the water from the shower drains into your ears. And I have a bad left ear. I have like some nerve damage. So that phase always drives me nuts. So I'll probably never grow my hair out again. I like it short. Um, why did I cut my shave my hair? There was a lot of reasons. First of all, um, when I was a lot more shy and just afraid, of, like I wasn't is, is spontaneous and a little bit more uh, hesitant towards change when I was younger. So just the thought of shaving all your hair off, um, I knew two things happened. Like some people, when they, sh some people look, have that good domineering sporty look when they're clean shaven, they look like, like, like you want your opponent to be afraid of you. Like some people have that kind of good sporty look when they're, when they're shaved. Um, and then some people, when they're shaved, they kind of look goofy. And I was always afraid that I would be the goofy looking type if I shaved my head. So I always put it off. And, uh, and then um, it, it, I got to a point where I, 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 it was annoying for sports and stuff like that, always having the long hair and having to deal with it. You spend a lot of time, you know, shampooing it and stuff like that. And also part of it was spiritual. Um, 
I need I needed radical change, and I I did feel like it was something that I was hiding behind, and that it was it would mark like a new chapter in my life. And so there was a lot of things going on there, but uh, ultimately I decided to shave it off, and I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. Time for a mohawk. Um, I did do a mohawk once when I was like a teenager, like, well, I don't know, maybe, not maybe, I mean, was I 12? I might've been 12, maybe not even teenager, 13, I don't know. Actually, but no, mine was kind of only a joke when I was getting cut. I don't think I ever had one for expan a, 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 any significant amount of time. My brother did for a while when he was a teenager. Um, but I actually, my thing when I was really young I, I, it wore off by the time I was like 12, but I thought I, I thought I was really cool on a flat top. So I had the, you know, I had the, I, I had the crazy, you know, the 1990s flat top that a lot of young kids had. Uh, I did that for a while until I got annoyed of trying to keep it sticking straight up in the air in the front. Uh, so there, you got a little history on my hair, but, but for the most of the time, I didn't cut it hardly at all uh, past my mid teen years, um, except to just like, keep it trimmed a little bit, neat and tidy. And I kept letting it grow in, in the back after a while, but I was totally rocking the eighties mullet for quite a long time. Uh, yeah, I literally had the mullet straight out of the eighties. All right. Um, give me one second while everybody's here. I got to go look for something really quick. Just, just hold down the fort. Give me a minute. Hey, Coy, what's going on? Good to see you here. Give me one moment. Hold the fort down. Okay, so I just got to run into my garage and grab it. I think it's over there. Literally, I'll be back in like 60 seconds. Okay. All righty. Okay. So, uh, to tell a quick story here, I'll explain what this is here in a moment. So I purposely didn't buy more vinyl gloves last week. Um, cause I just didn't, I, I just forgot to get them. But so the estate that I bought out, um, the house with the, uh, um, what I call the project house, which I haven't showed in a long time. I still own it and I almost have it cleared out of the stuff. I, I just haven't been making videos out of all of it. So the guy that used to live there who passed away had anything you could think of that involved early days of film and um, movie making. Um, he had tons of VHS players and so Way back in the day, he used to live in Hawaii and did the very primitive early work with like sound effects and different stuff like that. Um, he helped do a few projects and different things like that in the early days of this type of technology. He never really did much after that. So he was kind of, I'm trying to be respectful in saying this. He's, I guess, sort of like my dad in this kind of way where he kind of never uh, really updated with technology. So his house was full of like, like I said, anything you can think of that was from like the 80s and 90s that regarded uh, that uh, had to go along with like the film industry. And he had a collection that I got, um, which I'm probably going to when I resell the house, I'm going to leave it all there for whoever moves in. He had a collection of like all numbered. He had everything cataloged. He, ha he had everything organized to a crazy extent. Hundreds. There, there was a collection of about 500 different DVDs and VHS tapes 
Um, he used to work on all sorts of stuff. So this is from there. And I figured I could put these gloves on to coin roll hunt. Rick Hal Jr. said, what's the bad news? Um, thank you for the super chat. Um, the bad news I explained uh, just a little bit previously, previously in this, the, the stream, my bank uh, said they can no longer order me coins um, due to some corporate thing. They said they don't know if it's another coin shortage or what. So I actually was able to pick up a bunch of customer wrap stuff, but from here on out, I'm going to be scrambling to figure out what I'm doing. So that's the worst of the bad news. So anyway, this here, um, I have all kinds of this equipment. Now I actually have this that's mentioned here, directions for operate operation and maintenance of Griswold film splicers. So this is actually like a kit for that type of thing. So this is Kodak film cement um crazy right and a little cloth i got all kinds of stuff like this he kept every instruction manual for ever every product every box everything he probably ever owned and I, i'm not exaggerating um I'll have to just show you all a lot of this stuff someday. Now, I did show you some of the stuff in the early videos that I did at the end of 2018, I believe it was, when I bought the property. Um, no, no, that was, no, 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 no. That was, um, that was 2019. That was, that, that was going into the end, end of summer of 2019. So here's, he reprinted that one. This is the original. He printed copies of almost everything. Um, original sticker on it there. So I got to do a dunk for Rick Howe Jr. here in a moment. So let's see what else we got in here. This little fuzzy thing. I don't know exactly what that is. Probably to do with the cement glue for putting it on. And then this is like the little part of the splicer. But anyway, let's check out these crazy gloves here. Oh, yeah, they just have that old smell to them. Check that out. Oh, they got a little bit of stain on the bottom, but they smell like pretty much everything in that house did. Just kind of like an old musty smell. Um, so anyway, can we use these as the coin roll hunting gloves? Kind of, they're kind of cool. They have a good fit to them. Now they're going to turn black, but I wasn't going to like resell this kit or something. I like to repurpose stuff and make it fun. Um, the only thing is I'd have to cut the finger off, but I won't today because they're customer wrap. So I could wear these today for my customer wrap rolls that I go through. And these actually, they're really dusty. <laughs> um, so they're film splicing gloves. So, you know, you work on it and do all, you know, use your cement and you're doing splices to the film and putting scenes together and all that stuff. <laughs> Vaughn, man, I didn't intentionally forget to buy them. I was going to use these, but I do need to get some other ones so I have them on hand. It just happened to work out that this first week I didn't buy more gloves that I got customer wrapped, except for a few. Um, now, honestly, these don't smell very good. I'll have to toss them in the wash. Um, they have a pretty bad musty smell, but... I have all sorts of old film equipment now, and um, I just figured I'd share that with everyone. Uh, but a lot of it, a lot of it, I wouldn't. I mean, a lot of it's not like super, super old. We're talking a lot of stuff that mostly goes back to the the 1980s and some of it the early 90s. But to me, it's still very interesting because this is the stuff that was uh, going out right when, like, the when I was born is when all this stuff was really starting to go out. Um, all right, so let, let's do a dunk for Rick Howe real quick. And the highest super chat is still five bucks. So if you want the solid troy ounce of lead, of rhinoceros lead, five dollars is currently the highest super chat. I got it in the little bag there. All right, so let's let's give Rick Howe a dunk real quick, and then we'll go through some coins with our uh, film gloves. Let's do a tomahawk. Oh, I'm gonna put this up a little bit more up a little bit more. 
Tomahawk time. All right. Ugh. Ah! Okay. Detecting our past. What's going on? Okay. Lovely Pella coins there. So I think by starting, we're going to start with the normal ones. Uh, I got to get my bag. Always forget the bag. Oh yeah, I always forgot. I should go on this side. I always forgot. I don't know. There's no reason to switch hands. We're gonna try to get used to that new setup here. Okay, let's start going through some coins and we'll chat with everyone. I'm trying to remember to chat won't go. So let's let's get them on here. Let's get let's get the let's get my vintage film splicing gloves on. I'll tell you what though, these are actually pretty comfortable. <laughs> Rick, I forgot to mention that. Thank you for the $4 super chat, but part of the rules is it cannot be cumulative. It has to be one single super chat. I have to be fair to everyone else. So I appreciate your $2 and $4 super chat, but I can't accept that as being the highest single super chat. But thank you very much, and I'll give you uh, – you'll get the first dunk. You'll get the first dunk. But actually, when I do a big stream, uh, when I give away some of my bigger – prizes and stuff. I want to give away like the drone. I'm probably going to do like a highest super chat and a highest, um, like individual total of super chats. So, um, I'm going to make it really fun when I give away the drone and some other stuff. I'm going to give away some other stuff with it too. And Rick Hell Jr. did follow up with a $6 super chat. So let's give him two dunks real quick. I guess we're, these things are really dusty. Um, first two dunk with the film splicing gloves. Let's see if that helps give me some grip. Hey, these are kind of nice. It helps hold on to it. I like it. I'm all fancy now. Y'all get the white glove treatment. Ah! And the reverse windmill. Ah! All right. Here we go. Let's start going through some coins. Blow these off. Got some dust in there. And see, and everything in this, this gentleman's house was labeled, cataloged, reprinted, just meticulous. It's crazy. Um, when I got, I never did a video on this yet. So when I got, I also got his 1996 Honda Civic. I mean, not Civic, Honda Accord. And the Honda Accord that I got from the estate had all the, every oil change, the papers, a copy of the original check that he purchased the vehicle with. I have it all since 1996. Um, crazy. So let's start going through some of these. And hopefully, that <clears throat> yeah, must be smell. Man, I'm going to have to wash these. Robert, Bullwinkle is doing well. Thank you for asking. Doing quite well. I You can all see my calendar here. Like in my life, I've never really used a calendar except maybe since I was young for a, for a while, like for schoolwork and stuff. But I have a calendar now and I have to mark it because I forget which days I watered my plants. So, um, well, guys... Um, these half dollars may have been in these rolls for a while. I don't know if you can tell, but they kind of have a really dull edge, like they've been in storage for a long time. I don't know if you can tell that on camera because I don't have a normal roll to compare them to. Um, this could be interesting, but I mean, there's no silver in that roll. Um, are the gloves latex or cloth? Uh, these are cloth. 
These are definitely cloth gloves. Um, they're kind of interesting. So I'll be able to toss them in the wash, see how they turn out. Um, oh boy. Guys, um, boy, I hope there's some full silver rolls in here. Guys, these are all from the 1970s. I told you they had that dull edge like these have been in storage for a long time. Man, I hope somebody didn't pull out the silver rolls and then just cash in these ones. I hope there's a mix in here. These, these have been in storage for a long time. 1971, 1974, 71, 77, 76 bicentennial, 76 bicentennial, 73, 72, 79, 71, 70. I mean, 71, excuse me, 70 would have been silver. 71, bicentennial, 71, 71. 71, 71 I dropped, 71, 71, and 73. Um, Boston Baked Bean said, check those DDOs. Yeah, I'm going to have to keep these separate and go through them. Um, okay, so this is a collection dump. Um, that's crazy. I wasn't expecting that. Um, I'll put them all in the bag for now. Um, wow. Okay. Let's just let's just go through another one and see what happens. If I open one of these rolls and it's all silver, I'm going to absolutely lose it. But I think whoever cashed these in knew to keep those. Um, Yeah, they all have that dull edge, though. You can tell. Like, these have just been in. These were in old wrappers for a very long time. I don't know if they moved them into these wrappers or what. I mean, there's no silver in there, but let's see what the dates of this roll of. 1973, 1974, 71, 71, 73, 72, 72, 72, 76, 73, 73, 71, 74, 76, 80. We'll set that aside because I might keep all the 70 separate. 71, 76, 71, 71, 78. So in two rolls, no coins newer than 1980. All right. Um, that's kind of crazy. If I get any solid silver rolls, I might just... I might have to save them for a normal video or something. Ooh, what is that looking there? Whatever looks shiny in here as I open this up. It's clad, but it's shiny. All right, let's um let's see what we got here. I wasn't expecting this, honestly, though. I thought they were going to be a mix of all just like normal rolls like I go through that are a range of dates. Yeah. These are the, this is weird. Um, Steven, what's going on? Okay. So, yeah, man, these have that such, that dull look like they've been in storage for a long time. Unbelievable. 1971, 77, 71, 76, 74, 71, 71, 71, 71, 76, 73, I'm not saying the mint mark. 76, 74, 76, 71, a like toned, uncirculated 72. Man, look at that strange look they have on them. Some of these are going to be toned. I'm going to set the nicer ones aside like that. 73, 71, 74, 71. Oh, man, I think that's what it is, guys. I think somebody clashed in all the clad ones from a collection and kept the silver. But I, I, I'm, there's still hope. Mudswat, my bank won't order coins anymore. Um, 
I don't, they said it could be due to a coin shortage or something. They said they even tried to order me order me boxes of half dollars and they can't. So that's like bad news. I have to figure out if I can get coins somewhere else now. But they sold me a bunch of customer wrapped and a few machine wrapped half dollar rolls that they said were back in the vault that have been there for a long time, which they never told me about before. And they know I look through this stuff. I don't know why they didn't tell me. I started going through and I've got some really old wrappers here. Um, or ones that look older, but I started going through these. All of these rolls are coins from the 1970s. So I'm hoping there's going to be like a roll of all silver or some, but we'll see. Um, we will see. Next roll. Dude, I think I got a silver. Check the edge here. This one here, I don't know, unless that's a messed up clad one. That looks like a tarnished 64. No, that looks silver to me, guys. Dude, did we just get like a massive collection dump from like 1980? 1980 is the oldest coin so far. Like I was just thinking these were going to be all clad. Let me pull it out. Oh my goodness. No way. Absolutely no way. 1964. Tarnished. These have been in storage for ages. Look at that tarnish. That's crazy. Unbelievable. So there's got to be more. Oh, I, I don't I don't know what to say. I, I was not expecting this. Boy, these gloves smell awful. Okay, well let's let's just spout the dates off of this one. Man, I might have to retitle this video. I almost feel bad opening these in just a live stream. This would make an awesome normal video. 1971, 71, 76, 76, 76, 71, 73, 71, 71, 80, 80, 1980 is the newest date. Could this be a dump of coins that have been in storage since 1980? We will tell as the story unfolds. 74, 77, 71, 72, 71, 76, 76, 79, 76. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. I'm going to probably text a few people real quick. Man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to wear them gloves all night tonight. They, the, the must is like literally giving me allergies here. I'll see if uh, I'll see if Rob's around because he would want to see this definitely. I'm gonna say streaming customer rep has now thought it was going to be a dud. No coins. Newer than 1980 and just pulled a 64. All right. Well, this is going to be, guys, this is going to be much more interesting of a stream than I thought it was going to be. Let's open one more roll here to see what it looks like. And I'm probably going to change the title of this video because if I change the title of it to like an old collection dump of half dollars, some people, more people might want to trickle in and watch this because this is going to be a once, a one, probably a one time event for me. Like this is pretty rare of a find. Because these aren't, like I said, there's not just like newer halves in here too. Nothing newer than 1980 so far. 
So let's dump another one out. Oh my goodness, there's there's silver in here too. Unbelievable. There's two. I think there's two 40% silvers. Unbelievable. I, I'm in shock. And look at the dull look of those. These have been in storage for ages. That looks like 40% silver there and the second one in right here. Unbelievable. And this one almost looks like un, like uncirculated maybe. I I am in absolute shock right now. Oh my goodness, let's pop the first one out. Oh, did that fool us from the edge? No, it's silver. That's crazy. Color's really off on that one. 1969D, that's 40% silver. Crazy color on that one. I'm in complete shock. Okay, let me check that other one. Unbelievable. 1967. Really nice condition. Thank you, Rick, for the comment. I'll look up. I, I just haven't been focusing on the chat right now because I'm in shock and trying to sort out this craziness here. Um, but tell, tell you what, Rick, um, I appreciate your offer. I There's a lot of comments right now. If you can... Uh, could you please send me an email to JD's Variety Channel at gmail.com? It's in the description. Um, hey, Rob. But yeah, if you email me, that would be better because so I don't get behind. Um, so I had no idea this was going to happen. And I told you I, all, I, I knew some of those rules were older. So there are still no coins newer than 1980, and we pulled two silver out of that roll. Um, so let's go through the rest of the dates on these. 76, 76. Those were stuck together. There's like a little bit of gunk on it. 72, 71. That one that I said might is a uncirculated 73D, but it's got some adhesive like old glue on it. 74D, 77. And a lot of these have that weird, like I said, they all have a dull edge. Like I knew when I pulled them out of the wrapper, they just looked like they were in storage for a long time. I'm like, they all look the same. Um, 1980, again, that's the newest date. 72, 76, 76, 71, 74, 72, 71, 71. I am in, I'm in shock. I really am. I did not expect this. Um, I am going to change the title of this live stream. Because I think it would only be fair to share this with everyone live. To be completely honest, I would have absolutely loved to make this a normal video. But I'm just going to share it with everyone. So let's retitle it. We're going to say, um, well, we'll just, we'll give it a big beefy title. Jackpot. Uh, found a massive... I'll say bought, how, how's this? Bought massive collection of old half dollars from bank. Uh, and I can change the title later, get something about 1980 in there. There's literally... The three newest coins, no, no, the three newest coins have all been 1980. 
and I'm going to be restored since 1980, question mark. Jackpot, bought massive collection of old half dollars from bank with silver, stored since 1980, question mark. Okay, we'll save that. Th yeah, thank you, Sheila. Yeah, I can't believe it. So anybody who wants the story of how I got these, it, it shows you how sometimes something gone bad turns into something good. I didn't even know this was the good news. I thought the good news was that I got rolls um, after my bank. So anybody just coming in now who's just coming in, my bank told me they can't order me boxes right now because their system won't even let them order coins. Like it's some kind of corporate thing. The, the, my teller said she tried to order my two boxes this week, but she's like, hey, we've had some coins that have been back there in the vault for ages. Do you want the half dollars? And I said, yeah, I'll take them. Bring them on out. And um, so these, I, I don't know why they never told me these, these were there because they know I'm looking for this stuff. Um, I've asked them before. I've told them I'll take whatever you got. So I, I don't. Maybe they just thought I wanted sealed boxes or something, or maybe they just didn't want to mess with it. I have no idea. Um, so for anyone just coming in, this is going to be good. Okay, now I know this is going to be good because we have $350. We have $350 worth of half dollars. I went through a few rolls. The only interesting, the only things that are not customer wrapped is I have three rolls of NF string and sons. Um, those might be part of the part of it too, because look, look at the ends of these. 1971, bicentennial ender, 1971, and then that's reverse ender, reverse ender, and um, bicentennial. So these all might be original. I mean, these like these could be from 1980 or the 70s. Um. But wasn't it, I, didn't one of these in the ends have like a 1992? These are probably from a different source. So I think that's what it is. I think we got, I think we got a lot of sources here. Um, so I'm going to just keep opening these ones here that are all from like the 70s and 60s. They're all from the 60s to 1980. Um, so I'm just want to go over this before I start back into it because I'm just now realizing that this is going to be a really good stream. So I want to keep my thoughts straight here. Um so yeah, highest super chat tonight is the one troy ounce of lead. I'll show that up close more later. Highest super chat so far is six dollars, and um, this is going to be fun. And for anyone just coming in, within the first five or six rolls, the first two didn't have any silver, so I thought it was going to be a huge clad dump of '70s coins. And I thought somebody picked out the silver and dumped the rest of the collection. Nope, this collection has the silver too. They're not sorted per date. So the silver is probably going to mix, be mixed in all of these rolls. Um, so, so far we have a 1964 that's beautiful, like uncirculated with crazy toning. We got a 1967 that looks uncirculated or close on that one. And then a, a really bizarrely colored 1969, um, which I knew was silver by the edge, but it's, it's really a crazy coin. 1969. Okay, so, man, to think my local, the bank, the branch that I bank at, to think that they had these hiding in the back and they never told me, I don't know how that happened because everyone that's ever ordered coins for me there knows I will take any half dollars that they get in. And the teller that used to help me, that, that really loved to order me coins who's no longer at that branch, I don't know if they got those after he transferred or what? Because he used to look, when he used to get half dollars in from customers and any other coins, he would pick out the silver. He told me one time somebody brought in a super slick, like super worn down standing Liberty quarter and paid with like cashed it in with their change and he pulled it out. So I don't know if he knew these back there. These were back there. Maybe they got cashed in after he left. Yeah, Robert, I... But I've never had a collection like this, so I wouldn't I wouldn't say I'm lucky, but this is like a, the first time I've had something like this. I'll say hi to everyone. Uh, Largemouth Bass, what's going on? All right, next roll. 
Okay, don't see silver in this roll. Not every roll in here has silver, but still nothing newer than 1980. So I'll spot off the dates as I go through. 74, 74. And as somebody pointed out in the chat earlier, it's a very good idea. All of these half dollars need checked for varieties because these have been in there, in these rolls, I think since like around 1980. So they probably have never been checked for varieties. So I'm going to keep these all separate. 72, 73, like I said, I'm not saying the mint marks, 72, 71, 71. Maybe we'll get my first 1970 in this collection dump. Wouldn't that be awesome? 76, 71, 71, 71, 74, 74, an uncirculated 72D with toning. I'll set that aside. Here's a fun one. 74. It's blue. That's fun. All right. 71, 71, 71, 70. Yes, Mutz, well, I'd love to get a 70D. Yeah, Rob, for sure, variety check. I agree. That'll have to be another stream. Maybe I'll set up my scope and we'll variety check them all. All right. So, I okay, before we do this, Within these rolls here, like I said, $350 worth, guys, and then a few slightly different sources here. And then I have five rolls of nickels. I just I, I took whatever coins my bank would give me today, um, and they wouldn't even give me any pennies because uh, they were lower on them. So guess how many silvers we're going to pull out of the collection. So I went through one, two, three, four, five, six. So in the first six rolls... In the first six rolls, there were three silver. So you guess how many we're going to end up with. Um, so at that pace, at that pace, we'd end up with – oh, wait. There's more over here. I don't know about these, though. We'll have to see. I mean, three, six – Nine. There's got to be at least, like, if we go on that pace, there'll be at least about 12 more. But uh, like I said, I'm not counting these because they're I don't, I don't really know what's going on there. There's probably going to be more than that. Um, I'm just going to go with a nice whole number. I'm going to say, why don't we say we're going to pull out 20, right? Wouldn't that be cool to get a full roll of silver? I would like to see a full roll. Let's, let's see if we can get a full roll. I'm going 20. All right. Next roll, let's open it up. 76 in the end. I don't see any silver in this one. Kelly said, I'm guessing on the low side, five. I already have three, but we'll see. Never know. 76. 72, 74, 74. Now, these are the type of rolls that you can sell on eBay for big bucks, um, but they're a customer wrap, so a lot of people would be skeptical because most people wouldn't be able to tell that they're original, but to a trained eye, you can tell these have been in storage for decades. 76, 74, 72, 71, 73, 76, 71, 76, 72, 72. I hope there's some old proofs in here. 71, 74, 72, 71, 76, 76. Currency collector said, every time you find a silver, do a dunk. All right, I could do that. Uh-oh, we have a new, new, newest one. 1982. Okay, so maybe they're from 82. So that looks like it's a nice condition too. Okay, we're telling the story. Oh, there might be some newer ones mixed in here. There's some smoother rims in here. They're starting they're they're looking a little bit different in this roll. Um Okay, this rule's different. I'm going to set this rule aside. Maybe maybe there's a mix. Maybe some of these aren't from a collection. This one's mixed. 89, 79, 96, 79, 72, 
76, 76, 76, 2000. This rule's different. 74, 2000, 2000, 2000. That's weird. Why is there all of a sudden a run of 2000? Something's weird's going on. This is some bizarre collection. 97, 97, 97, 95, 71, and 82. Okay, that was a really weird roll. Um, I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. Now I don't know. Now I don't know what's happening. Let's see what the next one is. It's got a 76 in the end. So maybe that roll was a fluke. I don't know. We're going to find out. Yeah, don't see any silver in this one. Okay. Back to the original here. 71, 72, 72, 74, 74, 74, 74, 71, 79, 76, 7, 71, 79, 71, 74, 72, 71, 73, 72, and 76. I don't know what that last rule was, but okay. Next rule. Mudswat said that those gummies make you really sick last time. They didn't, but I will say... About 30 minutes after the stream was over and I got to moving around, uh, I let's just say I did get a pretty significant clean out. So it actually uh, actually worked out pretty good. Next roll. Oh, man. It's crazy how we hit all that silver together because I don't see any here. But it, it's, it's another one of the – I mean, you can see the dull edges here except for that, like, uncirculated one. I mean, these look like another roll of the 70s ones. Maybe one that's super nice up here. Okay, let's see what that one is, though. Yeah, it's just a nice 1974. 72, 71, 72, 72, 74, 71, 72. These rolls smell. It's not, yeah, actually, maybe it is just the gloves. The gloves smell worse than the coins, believe it or not. Um, 79, 71, 74, 71. 71. These are in really nice shape in this roll. 72, 74, 72, 71, 74, and 71. You can see the coins that are on the end of the rolls. They have this really um, granular look to them, like they have a film on them, like they've been in storage for a very long time. It's kind of crazy. All right. Another roll of all 70s. Come on, let's get a silver in the next roll. Let's get it. Come on. Don't see silver in this one, but they look older. I agree. I'm going to look for varieties in another video or probably in another stream. I'll try to get my scope set up and use different software. Okay, 74, 74, 74, 77, 74, 74, 74. And a lot of these are 74 Ds. I, I guarantee there's a 74 DDO in here. 72, hopefully is another rare, like a 73 D or something. Uh, 74, 71, 73, 79, 76, 76, 73, 1980. So that we're, I think that one roll was just a fluke. 74, 71, 72. All right, let's keep going. Man, I'm not seeing any more silver. This is this looks like another mixed roll. So I don't know. This is another mixed roll. I think there's some ones in here that aren't quite as old. You can see there's a thinner one that definitely looks like a 1990s-ish there. And then there's one of the smooth ones here. We'll see. Uh, 71, 74, 73, 73, 1995. <laughs> Here's 
Here's an here's a um, this is one of the fluke rolls. Uh, this one's 2003D NIFC. Well, that's bizarre. All right, so I don't know what's with the mixed one here. So maybe, maybe it's from a huge collection, and it's some, maybe they had some newer ones too. 74, 74, 79, 76, 74, 85, 72, 73, 74, 76, 74, 77, 76, and 79. So mostly 70s in there, but I'm going to keep that roll aside. I'm not mixing them in with the other ones until I figure out how I'm going to sort these. Yeah, check for, well, there's not a lot of 82s, but on the 82s I do get, I'll definitely check for the no FGs. I think there's some years of the 70s that have no FG also. I think it's the 72. I can't remember, but I'm going to definitely check for those. All right. Oh, man. I thought we were going to get more silver there for a minute. I mean, I still think we'll get more silver, but the question is how much. Hey, Pran, what's going on? Next roll. Man, I don't see silver in this one either. I know. It seemed like it was going to be really hot there for a minute. 72, 71. Back to an old roll, though. Okay, well... Here's an 81 in one of the rolls that are almost all 70s. 76, 72, 72, 72, 76, 73, 76, 71, 73, 76, 71, 73, 74, 77, 71, 81. Okay, so 81 might be the year that these were stored since, except for some of the flukes that somebody else must have mixed into the rolls. All right, I'm itching for another silver here. I think we're going to get one in this roll or the next roll. 74 in the end. Do we get silver in here? I don't think so. Kelly, I already got three silvers. They didn't keep it all. There was a few 60s coins mixed in. 74D, 72, 76... 71, a really messed up, like an acid dipped 74 or a fire coin, but there's no bubbles. I can't turn these around with these gloves on. That's the first one that's been in really bad shape. Um, 72, 71, 71, really nice 71. That one's uncirculated. Well, I mean, a lot of these are. Wow, some super nice ones in this batch. I'll look through them all another time for ones that are keepers. 72, 72, 71, 71, 72, 71, 74. Dropped one. Hey, ben said you might have to change the name of the stream again. Yeah. Okay, 72 on the end has that doll look, so it looks like another original roll. Come on, silver in this one. Come on. Don't see any silver, but there's a blazing one on the end here. Really nice 71. I'll check these all later, see which ones are worth keeping. There's got to be some more silver in here. 76, 76, 71, 74, 76, 76, 76, 71, 71, 73, 76, 74, 73, 71, 71, 71, 71, 79, and 72. And I dropped another one. All right. Next roll. 76 in the end. Come on, Silver. Come on. Oh, I heard it. I, I didn't push it out yet. I'm going to – hold on. I'm going to put him back in. I heard Silver. I'm telling you. If I'm wrong – then, I, then I'm wrong. Hold on. Listen to this coming out. I, I'm telling you, I, I, you can't, I can't recreate it. I heard a silver dink. Oh, you hear it? I heard it. Oh, yeah, I can see it. I heard it. It looks like a 64. 
Tarnished right there. That's going to be a 1964. I could hear it. Look at that. Listen to this noise. That's the sound of silver right there. I heard that when the roll was coming out. And here, here's what normal ones sound like. Just a thunk. Now back to the silver one. You hear that? Awesome. But I'll pull it out right there. Called it on that one. 1964, 90% silver. It's got that tarnish on it. Like it's been in that roll for decades. Unbelievable. So let me go through the rest of these and we'll do a slam dunk. Okay. 76, 71, 71, 76, 71, 74, 77, 71, 76, 74, 76, 72, 72, 73, 76, 71, 74 with a ding. Let me make sure that's not clipped. No, that's a ding. That's damage. And uh, 76. All right. But this is good. We're hitting some 90% silver. I rarely find 90% silver in my sealed boxes, except that Benji we got recently. Sweet. The silver dunk. Silver. Ah. All right. Months, what's the JD? Were you excited at the bank when they told showed you what they have? Um, to be honest, I was happy that they gave me rolls, but I didn't think anything of them. I'm like, oh well, some of these are interesting. There might be something cool, but I, I, I did not think it was going to be like a collection dump from like the 80s or something. Um, so no, I wasn't overly excited. Like, if I was overly excited, I would have peaked before I started the stream. I would have peaked and been like, oh, or, you know. But I just I thought all of these were wrapped probably within the last five years. Um, I, I just, I wasn't expecting them to, to, to be an old collection. So uh, that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. All right. Okay. Next roll. I told you, didn't I tell you one of the next two rolls ahead felt there was too much of a drought there. I knew there had to be a silver coming. Next roll, it's got an ender, but I mean like clad ender, but it looks like a 70s one. Let's see if we can hear it. Well, they didn't peel apart. One stuck in the end there. Um, don't see any silver in this roll, but they look like older ones again. FS said, hey, GD, also you know silver rings when you coin flip it. <laughs> yeah, when you see silver in the hole, you know too. 71, 76, 79, 71, 73, 74, two stuck together, 72, 72, 73, 71, 71, a beautiful 74 with like some rainbow toning, that's a stunner, you probably won't be able to see the toning on the webcam, 72, 72, 71, 71D uncirculated, 72, 79, 72, 74. Let's see if this rainbow toned one will show up on camera. The reverse of this one is really nice. It's got a little bit of a rainbow tone around the edges. Uh, you might be able to see a hint of that. Really not going to do it justice on camera. Yeah, you can kind of see it there a little bit, but look at that, 74. These have been in there for a long time. I know I keep saying that. It's going to get old. Michael, how's it going? Would you believe it? We're going through a collection dump right now of coins that appear to have been rolled since the early 80s. That's It's crazy. Not a lot of silver, but there is silver mixed in, which is why I'm super happy. I was super pessimistic at first. I thought they were going to be all coins from the 70s and somebody pulled out all the silver. Doesn't appear to be that way. 
All right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I think there's going to be silver in this roll or the next one. I think we're going to hit more here shortly. Don't see any silver in this roll, but it looks like another one of the old ones. 71, 76, 73. This, might, this is one of the mixed rolls, actually. One of the few mixed rolls. 1996, 1990, 1974, 74, 76, 74, 85, 79, 81, 1980, 97, 74, 77, 97, 83, 85, and 74. Maybe some of the some of the rolls were short and filler coins got added by the bank or maybe the person that cashed them in. That's the only thing I can think about because there's only been three rolls, only three rolls that have had newer coins mixed in. So I, I can't explain that. We can only theorize. Um, uh, do the 81s look brand new? Good question. The 1980s and 81s are all in pretty good shape. Like you would think not circulated very long. That was actually a great question. There's one of the 1980s. You can see it looks uncirculated. Another 1980. Same thing, just got you know some dings on it. And the 81s, they're both very nice coins. Now, I wouldn't call these like blast uncirculated, but it's hard to tell with that dull look on them from being in these rolls. Um, they might just be kind of AU. That I wouldn't say they're full luster, but they are, you know, they if these were circulated, it wasn't for very long. So that's what also leads me to think that these were from 1981. Um, I originally thought 1980, but a few 81s popped up. So... That's the new that's the new guess that these have been rolled except for a few the other ones got mixed in that these have been rolled since 1981 or 82 I mean could have been early in 82 I think this is another mixed roll right here Ooh What is going on here A lot of green gunk on this roll but I saw one from like the 90s look at all that Look at all that corrosion gunk. Um, the end coin is a, oh. Look at these coins. It's crazy. Um, but that's a 1994, 95, 94, 74, 97, 71, 76. 76, 74, 76, 71, 74, 74, 76, 71, 73, 80, 79, 94, and 94. Kind of weird. I'm going to set that roll aside too. Um, so that was not a full roll of 70s, or mostly 70s. Of course, they have the early 80s and some from the 60s. All right, well, next roll. Thank you, Vampire. Appreciate it. Don't see any silver in this roll, but I think we're back to 70s. Green gunk always means moisture. Exactly. I think these a lot of these were in storage for a long time. So maybe the person that had them in storage, maybe they bought an old collection and then mixed a few in themselves. I don't know, but most of this collection you can tell has been stored since like 81. Maybe they just mixed a few other ones in that they had or something. I, I couldn't tell anyone exactly what happened here, but something happened. 74, 71, 79, 71, 71, 73, 74, 71, 74, 73, 77, 76, 71, 71, 72, 76, 71, 79, 76, and 71. Jan, what's going on? I'm glad you could make it to the end of uh, 
a bizarre customer wrapped collection I found. The story seems to be here that these were all, these have been in storage since 1981, at least most of them. We don't have many rules left of this kind though. But let's just keep opening them. See if we can pull another silver out. Those didn't all come out even. Don't see any silver in this roll. 74, 74, 71, 74, 72, 72, 71, 71, 71, 71, 71, 71, 71, 71, 71, 71, 71, 74, 74, and 74. Well, that was a lot of 71s. It proves that even back in 81, the silver was almost all gone. Yeah, maybe in 81. I mean, maybe I found the normal amount out of that much in circulation for in the early 80s. Who knows? But, hey, I got four of them so far. What is the rarest date to find in the 80s? Well, that would be 1987. And... No silver in this roll either. 71, 73, 76, 71, 71, 72, 71, 74, 79, 74, 72, 76, 72, 76, 71. Really nice and circulated 74. 71, uncirculated 1980. 71 and another 80. So yeah, I think 80. Oh, and I dropped a few. So yep, looks like 1981. Ooh, this one's kind of nasty. What was there? Oh, this one was partially opened. There's like lint all through it. Oh my gosh, fuzzies everywhere. When I'm opening these rolls, there's dust particles flying out of them. These have been stored for a very long time. I heard silver, I think. Did you all hear that? I could be wrong. I thought I heard silver. No, I hear it. I'm telling I can tell you right now, that one sitting on top here, that is silver. You can hear it coming out of these customer wrapped rolls. I'm gonna see if I can get a shot of this while it's still in there. That one's silver, the second one in there. Can you see the edge of it? Is that a 40%? Yeah, I think I see a seam there. I mean, you can hear it coming out of these old paper rolls. Oh, yeah, I can hear that. That's definitely silver. Pick up the one I dropped there. Oh, wow, that's really dull looking. Is it a 40%? Maybe somebody went through these and missed some of them. Man, you would not be able to hardly pick that out by edge. It's that one. I'm almost certain it's that one right there. It must be a 40%. I know it's silver. I heard it. I'm going to pop it out of there. Crazy. Let me get the glove off here. It's another one of those like red 1969s. Check that out. Maybe somebody went through this collection and just missed some. Because that is not an obvious find unless you're searching by date. 1969D. I love that color though. That's amazing. 40% silver. Unbelievable. Silver. Silver number five. We got 340s and 290%. Man, I hope there's a Benji or something in here, but I don't think so. Vizio said, I heard a silver dime once handed to me as change. I know. If you're listening, you can hear it sometimes. I don't think it's painted. I don't know. It's kind of deeply ingrained in the coin. It doesn't look like surface paint. And here's the other one for anyone just coming in. We found another 1969 that also had a really weird tone. Um, 
it'll focus here. Very bizarre. The edge looks a lot clean and it has a stain on the bottom. I think these were in a lot of, these have like moisture damage too. But that one, the rim was nice. You could tell that was silver from the rim. That was one we found earlier. Um, so let's go through the rest of them. 74, 74, 71, 71, 71, 74, 71, 74, 74, 79, 71, 72, 72, 71, a stunning uncirculated 71D, another uncirculated 71D, and a lot of the uncirculated ones I'm not mentioning. They just have a little bit of a dull color, so you can't really tell on all of them. A 71 and a 74. How's the stream going? Linda said buffering occasionally. Yeah, my, my computer's like running updates or something. I can hear it running, so... Hopefully it's not cutting out too much. All right. We got, uh, let's uh, move this back here a little bit. We got four of those type left and then we got some other ones. So let's, let's finish these ones here. Let's see if I can hear anything. Didn't hear anything in that one, but of course they don't all clank. Um, I don't see any silver there, but of course we gotta check them all. 74, 73, 74, 74, 71, 71, 73, 71, 73, 79, 76, uncirculated 79, 71, Uncirculated 76, 74, uncirculated 71, 71, 71, 71, and 77. Richard, what's going on? PR, how's it going? All right, let's hopefully we get at least one more silver out of this part here, this batch. Oh, I think I might have saw one there. No, that's just a dirty edge. I thought it was a 40. Um, maybe. No, and it does. I don't think it is. Okay. Okay, seventy-two. Hey, Rick, I'm I'm glad um I got these customer wrapped ones this week's too because last week's boxes didn't have any silver. It slowed down on the on the machine wrap. So I'm really happy to pick up this collection. This is fun. Uh, seventy-two, seventy-nine, seventy-two, seventy-one. 74, 74, 74, 76, 72 with the water damage, 76, 71, 76, 71, 74, 76, 74, 77, 79, 72, D uncirculated, stunning, and 76. All right, let's get a silver in one of these last ones here. Let's hope. Uh, don't see any there. Seventy-two D, another uncirculated one. Oh, there's a real nice toner coming up here. Seventy-one. And you know, some of these coins, I'm thinking now maybe the ends of these rolls were taped at some point because I have pulled out a lot of coins. I didn't mention them. But there's a lot of coins stuck together that have like an old, uh, let's see if I can get this to focus. They have like that, uh, that old tape residue on them. I have found at least like a dozen like that. Um, so maybe those were on the ends at some point and they were taped. Um, no idea. Or maybe they were taped into an album if they couldn't fit me. I, I would hope somebody wouldn't tape the front of them, um, but I have no idea. 71. Uncirculated 74, 71D, 76, 71, 79, 71, 74, 77, 71, 71, 72, 74, 72, 71, 71, 
71 and 74. But there could be some really nice high dollar coins of varieties in, the, in that bag. Um, I'm saving them. There could be actually some pretty valuable coins in there. All right, here's the last one that we know certainly is from the 81 collection dump, we're going to call it. All right, come on, let's get a silver in the last roll of this kind. Uh, don't see any. 73, 72, 72, 71, 71, 73, 73, a really stunning uncirculated 73D. That one's amazing. 71, 71, 71, 74, 1980. Finally, another one of those. 79, 79, 74, 74, 74, 73, and 72. All right. So I'm taking these gloves off because they smell really bad. And um, we'll take a break here for a little bit. And then we'll, uh, I guess, I'm actually excited to open these NF String and Sons. I mean, they look like they're all 70 coins on the bank sealed ones. So I literally think these are bank sealed from like maybe the early 80s also. But bank sealed ones. Um, these are actually coins that go for good money on eBay. Um, if you can find old sealed ones like that. I don't know. Do you guys think I should open these on the stream or maybe do a video of that? I'd, I'd hate to make a video out of it if there's no silver in them, but these are probably old wrapped ones. I, I'm, I'm guessing these were cashed in with those customer wrapped ones. That's what I'm guessing. Um, and then I have five rolls of nickels. We have these three rolls that look slightly different. I have no idea if they have to do with those. Let me take a look at, at the ends on one of these. I don't remember. Okay, there's a 1997 on the end of this one. So these these rolls here, I think those are more modern wrappers. They probably have nothing to do with the collection. And I think we checked the end of one of these rolls. I don't think they were all 70s coins. Yeah, one of them's a 1992. So my guess is that was it. That was it for the collection. And then these are all, well, except for these sealed ones. And then these rolls have nothing to do with it. Um, and then we got our five rolls of nickels. So we'll, we'll save those for a little bit. I'll hang out in the chat here for a little bit. I need to get a drink. Uh, what's special about eight, 1980? I don't know. I just know that from all them rolls, apart from a few fluke rolls where there were some new ones mixed in, 99% of the coins, or maybe 98% of the coins that we went through, um, are all dated from 1964 to 1982. And there was only two of the, or 1981, excuse me. And there was only two of the 81s, um, and they are in nice condition. These were the two newest ones from 1981. I typed out the title before we found the 81s, so I'll have to change the title later. Um, and these are in good shape, so I'm thinking that these coins have been in storage since either very late, or since in 1981, or maybe perhaps very early in 1982, before the 1982 started circulating and didn't get added to these rolls. So um, pretty sure these were in, so in storage at least since 1982. Um, that's pretty crazy. And uh, I kept these the, the early 80s ones separate, um, so I know all the ones in the bag. So basically, probably 95% of the coins... We're all 1970s. Man, I wish this collection was just a little bit older. Just a little bit older, but those are all 1970s. And um, for anyone just coming in or watching the stream back in the in the future, before we get to this part, if that ends up being a little bit later, ended up with five silvers out of the collection. Um, but it's nice that two of them are 1964. Show them right there, 90% silver. Just beautiful coins have that old tarnish on them, like they've been in storage a long time. And then three 
40% silver coins, two oddly colored in a nice 1967. I mean, it's weird having those two discolored ones, kind of like a reddish brown and then like a more of like a deep, almost purple. It's weird. Like I said, maybe somebody went through these in the past and just missed some of them and they missed the darker ones. Maybe they tried to pull out the silver, all of it, and failed. I have no idea, but I do find it weird that there's out of five silvers, two are badly discolored. Um, that makes me go, hmm, I don't know, but you can hear that, especially when you get up to the 90s. They have that awesome sound that I could hear in the rolls when they were coming out. Just that awesome silver noise. How long have uh, have that bank branch been at that location? I don't know. It's a fairly new bank. I mean, I, I it's definitely I would say it hasn't been there more than you know twenty years or so, twenty five years. I don't know. It's been there every. I don't know when they opened that location, but it's not like a super old building. So I'd be very. I don't think it's been there. I certainly it hasn't been. If I looked at the construction of it, I'd probably say it was definitely built after the nineties, at least sometime in the early two hundreds, maybe. So maybe 20 years at the most that that bank's been there. We Penny Hunter, what's going on? Yep, I'll check for the no initials too on those coins, the certain dates that have them, but definitely the DDOs and the rare varieties, I'll be checking all of those for. Yes, it was like opening a time capsule. I didn't think I'd get anything like that in my area. <laughs> Thanks for the permission. Be right back. There you go. King of Coins, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm trying to work my way back up the chat here for a little bit. That's awesome, Rick. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Like if you worked at a bank over the years, especially back in the day, I can't imagine the stuff you would come across. Yeah, Bo, that was really fun. I haven't ha I haven't done anything like that. It was like a time capsule in a while. Probably the last thing I had similar to that is when I've like metal detected a location where you could tell all of the finds were like from the same time period. It's been a while since I've got to do something like that. King of coins. I'm definitely, I keep the silver. I find coin roll hunting. It's, it's a hobby for me. Um, so I just stack it and um, it goes into my collection. And um, hopefully over the years, silver will con continue to go up. <laughs> I bet Rick, that's funny. Yeah. Voice to text doesn't always work out too well. But for anyone just coming in, the highest Super Chat tonight, I went over this earlier. I'm not going to go through the whole backstory of these that I've had for a long time. But the highest Super Chatter tonight is going to get one a, a one Troy ounce lead bar. And that's not a joke. This is one Troy ounce of lead, 0.999 fine lead. And um, the highest Super Chat so far is 6 bucks. So you got a good chance of getting this. If you make a super chat higher than six bucks, I have no how long I have no idea how long I'm going to stay today. It's super cool though. It's got the rhino on it. It's from the CMC Mint. I bought a lot of these with other bars for resale, and I have a lot of leftovers from years ago when I used to sell this type of thing. Ed, I'm not done yet, but uh, I did in that. In this, in this uh, collection dump from the early 80s, I ended up out of, uh, let's see how much we went through. I had $350 and half dollars, and these are the rolls we have left that are different wrappers. So that would be 350, 40, 30, 20, 10. So in $310 worth of half dollars that have been in storage since the early 80s, it appears, I ended up finding five silvers, two 90% silver 64s, and uh, three 40% silvers, two are very oddly discolored. Uh, but hey, silver, silver, ooh, 
silver, silver, and a cool variety. So uh, pretty good. Mudsway said you could bend that thing in half. Absolutely. It is very soft. Like I could, with my hands, bend it in half. You could. So you want to be careful with it. All right, well, let's get a drink here. And figure out what else should we do tonight. I didn't have any food things lined up. I'm pretty full after eating that big Chinese meal when I started, but uh, maybe I could run over to the grocery store later while everybody's sitting around uh, waiting. I could run over there and get some crazy foods or something. Mud Sweat said the discolored ones remind me of detecting fines. See, they don't quite for me um, because they have a weird also like deep color to them. It's not just like a dirty look. Like this one has a really deep red um, and the other one's almost purple. Um, but yeah, could they have come out of the ground? Maybe, but we do know that a lot of these coins were exposed to moisture too. There was a lot, there were some with blue edges um, and had some sticky, a few of them were sticking together because they've been in the rolls for so long. So I think whatever color is going on, on on them could have been exacerbated by just being in moisture for a long time but they are odd and of course there's the theory that maybe somebody did try to pick some of the silver out of this collection before dumping it and just missed the dirty silver hard to say really hard to say i mean it was this was fun very interesting do you like small silver or big i i i don't care i don't care on uncirculated small big i like silver however it comes Bo, thank you very much for the $10 super chat. I appreciate it. You are the highest one so far. I uh, hope you find more silver in the other rolls. Uh, I do too. I, I hope so. Um, so let's go ahead and give you a dunk here real quick. And thank you very much again. Let's get you going here. Where'd the ball go? Oh, it's under here. And while I'm under here, I'll pick up the ones I dropped. All right. Ah! I'll be honest though, guys, I am excited to open these NF string and sons rolls. I've never opened these sealed ones like this before and they, they look older. So we're going to do it. We're just taking a break here for a little bit. Kelly, thank you much for this $10 super chat. I appreciate it. Let me give you a dunk. Oh, missed on that one. Bounced off the rim. We'll go around the back and under the legs. Ah! Oh, hey, Kelly, you're, you're fine. You, you've been super chatting a lot, too. Tell you what. Uh, even if $10 is the highest super chat tonight, I know Bo beat you out by a penny, but, uh, I have no, how long this is going to go anyway, but you've been super nice. And uh, you made a big super chat on the last video too. So send me an email. I'll, I'll, I'll at worst send you a consolation prize. And, uh, but yeah, go ahead and send me an email. I'll send something out in the mail to you, whether, whether you're tied with the highest or not, I'll still send you something. And AAP, thank you again for uh, posting to people's channels because uh, I, I know a lot of people that super chat for me don't post videos on YouTube. They just watch. But sometimes sometimes people that do um, super chat are trying to build their channels too. So absolutely cool. You can always post people's links uh, for them. Uh, sounds good. All right. But yeah, man, my throat was starting to like get scratchy. Those gloves have been in that plastic bag. Once again, talking about 
stuff that's been in a storage a long time. I showed you guys earlier that, you know, that old film splicing collection that I had. Well, not collection, I don't know what you call it. That old film spli splicing kit. Um, a lot of the stuff this guy had that I bought the estate from with the house, a lot of his stuff went back to kind of the mid 80s. A lot of it was from like the mid 80s to the mid 90s. Um, but I just so much of that um, kind of vintage film stuff. Um, and yes, the definition of, I, I don't say antique. My understanding is the definition of vintage is usually anything that's older than 20 years. And usually the, the, the definition of something that's antique is like a hundred years or older. So I say vintage cause it's definitely not antique, but kind of like vintage film stuff from the er early days of film slicing and VHS and all that good stuff. Um, and, um, cassette tapes. He had a lot of cassette tapes and equipment, um, and a few cassettes from things that he actually helped produce, I believe. Um, that's a story for another day. But anyway, we had the old coin rolls, the old smelly gloves today that I used. It's, it's I guess, it's vintage 80s day, right? This ended up being the vintage 1980s stream. Maybe I'll do a stream of like all the interesting stuff I've pulled from that property, or at least small stuff I can put in front of the screen here. What's the better place for metal detecting, PA or Tennessee? Definitely Pennsylvania. There is no question there. Tennessee was historically poor. It's on the opposite side of the mountains. Wasn't uh, densely populated until much later than Pennsylvania. Um, so absolutely Pennsylvania was significantly better for metal detecting. The only caveat there is Tennessee is better for Civil War relics. But generally, overall, Pennsylvania is far superior for metal detecting finds. If I still lived in Pennsylvania, to be honest, I'd be putting out metal detecting videos more frequently because there's a lot more old stuff to find up there, whereas it's a lot more work down here. Shout the disco ball and Rubik's Cube dance in 1980s. There you go. Yes, Kelly said PA has older history. Very true. And just more wealthy, too. There's much more areas of Pennsylvania that were significantly more wealthy. So Tennessee was a lot of poor people moving west, you know. And um, like I said, the history doesn't go back quite as far because it's more inland. Um, so overall, Pennsylvania is much, much better. What were your best Pennsylvania finds? Well, Andy, it's really hard to compare because I only metal detected in Pennsylvania for about a year before I moved down here. But to give you an idea, I had so many leads in my hometown because I grew up there my whole life. So I got tons of permissions the year I lived up there, and I hit some amazing sites. I hit an apartment complex built around World War II that was never detected, and I found like 84 silver coins. Um, the first half of the year, I barely even metal detected, and I kid you not, so probably in about seven months of metal detecting in my first year in Pennsylvania, I found... I think it was 213 silver coins, and that was literally only in about seven months. Um, I still was just learning what I was doing. I wasn't really even that great. Um, I, I, I was still learning the hobby, and I did that well. Um, so Pennsylvania, there was a lot more to find. But when I lived up there, I had no idea what I was doing as far as research and being able to date houses and understanding colonial stuff and where all to look. So I focused on modern silver because I could find it and it was fun, but I didn't really do any digging except for one time in for like colonial stuff in Pennsylvania when I lived up there. I only did colonial hunting one time and um, I didn't find anything colonial, but it was at a house that supposedly was there since like, uh, I don't know, like the late 1700s or something. Um, so most of like all the silver I found in Pennsylvania, the oldest one was, it was like Victorian era silver. I found a few silver dimes, seeded dimes, like late 1880s. So I found a ton of quantity, a lot of silver, but nothing like super old or super rare, like colonial, that type of thing. Um, so yeah, when I went back to Pennsylvania in 2019 and I did a video on it, it was like, Found I did titled it like metal detecting found a sealed bag in the woods. Uh, it was metal detecting a dairy farm in Pennsylvania. When I went back to visit and I was able to set up something at a more colonial site, I found my first crotal bell in Pennsylvania in 2019, which is the first time I went back after I moved here. 
So uh, there's a long answer for you. Oh, you like that video, Tony? Yeah, a lot of people like it. Some people didn't like it. <laughs> that was a fun one. What, Andy? What's going on? YouTube is terminating Aqua Chigger. I know nothing about it. I haven't actually been watching many treasure hunting videos on YouTube. I've watched so many over the years. I've been taking a scaling back from it. So I have not been watching uh, many detecting or exploring videos myself at all right now. And if you just look, I pulled up his channel. He just posted a video an hour ago saying it was resolved. Somebody was just probably trying to jack his channel. I've had people steal my videos before. I've had a, I had a channel upload almost all my videos to a new channel. I filed the DMCA claims that are a serious business. If you fall, file false claims, it's you can get uh, sued very heavily. Um, but somebody legit stole my videos before, and I filed a bunch of claims on them. Uh, and got it resolved. It, it happens. Um, I had it happen once really bad. If it's a video stolen here and there, I normally don't mess with it. But once in a while, I'll look through. You have a creators have an option on YouTube to look through content that appears to be similar to theirs. Like it may like if they if it matches your content ID, like re-uploaded one of your videos. Sometimes YouTube is able to flag it and they'll show it to you on a certain page. So maybe once a year, I'll go through there to see if anybody's trying to copy too many of my videos. And if, if it's very serious, I will um, requ re request for YouTube to take them down, um, and which they do. They take the word of the creator generally, um, which is why it's very serious when you claim somebody's stealing your content, because if you're lying, um, the liability can be crazy. Um uh, can basically you can be prosecuted for you know lying and messing up somebody and basically stealing somebody else's work. So I take it very seriously, and I only report people that are like obviously just stole my videos and re-uploaded it. Like they didn't add commentary or something. But who copies me and my videos? Like nobody reacts to my videos or does like a fair use version of reusing one of my videos, which that would be fine for me. I don't care if they made fun of me the whole time. That's the right to do that. I only report the people that actually steal the content and are like, usually they're people from other countries from like um, just out of the country. And they're just trying to steal other people's content and get a quick buck from the AdSense on it and stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff like that happens online. If anybody's been on the internet long enough, they know that's actually normal it's normal. The, inter the internet's like, you know, a place where all of the world's leeches uh, try to get together and scam people and rip them off and steal intellectual property and all sorts of stuff. That's just part of the game. Andy said, any silver today? Yes. In the collection that we went through that has been in storage since the 80s, there were five silvers in there, two 90% and three 40%. And we're going to keep going through some coins here. I'm not going to put those gloves back on. They smell horrible. We're literally like blocking my sinuses. Um, let's go through. Let's now open... Um, these two rolls that don't look like they're from the collection because I think there were newer ones in the ends. Um, but they're wrappers. I've never gone through these type of wrappers before. Let me get that right. You can see that there. Let's open let's pop these open real quick now. Oh yeah, let's gotta put this down a little bit. Oh, 
Well, I don't know. These could be from the same source. They might have added some to them. These look like those mostly the dull rims. Uh, we'll find out here in a second. No, they're different. 1984, 1984, 1997, 1974, 71, 71. You know what? These are partially... These do look like they are similar to that other collection. You know, they have that dull look. 71, 73, 72, 88, 84, 71 D. You can see with that moisture damage, the little green corrosion spots. So these are these were cashed in with those other coins, but just slightly different. They're not all the 60s, 70s, and early 80s ones. 74, 71, 74, 92, 94, 85, and 71. Oh, and there, there they all go. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Maybe these are like, maybe they added these to the collection in subsequent years or something. I have no idea. But let's open the other one. Let's do it. Tony said those are old wrappers. I know. That is so awesome. Uh, don't see any silver in this one. Uh, 1983, 74, 73, 73. Yeah, these are mixed, but from the same source, it appears. 92, 77, 97, 73, 71, 73, 93, 81, 92, 73, 72, 80, 71, 74, 83, and 92. Not snack break time yet, Vaughn, man. I actually don't have anything here. I'd have to go, I'd have to run over to the grocery store, which maybe I'll do. Maybe I'll leave everybody hanging and run them back. What do you say? Um, well, we could save the nickels for later because they don't have anything to do with that. Tell you what, let's just keep going for now and, um, Let's open these ones, the ones that were slightly different. Let's go ahead and open those. Because I think these ones had some new ones on the end too. I'd love to see silver popping out of here. Um, I don't know. I do know. Let's sit this over here. Let's see what we got here. 1997, 95, 83, 72, 72, 71, 76, 85, 71. I don't know. A uh, bunch of 74s. A 71 that looks more circulated. I think these are different. These don't have the same coloration. So I'm going to go out a limb and say these are from a different source because those do not look anything like the other ones. Uh, so I need to kind of keep these separate. I'll set those aside here. Let's go through another one. Oh, those are Amazon wrappers, likely searched. Okay, so yes, there are multiple different sources. There were only three of these rolls. A customer probably brought them in. So... I don't know if they'd be searched um, as far as taking out silver. Somebody could have just had some. But, yeah, obviously modern wrappers. Um, yeah, these look to be different sources. Because, see, unlike the ones that I was going through that were almost all new, see how there's all these smooth rims? There were, like, there were no none of these in the collection rolls. So I think these are from a completely different source. Well, that one's nasty. Ew. Uh, so I'm not going to yell out all the dates on these because these are just normal rolls. Typical 1970s through 2000s. Whoa. Well, that was unexpected. I kind of got a find here. I just got a cool coin out of that roll. Looks like we got us a pocket coin. A 1974, that caught me off guard because all the coins that we opened from the collection were like high grade because they were hardly ever, hardly circulated. But then all of a sudden I just pulled out a pocket coin out of this roll. I'll save that. I like those. 
Super worn, 1974. Um, and then nothing good in there. Okay, so, hey, I like, we got coins from a bunch of different sources. Cannot complain. Cannot complain. Kelly, I don't know what that was. I didn't study it enough to figure it out. And doesn't look like there's going to be any silver in those three rolls, which I wasn't expecting, but you never know. But at least we got a pocket coin, so we got something interesting out of the other source. Ew. Now this one's nasty on the back. Don't want to know what that is. All right. Hey, bird dog, what's going on? You just missed it. I couldn't believe what happened here. I wasn't I wasn't even thinking it was going to be anything amazing, but uh, my bank gave me a ton of customer wrapped rolls uh, because they told me they can't order me boxes right now, some kind of corporate thing. They said they think there's another shortage or something. I don't know what's going on at my bank, but they told me they had a bunch of stuff in the vault which I was like, well, I didn't know about it. They knew I take this kind of stuff, so I don't know why they never told me about it. So we just went through $310 worth of half dollars that all dated from 1964 to 1981, except for a couple rolls that had some newer ones mixed in that probably got mixed with another source. Uh, crazy. They've literally, they're all dull. They look like they've been in storage literally since the early 80s. And there was... And only $310 worth, there were five silvers. So some I thought at first, the first two or three rolls didn't have any silver. So I thought um, I thought that they, somebody had picked through them and just dumped the clad part of the collection. But no, there were five silvers in there. So all the coins, except for, like I said, a few rolls that had some newer ones mixed in. I don't know why. Somebody could have added to them just to make sure they were full rolls. That's pot. That's what I think happened. So basically, all of the coins in that collection were from 1964 to 1981. Crazy. Yeah, bank error in your favor. Collect, what was the one for Monopoly? Bank error in your fav favor. I think it was collect $200, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. It was like hit and go, right? Um, so anyway, for anyone just coming in, the vast majority of the coins, I'm going to go through these for varieties and errors because there can be some extremely valuable coins in the non-silver because I know these were all in storage and in those rolls not touched since the early 80s. Um, so there could be some really nice uh, coins worth maybe $20 a piece or even more if I find some of the rare varieties. Um, hopefully there's at least one or two good ones in here, but... All of these are from the 1970s. Every single coin in this bag. So like 95% of that collection was all 1970s coins. There were a few from the 60s, which were silver, obviously. And then there was a, and then this is the only stack of 1980 and 1981, which is why I think it was early 80s that somebody stored all these. But that turned out to be a really awesome time capsule. I was not expecting it. Yeah, early 80s pre-mullet vintage. There you go, Andy. It was pre-mullet vintage. Um, but I am excited about these NF String and Sun rolls. Because um, you can tell they're so worn around the edges. So I'll show these up close. And, I, and I'm almost certain these are still part of that collection. But these ones are bank sealed. I'm really debating on whether doing a video on these. Now, the odds of there being silver in them are significantly higher than the modern wrapped rolls, naturally, if these are from the same time period of being in these rolls since the early 80s or, you know, around then. Um, so rule number one just has a reverse, but a very thick coin, probably 70s, and then a 1976 there. So we know there, obviously, they're, these were rolled post 1970 or you know 76 or newer 
This one's got a 1971D and another bicentennial ender. And um, this roll has just a reverse there. And 1971. So on these ends, the newest coin is 1976. So, I mean, it's so hard to say. I mean, if these, if this person that, that stored all these coins got these from the bank in 1981 or 1982, I would say the chance that there's silver in those rolls is about what we did today. Like I opened $300, $310 worth, and I found five silver. So out of three rolls, there's a potential there could be a silver or two in here, probably one. Um, but I'm hoping there's at least one because we got three of them. Um, but that that that's that's a rare opportunity to get ones that are literally have been bank sealed. Um, we know certainly since at least 1976, but I think these were rolled in the early 80s. That's just my that's just my guess from what we saw here. Bird dog was a bicentennial baby. There you go. I'll have to, I'll, Bird Dog, I'll have to give you one of the, I'll have to find the nicest bicentennial I have and give it to you. So once in a while, I'll pull an uncirculated one. Kelly said, I was a beauty pageant contestant in 1976. There you go. Man, so I'm really debating on those, but let's keep going through some stuff now here. Let's, uh, why don't you see, let's open the nickels. These are just standard rolls because I knew I didn't have a lot to go through today. So I was just taking literally whatever they would give me. And I hate dimes and quarters. We wouldn't have found much in a few rolls. They wouldn't sell me any pennies, but they did give me five rolls of nickels. So let's see if we can pull an old nickel. Let's, let's see if we can do that. It's been so long since I've coin roll hunted nickels. Wouldn't that be awesome if we got a war nickel out of five rolls? I'm going to do half a roll at a time because these are a little bit more difficult to go through. Oh, they're so small. Oh, my goodness. It's been so long since I've... Oh. What? The second coin in? <laughs> the second coin in. I thought it was going to be a 40s or 50s nickel. It looked older. Second coin in, we got a 1939. That's the, that's the second full year of the Jefferson nickel. Unfortunately, no mint mark. So these are fairly common. But if you can get one or two 30 coins per box, it's, it's good. In a $100 box, we got one in the first roll. Unbelievable. I, I just got the right coins today. So literally in 1938, they made Jefferson nickels and Buffalo nickels. So that's, this is the first full year of the Jefferson nickel. And that was the second coin in from the top. Unbelievable. We're actually having a pretty good night here for scrambling to find coins. Oh, these sound so different. The tink is so dainty. The clinking and tinking is so dainty sounding. It does not sound like those clunky half dollars. And I did notice in these rolls, there's a lot of these. You can even see some of them on the ends. There's a lot of these 2020 nickels. So, of course, a lot of newer ones mixed in. Um, 1964, though, an older one. Oh, what is it? It is like the coin roll hunt of the gunk. We're having a gunky coin roll hunt. All right. Oh, that was only half the roll, right? Oh, wow. There's some decent looking nickels in these rolls. Maybe we'll hit something good. Yeah, there's actually a lot. See, look at this one. There's some of these like absolutely mint 2020. Um, if it'll focus. Absolutely mint 2020 Denver's. Look at that in the light. Um, I'll keep an eye out for 2021s. I'm not keeping any of the 2020s. Well, there's a dirty 1962. Not old enough to keep. 
I uh, only keep the pre-1960. Uh, man, I'll tell you what, guys. I think it, First, let me show you this one. Here's a parking lot special coin. We're getting all kind of weird stuff today. There's a newer one that's been run over about 50 or maybe 100 times. That is painful. And look at this. I didn't look at this yet. I think we got another pre-1960. I'm going to show you. It came out reverse first. I'm going to ask you all to guess the date in the chat. Look at that. D-Mint mark. Look, how, look at that nice gray color. I'm going to ask you all to guess the date of this coin. Um, I haven't looked at it yet, and I'm going to look. I'm going to study the reverse here a second and tell you what I think the date is. Um, first of all, I do think it's going to be a 1940s or 1950s nickel. Um, man, I want to say 40s, but I know the 1956, seven. Eight and nine Denvers are so common, but this doesn't look like the late 50s to me. It looks like an earlier strike. Um, I really think this might be from the 40s. I'm going to guess what are the more common D-mint marks in the 40s. Could be 48, 46 D. I don't think it's a pre-World War II one, though it could be a 41 D. Um... I'm going to guess it's a 48D. I'm going to guess 1948. I was close, guys, but it is pre-1960. It's a 1953. So, hey, first roll, we got a 50s and a 30s. Unbelievable. All right, next roll. It has been so long since I've gone through nickels. We're going to do half at a time here. These look a lot newer. Another 2020. Yeah, those were mostly newer. All right. Don't think there's going to be anything in this roll. A lot of 2020s, though. Nothing in that roll. You won the price is right and it's a new car? Bummer on that. Uh, currency collector, I've never found a V nickel, but I have found buffaloes and quite a few war nickels. But I've never hunted a ton of nickels. There's an old rim, an older rim in here. Is that old enough? No, it looks. This is dirty. I don't think it's too old. Uh, 1970. That first roll was a zinger. Yeah, I got three 2020s in a row. So there's a lot of newer coins mixed in with these machine wrapped ones. But that's common. Okay, nothing to... Whoa! I need to get more nickels from my bank, man. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. I've never heard this before in so few rolls. It's another 1939. But that one's a lot more worn. Unfortunately, no mint mark. The ones with mint marks are more valuable. The 39P are very common. But look at that. Another pre-1940 Jefferson and only the third roll. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. I am shocked how some bad news today really turned into a good a good hunt here. All right, nothing else in there. Two more rolls for the nickels. Yeah, Mudspot said full steps. Fully obliterated steps. 
Ooh, almost lost that half of the roll. Kelly said, I found a 39 a few days ago. Always nice to find the 30s ones. The rate we're going, I wouldn't be surprised if a buffalo shows up. Oh, there's a 1960D. Just missed the 50s by one year. Man, I'm going to need to ask my bank. Well, they said they can't order anything now. But I would like to get a box of nickels if they're going to be this successful. There's a 69. Some more of the 2020s in here. Um, nothing in that roll. One more roll here of nickels. Get the first half out of here. A bow? I don't know. My bank told me that the lady that normally order, orders my boxes said she actually tried to order them, but her system wouldn't let her. That She told me that they're not able to order any boxes now, which didn't make sense because what if they run out of something? I guess if they run out, do they have to? I don't know. It didn't seem like it added up, but they are nice there. I don't think she was trying to sidestep it, but she told me she even tried to order them, but their system was uh, locking them out from ordering boxes. So I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't have an explanation. Uh, but they sold me these couple rolls of nickels and that bu bunch of customer wrapped halves they had from the, the vault. And I'm, I'm glad, I'm so glad that this instance came up and I cleared out their vault. I had no idea. I had no idea. Uh oh, we got another old looking one here. It's a 65. I thought it was a little bit older. That's semi old. Andy said the price of cardboard. <laughs> there you go. Maybe the price of cardboard went up and they don't want to order it anymore. Okay, this last roll might not have anything either. But hey, can you believe it? Two 1939s out of five. Um, makes me think we would have hit a war nickel if I would have got some more rolls. Okay. Well, that's it for the five roll nickel hunt. I hope you all enjoyed that. I think from now on, maybe I will get some miscellaneous rolls to mix it up with the half dollars. Maybe I'll try to get some pennies and nickels uh, when I'm able to get half dollars. Plugs, you missed it. You missed it. We went through $310 of coins that were in storage since the early 80s. Crazy collection dump, but it wasn't loaded with silver, but in $310 worth, I got five silvers. 290s and 340% silvers. And then we went through five rolls of nickels just now, got two 1939s out of only five rolls, and then a 1953. And I'm still saving the NF String and Sons, which I believe are from that same collection, that these are sealed, I think, from the early 80s. And the newest coin on the end of these is from 1976. So there may be some silver inside of these. But keep in mind, by the early 80s, they minted a ton, an absolute ton of half dollars in the 1970s for business strikes. So the odds of there being a silver in these rolls is still, I don't want to say low, but it's not still like super high. So I estimated that out of these three rolls, if we found one silver out of these three rolls, that would actually be a success. What do I say to the haters? Um, I try just to ignore them anymore. Don't put any logs on the fire. So the plan for my next stream, since my bank uh, cannot order me sealed boxes, um, I guess I'm just going to have to try some other branches. And if they can't order them, then which if it's a corporate thing, then the other branches around me won't be able to, but I will go around to some of the branches and try to, I'm going to, I guess I'll just go around and say, Hey, you got any half dollars in your vault that I could buy from you? Um, cause it paid off today. Um, yeah, Mutt Swat takes care of the haters. He, he, uh, silences them, but uh, yeah, so I guess for, 
If I do a stream next week, I'll try to just scramble around. And if I can't find half dollars or anyone that will order them for me, I guess I'll just try to get some pennies and nickels. And if I get really desperate, maybe we'll get some quarters. Oh, I hate going through quarters, especially dimes. I hate too, but better odds of finding silver and dimes than quarters. But maybe I'll try to get some penny and nickel rolls and um, maybe some other stuff. We'll see. But uh, hey, I'm glad this happened today. Otherwise, they I just uh, so the the teller that's ordering my boxes now has actually only taken over the vault duties for like the last three weeks. It's a, a new person ordering them for me, and she's the one that mentioned them in the back. So uh, the people I used to work with there at the bank just never mentioned them. So I'm glad that all this stuff started to happen that I started working with her, and now. Um, I cleaned out their vault and <laughs> found some silver, and I guess we'll go from there. I'll, I'll try to scavenge for you guys and try to find more stuff to go through. Vaughn Mint said, go buy gloves. I at least got a – I actually like those, but I got to wash them. Oh, man, those old film splicing gloves. Man, they smell like – my throat's still like, man, that must was crazy. Becca said, JD, do you think it's possible the Mint is not making a uh, coin anymore and set up to go to a new form of trackable online currency only? Um, I don't think so yet. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Um, I think some of this coin shortage is more so logistics problems and different stuff. Um, I don't, there's really not a coin shortage. Um, I think she just said that today because she didn't know what to say. I don't really know what's happening. I do expect in the future finding older coins from banks will get more difficult as things go more digital and stuff. But as far as as far as far things moving to an online currency, I think the U.S. is still a bit of a ways from that just because there's still quite a bit of a traditional view. And a lot of people like their greenback that's physical, you know, regardless of your political stance. I think the world's definitely headed that direction, but I don't think we're there yet. Sheila, thank you very much for the $20 super chat. I really appreciate it. Thanks for hunting and I caught a live stream. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, when I was here in the other time, Sheila, that it probably wasn't good for you to be popping in, but um, I did it earlier today. And actually, Sheila, you're the highest super chat so far. So if you end up in the highest one of tonight, uh, you are going to, if you end up the highest one when the stream ends, the highest super chatter I'm get, giving away or super sticker. I'm giving away 0.999 fine lead bar. Absolutely crazy. Really cool. Since it's 999 fine lead, it's very malleable. And uh, you can see it's, <laughs> I'm just, for the sake of it, you can see, you can bend it, but I'm not going to do that too much because I don't want to ruin it for the person that's going to get it. But I used to sell all sorts of exotic metal bars years ago. And, um, had some of those left over, thought it was the coolest thing, had to give one away, a 999 fine lead bar. But next time we'll probably keep on with this theme. Uh, you'll see. I'll give another. I'll give away another goofy uh, metal bar probably on the next stream. Currency collector said maybe the bank is counting inventory. I have no idea. Uh, oh, let's do a dunk for Sheila here real quick, and then I got to wash my hands. Maybe we'll open these just to get – I, I got to open them. Oh, I'm going to try a real crazy dunk here now. I'm going to try to pull it down. Ah! Ah! When I smacked it, it landed in my garbage can. Let's try this again. Oh, i going to put this down. Oh, got it. Thank you for the comment on the dunk. All right. Um, my curiosity is really getting to me. I don't think I could make a video out of opening three rolls. Oh, 
Oh, I'm, I, I'm just wondering if I should open them now. It's eating away at me. I want to know what's in them. Man, I'll open them. I'll open them for everyone. We're going to do it right now, okay? We're going to go through the old NF String and Sons half dollar rolls that I think have been sealed since at least the early 80s, but we're going to know as soon as we open them. So here, we'll do it. We're going to do it now. We're going to do it now. We'll do it to celebrate Sheila's uh, super chat. So let's see. First roll. They look older, but I don't see any silver. They do look older, though. Well, there's one that's got that little bit of a smooth edge, but I don't still think it's super new. Maybe these are all at least from the 80s and earlier. We're going to find out. So I'm going to read the dates off as we go through them. And um, here we go. 1971, 1980, 1979. These look different. Oh, I mean, these are bank sealed. So some of these were more circulated than the collection ones I went through. 1974D, 1971D, 1983. Okay. Oh, okay. So these are not very old because these are machine wrapped. And I have a 1998. In a 1995. Okay, so these are not these are not as old, but let's still see what the newest one is. Okay, we have a 1998, 1984, 1989, 1985, 74, 73. See, a lot of these are still older. Oh, and I just dropped them. Hold on, I want to keep because I want to keep these ones separate. Ah. Uh, 1974, 76, look at this, uncirculated, 1981, that's really nice, a little spot there, wow, um, 1996, 88, 71, and 86, okay, so the newest coin is 1998, we'll see if that theme sticks, for the last two, we'll see if it sticks. Can we say they, these have been wrapped since the late 90s or early 2000s? I guess we'll find out. I'm gonna put this down more. Next roll. Don't see any silver, but they do all look kind of older again, mostly. Okay, so 1971. 1971, 79, 71, 71, 71, 83, 72, 76, 76, 77, 71, 71, 84, 71, 71, ah, dropping coins again, uh, 71, 74, 73 and 76. Okay, so the oldest one in that rule was what, 1984? Uh, so yeah, these, these have been, these still have, like I said, they look worn around the edges. They've been rolled up for a while. They're just not as old as the other collection, it appears. Crazy how I got so many different sources here. Last roll. And no silver, but let's see what these dates are here. 76, 79, 71, 73, 85, 74, 73, 94, 74, 97, 71, 79, 71, 76, 88, 71, 73, 76, 76, and 76. Okay, so out of those three rolls, the newest coin was 1998. So I do think those have been in those rolls for about the last 20 years. That's still pretty cool. Just no silver. Like I said, 
there wasn't a high chance of silver in those rolls, but I knew there was a better chance um, than the rolls I normally get from the bank. But in three rolls, tough odds still. Uh, no, there were no halves in 75, um, unless they made just special ones that year. Um, okay, so just to give, just to tell everyone the reason for this, uh, da, 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 da. no Kennedy half dollars were originally issued with 1975 dates because the 19 to 1776 to 1976 bicentennial coins were minted during the 75 and 76 calendar years. So there you go. These are not endorsed by the U S treasury defacing. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so there you go. That's the reasoning for it. And that's why there's a gazillion of the bicentennials out there. So they were issuing them for the 75 year as well. So that's why there's no half dollars dated 1975. Treasure Nature, what's going on? Plug said, I got gold again last Saturday in a metal detecting. Awesome. JD needs a pillow, a floor. A pillow floor. There you go. Yeah, and, and I need not a glass desk, right? That would not be cool if I break this glass desk on a live stream. I'll send you some from my area, although it's not that way far away from you. I might be able to get my sister to send a box from San Diego. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I will say um, the only hard thing about, especially if it's like coin boxes and stuff for anybody there, they'd be so insanely expensive to ship. So um, I'll try to scavenge around here to see if I can pick up some rolls. And I mean, I should be able to find another bank that can order them for me, but I don't really want to set up accounts somewhere else. But if I have to, I will. Um, so I don't know what we're going to do, but Hey, pretty good day for not getting any bank silt coins. My goodness. We did good. Bye Mark. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, no time travelers. That is all the five rolls of nickels that we went through. Um, what we found, this is a bag of all 1970s half dollars. And um, mixed in were four silvers from the 60s, two 90s and uh, three 40% silvers. And um, then just a small stack from the early 80s. And then um, we had coins from like four different sources on this hunt. It was pretty interesting. Just a variety of different wrappers. The, all, the collect, all the old collect ones from the collection were in these wrappers, um, specifically those kind. Um, and then I had two of these, which had coins, just average half dollars in them. There was one other different kind of wrapper that are mixed in over there. And then I had the three NF string and sun sealed ones I just opened. That looks like they've been sealed for the last 20 years. There were no coins newer than 1998 in any of the rolls. Um, so pretty interesting. <laughs> All right, Kelly. Yeah, I mean, that was fun. I'm glad I could open them for everyone on a live stream here. It was really fun. I, I was excited. When I opened the first roll and I saw they were all from the 70s, I was I was intrigued. I, I was happy just that it was something different. But like I said, I really thought that somebody had just cashed in all the clad from the old collection and took all the silver out. So when I opened that roll and saw... That 1964, I, man, I thought we were going to hit a lot more silver, but hey, that was still fine. Five silvers is better than none. That was definitely a time capsule and super fun to go through. All right, so I've been streaming for three hours now. That went quickly. Five is good. Hey, and it was in only $360 worth. I mean, I do good if I find one or two silvers in a $500 box. We got five silvers and 360 bucks. That's not even a full box. 
Um, so that was sweet. So what do you think, guys? What, what should we do now? Just hang out and check? Because I'm, I'm out of coins. I'm out of coins. And those were easy to go through because they were customer wrap. They were really easy to pop out. So what do you think? Maybe should I keep the stream running while I, while I run and grab some snacks or something or some weird foods? I could go shopping and leave the stream running. What do you all think? Day still early here yet. It's 6.11 p.m. I'm going to wash my hands real quick, though, while we're figuring this out. What should I get to try? Yeah, maybe we could. Um, there's a Walmart close to me, too. I could look at their inventory online and see what they have and then go pick it up. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by, Carol. Um, I hope you have a great week, too. Yes, Robert. I think I'm going to go to the branch that I have um, uh, an account with, and I'm, I'm just going to ask them. I'm going to say, hey. You know, I do my banking at such and such a branch. that have had accounts for years. Um, they told me they can't order boxes right now. I'll say, hey, what do you got back there? What do you got in your vault? Hey, so, so this is pretty funny, right? Like, I don't want to, I didn't want to get people fired. The one teller that used to, uh, that loved ordering me coins, he just, he liked me so much the one day, like when he was getting my coins, he's like, yeah, come on back in the vault. I'm like, you sure I should be going back in the vault? He's like, yeah, come on back. So I've, I've actually literally been in my bank's vault before and, um, he didn't, he didn't get fired, but he literally took me back into the vault, which I literally was trying to save his job. I'm like, you probably shouldn't be taking me back into the vault, <laughs> but he let, so, um, that was interesting, but yeah, I'll, I'll go to around to maybe at one or two of the other branches and say, Hey, Worst case scenario, if they don't have any loose half dollars or rolled ones, worst case scenario, maybe I can bum some uh, nickel and penny rolls off of them for our extreme. Plugs, uh, I checked real quick and he seemed like he uploaded another video. It's fine. He sorted it out. That kind of stuff happens all the time on YouTube. I didn't watch the original video, but I didn't think anything was going to happen. It looks like it's all good. Uh, Waldo, uh, my bank had uh, $360 of worth of uh, wrapped coins in their vault. And because they weren't able to order my coins this week, they asked, asked me if I wanted them. And I said, sure. And um, so they came from my bank's vault. And apparently the person that works there said they've been back there for a long time. Now, she probably only meant a few years, but they, she just probably meant, well, we haven't been able to get rid of them. Kelly, yes, uh, my current bank, I've had an account there since I moved into this area in 2017. So my, my local branch, they know me really well. Hey, Jack, how's it going? I hope you have a good day too. Sheila said, get a hula hoop. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know how long it's been since I've used a hula hoop? I would feel, I would feel pretty goofy, the grown man doing a hula hoop on his live stream. Then everybody will, hey, speaking, I was going to say everybody would know I lost my marbles. Hold on a second. I forgot about this. So I've been re-landscaping my front yard and I had to pull out a few small uh, decorative trees that were in my landscaping. And looky what I found. 
when I pulled the tree out, one of the trees. So if anybody knows marbles better than I do, let me know. My This house was not built until 1959, but this looks slightly older than the marbles I grew up with in the 90s. They're like not the dollar store or typical ones. So I'm just guessing uh, on a whim that this marble is maybe from looking at the design of it, maybe from the 70s or 80s. What do you think? Anybody know marbles better than I do? I know this isn't one of the super like World War II or earlier ones. Um, how old do you all think that is? Like I said, it looks slightly older than the ones I grew up with. It just looks a little bit different. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's from the, the maybe it's from the eighties or it could be from the nineties. I don't think it's. I definitely don't think it's newer than the nineties. Decone seven ten said eighty nine. That was very specific. <laughs> Becca said cat's eye. Yeah, it's a cat's eye. I just don't know how old it is. I could still buy those at the fair in the eighties. So yeah, it's it's not a super old one, but it's been a long time since I found a marble. Anytime you're digging, you never know what you're going to find. And this was close to the front steps of my house, built in 1959. So I was super happy to find this. Um, very super happy to have that. It's been a while since I found a marble during digging. Because it's not common to find them while metal detecting, unless they're inadvertently in the hole with something else. It does happen. Ah, focus. Thank you. <laughs> Mud spot, even more specific. One nineteen eighty two point one four five. Oh, I say that because I had the same one when I was twelve, um, eighty nine. Okay, I mean, so that, like I said, it just seems like these slightly predated the ones I grew up with. Like, but they're very similar, so that makes sense. So I guess we're gonna go out a limb and say this is a marble from probably the eighties, maybe the late eighties. That sounds about right. But it was cool to find anyway. It's in good shape. Becca said, I had some like it in the mid-70s. Okay, so, I mean, I think we were on the right frame of mind, though. 70s or 80s. So, I obviously knew it wasn't one of the crude older ones. Pretty, pretty decent machine. Machine-made marble, so... I knew for 100% certain it wasn't any older than the 1960s. At least that was my thought process. Kelly, I've only ever found one shooter um, inadvertently, but it wasn't a super old one either. I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll make this more fun. If somebody super chats any amount, even 99 cents, I will go out into my garage and I'll pull out my marble collection and I'll show everyone. I'll run out my garage. And while you're all thinking that over, I got to go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back in a minute. All right, I um, forgot that to open this box. <laughs> Kelly, thank you for the dollar super chat. I will go get the marbles here in a moment. Um, yes, Robert, I'm glad you're still here. This is your box. So... Um, 
You want me to open this on the stream, I'm assuming, right? I'll have to look for a note, but it's not open yet. Um, I'll make sure I don't show your address on it. Large mouth bass, thank you for the $20 super chat. Love your channel. No, go find your marbles. Nice comment. I appreciate that. But hey, you tied Sheila. So I have to mention that for the uh, the leader for the lead, 999 fine lead bar, troy ounce of lead, Sheila is still technically the highest because her $20 super chat was first. But thank you. I'll give you both a dunk here in a second, and then uh, – I'll go get my marbles after I open this package. Okay, Robert said yes, open it on the stream. I love these little key knives from Harbor Freight. Those things are just so handy. Ah! It would have been nice to open these before I started the stream. Hi, JD. Enclosed are gloves that will work better for you. Also, soap for cleaning hands. I use this to clean hands uh, after working on the car. If you move hands, uh, if you move hands back and forth, you'll find the gloves are breathable, not like the ones you wear normally. Okay. And then subscriber Robert Juberg. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. That was very, very kind of you. All right. Ooh, platinum four times the power. Well, that'll work for coin, coin grease, coin grime. And uh, let me set that over here. Oh, hey, that's pretty cool. Sweet. Copper infused compression gloves. Oh, that's awesome. I love compression stuff too. Sometimes in the summer, like I wear compression clothing too, so that's cool. Well, that was very nice of you, Robert. Thank you very much for sending that box. I'm going to open these now. Hey, the ulcer, I mean, if I ever have arthritis pain or joint swelling, I'll be good to go. Let's try these out real quick. Oh hey, these look these look really cool. Oh yeah, are these um odor reducing, yes. I know some of these gloves, they must maybe they add a little something to it, I don't know. But yeah, copper infused. I've heard of this technology before. Um I've never I can't remember. Have I ever tried anything copper infused before? Uh I might have once in the past, but never gloves. Sweet, actually. That's kind of crazy. Oh, wow. These are super comfortable, too. I guess this strap goes the whole way around. Or no. No, the other way. Other, oh, other, it goes the whole way around, just the other way. Put these on a second. Linda said copper tends to be act, antibacterial. Oh, focus. Exactly. Yes. Okay, these are kind of cool. Yeah, and it has kind of like these, they're kind of like ribbed. And then they are, they're breathable too, so my hands won't get soaking wet. So yeah, I mean, I could use these for coin roll hunting and then I guess uh, keep washing them over time. Uh, I don't know how long they would last because I'm pretty heavy. Uh, like coin roll hunting might wear through them eventually, but actually I think these would last for quite a while. I mean, I might get, I mean, I, I could probably, if I stream once a week, I could probably get at least six months out of these. Oh, yeah, much more breathable, and that's cool because the fingers are already cut out, and um, I don't really touch this, you know, the coins too much with that part of my hand. They're normally laying here. Um, so thank you, Robert. These are actually awesome. I'm going to be the fanciest coin roll hunter on YouTube now. That's cool. Thank you. Um, let me go get my marbles. So I'll be back. I'm going to get my marbles. And if I don't find my way back, it means that I've completely lost them. Yeah, I can feel the breathability. Definitely feel the air through the gloves.
keep those hidden behind my back so nobody can see them. So these are all marbles that I found out while metal detecting. Um, I'm going to pour them all into another thingy here. I may have a few other ones floating around somewhere, but these are all the ones I found while metal detecting. We will start. We will start with the few. We'll start with the newer, newer ones and work our way back. So I mentioned I only found one shooter, and um, this is some of these I found on the surface around houses. You know, from modern, from kids losing them. You know, in areas that get washed out, you can see marbles poking out. So. These gloves might work for a good backdrop too, but um, that's a shooter that I found. It's kind of a mid-size. It's like a small shooter, smaller shooter though. Not the typical gigantic ones, but that's the biggest one. So actually most of the marbles that I found are older ones, but I will show, let's get the newish looking ones here first. And we'll work our way back. So there's a typical clear one kind of blue with some bubbles. I don't think that one's too old. Um, I have a few of the more modern ones, like the, the kind I grew up with, you know, the typical. So those are not super old there. This one, I actually remember when I found it, it's just like a kind of pearl looking, pearl looking one, smaller than normal, but that is not very old. Um, now, most of the other ones I found are older, or at least this one maybe not be. This one's just like a deep, deep blue, almost looks black. But you can see where there's some chips on it. That one's very dark. Um, okay, now let's get into some of the interesting ones. Oh, this is actually the one that I found way, 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 way up in the mountains. On that video I did last summer, if you all remembered, around the abandoned cabins. And this thing is really chipped up, but super old one. I don't know how to date marbles, but I think a lot of ones like World War II era-ish, give or take. I've metal detected around a lot of houses built around World War II. That was kind of my bread and butter from Modern, modern Silver. Um... So I think a lot of the marbles I found date to around like the, you know, World War II-ish. Um, I really like these ones. That's a nice older marble. Really like the color on that one. And these are just found in the holes while metal detecting. I found a lot of these in the holes with wheat pennies. Uh, once I found a stash of like 10 wheat pennies and like a, an old play token that a kid had dropped. And once in a while, if you find a yard where a lot of kids were running around, I found old pennies and marbles in the hole with them. You know, just the contents that were in kids' pockets, you know, 50 plus years ago. Here's another nice older one in really good shape, a more solid one, really nice blue. Um, now I don't look through a lot of dumps. I know some people find a lot of old marbles in dumps, but I've never found dumps that have produced marbles. Um, cause I know some people like what I have here is what some people find in like one dump dig, but mine have just all been randomly in a hole here and a hole there. This one was a bummer because this is an old one, but that's just a marble fragment. Look at that orange cream kind of looking color going on there. But unfortunately just piece of that one. Um, here's another old one that looks similar to the one that I found up in the mountains, kind of a mint green and creamy white. Unfortunately, that one's got a big chunk missing out of it, but, uh, that's still kind of cool when they're like that. Cause you can see the inside of them. Um, okay, let's go with this one next because of the color of it. A nice one that's like a, like a red, maybe a little bit of orange there, orangish red color, clear. I don't know how old that one is. Maybe not quite as old as those solid ones, but I have no idea if that's from like the 50s or 60s, but definitely older. Um, 
This is the my favorite one that I found. I, I can't remember what video I found this is, but I remember this was one of my favorite finds. I found this around an old house. One of my favorite old marbles I've ever found. It is purple. Purple, white, and clear. And it's in great condition. And that is a, definitely an old one. I remember when I found that in the hole with an old coin or whatever I dug. I don't remember what it was in the hole with. But just an absolutely beauty of an old one. Um, okay, so this one's, I don't think, very old. That's just kind of like a look a more modern cat's eye. I think it's just dinged up a bunch. Um, that kind of looks like a lot of the ones I had when I was growing up. So not old on that one. I'll, I'll get to my best one here shortly. Here's another nice one. It has like a deep uh, mustard yellow color. I know these are hard to focus on because they're so small and reflective. But yeah, look at that really deep kind of like mustard color and then kind of cloudy. That's a nice older one too. Um, another one I like, I love these solid color ones, blue and a little streak of kind of like orange in there. Definitely a old vintage one there. Some of these like this one could be pre-World War II. Hard to say. I've never studied marbles too much. I might start studying them more because I do like old marbles. This one, I'm not sure on age. It's a little bit chipped. Looks slightly more modern. Could have been, could be another one of those ones from like the seventies, which is blue. Doesn't look like the mo super modern ones though. Um, then this is probably the largest one that's not a shooter. This is abnormally large. I don't know why this one's bigger in size. That's a nice one, and uh, I'll compare it with another one I found here too to show you it's bigger than the normal size, but it's not quite a shooter which takes us to this one. I like this solid black one with blue and green. That definitely in there. And last but not least, get this to focus out here a second. The ones too, last but not least, I'm going to show you the oldest marble I ever found now. Now, I'll give you a little backstory on this marble. I got permission to hunt a corner lot of a house built in the 1930s. And I was finding some good stuff there. And the guy was super nice. He liked talking with me. He said, uh, we know the guy next door. Um, he's like family to us. His name's Mr. Humphreys. I remember his name. Super old guy. He said, look, I said, he said, start metal detecting his yard. I know I'm going to go tell him you're doing it right now. And I'm like, okay. So he got me permission to do the neighbor's yard. And um, the neighbor's yard had a lot of stuff in it too. And all of these people were nice. He's like, I can get you permission for the next guy down. His name's Scott. I think it was Scott. And like, he's really nice too. And he's like, I'll call him right now and get you permission. And he's like, I know the next lady down and she's really nice too. And I, I, I bet that, you know, I could knock on her door and, and, and she'll definitely let you do it too. So I literally got permission to hunt four small houses. They were like, just, you know, probably 1200 square foot, you know, just, 1930s houses in the neighborhood. I got permission for all four of them. And I found a lot of stuff. Between these four properties, I probably found a total of like 60 wheat pennies. Um, I found some silver coins, not a lot. Um, I found an Australian three pence minted in San Francisco that had a hole through it that was made as a pendant. Um, just all kinds of cool stuff off of these properties. Silver dimes, uh, tons of wheat pennies. Like I said, Australian silver. I can't even remember everything else. There was just tokens, all cool, all kinds of cool stuff. So in the hole with one of the old wheat pennies, I think it was from like 1918 or something in the hole with an old wheat penny in Mr. Humphrey's yard in his front yard where they had ripped out a gigantic tree, real small front yard, but I combed it really slow. And in the hole with one of the really old wheat pennies was the only clay marble I've ever found. 
and I always joke about these because I always say they look like malted milk balls, but that is an antique clay marble. And that is the oldest marble in my collection. And it is in fantastic, focus out on me please. It is in absolutely fantastic condition. So when I found that, I was super happy. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and throw my marble in from the other day. We're gonna add it to the collection because anytime I'm digging, that still counts as treasure hunting. Um, so I keep them all in this just for now, just because it's the right size that fits. But I think this is, I, I don't know specifically, but I save these type of jars when I find them treasure hunting. Uh, this is just typical, you know, machine made, but these jars were very popular in like the 1960s. And I find these once in a while in areas that are eroding away while metal detecting. I can't remember where I got this exact, exact jar, but it might've been off the project property. Uh, probably not actually. I don't think I brought any of the jars over here yet. So, but I typically find these when I'm out looking around metal detecting in areas that have washed away and around older houses and stuff. Once in a while, I'll find these intact jars from like the, the like mid century. And um, it's the right size for my marbles now. So I just display them in there because it's clear and you can see through it. So that's my collection of marbles that I found treasure hunting over the years. Little bonuses, non-metallic items that just pop up from time to time. So uh, figured you'd all enjoy that. And this is where I put my basketball hoop in. <laughs> I didn't find this. It's like a very solid pewter. This thing weighs like a pound. It's like a pew, just like a pewter candle holder. It's kind of neat. But uh, anyway, that's what I put my basketball in. And we'll put the balloon in it now. The balloon still won't die. We'll shove it in there. It looks like a globe light. That's hilarious. Next super chat. I'll write your name on the balloon right here. Right here. For sale. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Let's catch up on the chat here a second. <laughs> Steven said, looks like a 69 caliber musket ball. Uh, yeah, maybe if you didn't know what you were looking for, you might think it was a Civil War bullet, but it's it's very light. But yeah, it, it, I guess if you if you didn't know any better, like you can tell in person, it has that feel to it. It's lay, um, and it's not very heavy, but yeah, it kind of almost looks like a musket ball. Uh, Kelly, I think this is older than 1930s. This was probably like a hand-me-down. A lot of these were made during the Victorian period. So just because the houses were built in the early 30s, or I think 1935, those houses roughly, just because this was um, found at a house in the 30s does not mean it's that new. This could be from the Victorian period when they were making a lot of those. Um it's hard to say. I'd have to research a little bit more, but I know these were very popular in the Victorian era. Uh, so that could be late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, Sheila, thank you very much for the super chat. Let me get you written on the, the balloon that has survived for the last several weeks. Ouch. I just stepped on my keys. Amy said, check them with the, with the black light. You know, I haven't done that yet. Um, I have a black light. I could do it on the stream here if you guys want me to. It, remind me, what are we looking for with the black light? Is that, are we looking for uranium? Is that what I'm thinking? Are we looking for uranium in the marbles? Let's get Sheila on here. Oh, this is hard to write on as it gets smaller. There you go. And I gave you a color that pops out on there. <laughs> Let's do a dunk too. I need to stretch here a second. Then I'll look in the chat a little bit more. Oh. Woo! Yep, uranium. That's what I was thinking. 
Um, see, my black light is actually a big long one. I actually use it for authenticating banknotes. Um, we could do a video on that sometime. I got a plug over here. Hold on. I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you guys. I know I have many tricks up my sleeve. Black light, a big long black light. Um, we'll see how this works. I don't know if I'll be able to set something up here easily. I am gonna take these gloves off now though cause I'm not coin roll hunting cause they're getting a little warm. But these are awesome gloves, Robert, thank you. I will definitely use these. And I will not dig with them so I don't ruin them right away. We'll, we'll save these for the coin roll hunting. And that way my hands won't get as sweaty too. These will work perfect. So we'll throw them over there. Good shot. Oh, it's getting to be a mess in here. All right. Um, now, where can I put this? I can't mount it right now i'll have to do this and maybe i'll put them under there and if something shows up i can try to hold it up let's make sure i don't pull out the wrong plug here i don't think any of my computer stuff's plugged in here i think this is just my light i don't know one's the white light and one's the printer we'll just pull one of those out ta-da There's our very purple looking light, making the white on my shirt glow. Um, see if I can. Eh, it's not really dark in here. It'd be easier to do this in a darker area and these don't really slide under there. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna randomly see if any of them change. I might have to wait for night. Oh my, is that just the crack glowing or is that something else? No, I thought something on that was glowing. Uh, I don't think this is going to work too well. I put the clay one under there. I wasn't paying attention. Try the older ones. Yeah, I might have to wait till dark because they're not showing up real good. Yeah, so we'll have to try that. We'll have to try that after dark. I don't think that's going to work too well right now, but I guess I should have made sure that was off before I plugged it in. Oh, well. We'll try that after dark. And if I don't stay too long, we'll do it on another stream. <laughs> Throw a blanket over you. Yeah, that, that's going to get a little complicated. They'll be covering under there. Hey, it's glowing. Um, no, I can't really show it anyway. Rick, thank you for another dollar super chat. Appreciate it. Let's give you a dunk. Another dunk. Where's the ball? <sighs> ah! And yes, you're back. Boom. Okay. It's really messy in here. I'm going to start cleaning up now, and I'll just try to keep an eye on the chat and hang out with everyone here, and then I'll figure out if I'm staying longer now that we're done with the coins. But it is really messy in here, really messy with all them wrappers and stuff we were going through today. How much silver did you miss, Luke? I ended up with five. I need to recycle my paper here shortly. Got a lot. I should probably, these wrappers are kind of cool. 
I don't know. I should probably save these wrappers in case I ever. I should probably save these in case I ever have to rewrap half dollars. You know what I think? I think I should save these. I don't know why I would throw them out because I actually have some half dollars in my collection that I might wrap. So I probably save them. I'll throw them all in a box. Can reuse those. Well, there we go. Hey, <laughs> I missed a coin. I knew this was going to happen in the customer wrap when I missed a coin in one of them. It's a 1974, almost. Wouldn't it have been funny if that one was silver? That's why you always check your wrappers. These ones keep. Put my keys away. Got a lot of nickels here. I don't know if I should put them in the bags of the half dollars. Um, I guess I can mix them. It's not going to matter. I get, uh, or no, I can't mix them in that bag. Remember, that's all coins from the 70s I got to go back through for varieties. I'll have to put the nickels in a different bag because these I'm going through later to check for rare varieties because these have been in storage since the early 80s. There could be some rare varieties in here. Put this back. Man, there's so many dead stink bugs back here. I need to vacuum this before I put this in. It's just getting way too nasty back here. It's getting way too nasty. All right, I'm getting the vacuum. So many cobwebs and dead stink bugs back in this corner. Okay, I feel better about that now. Oh, it even smells like dead stink bug back there. That weird smell. I 
like watching a hotel maid cleaning the room. I wouldn't want that job. That was probably really nasty cleaning off, up after other people. Yeah, they were paying up here in Illinois too. Yeah, and this sunroom, there's so many nooks and crannies that they can get through the base of the door. They hide in the trim. I mean, this is just, this is, and this is where I'm always at with the lights on here at night. And the bugs and the stink bugs, they just, this room, they end up all over the place. They're not bad in any other area of the house, but this area, they're just all over the place. Uh, Rick said, how many Super Chats total from everyone? Uh, I don't know, Rick. I'd have to add it up. I'm not... I can, I, there's actually a way I can look here. Uh, oh, yeah. It's under... YouTube's actually gotten very organized and finally expanding the Creator Studio. So you can track things a lot easier. Um, and I've still been learning my way around. But let me see if I know how to do this. Uh, wow, it even shows them while it's... Okay, so it's like kind of real time. It puts them onto your page. So that's... Uh, so this will be able to say thank you to everyone. Uh, let's see. Alex, somebody add it up. You ready? Get out your hum get out your human calculators real quick, everyone. Here it is. Uh, Alex Mendez, $5. Well, we'll say first names to make it quick. Alex, $5. Rick, $2. $2. Okay, let me start over because I said that twice. Alex, $5. Rick, $2. Rick, $4. Rick, $6. Rick, $2. Bo, $10. Kelly, $10. Sheila, $20. Kelly, $1. Largemouth, Bass, $20. Sheila, $10. And Rick, $1. So there you go. Who's math? That was tonight's Super Chats. Not sure why you asked, but there you go. i to figure out the place to put my platinum grease cleaning Dawn. Thank you again, Robert. Uh... I will actually keep the gloves in this box, I guess, until I find a, find a better system. And I'll keep these in my coin closet, my coin supply closet, which is, as you all know, right there. That's where I go to pull out the magical bags and everything supply related. Yeah, Robert, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it in my kitchen. I have a good place to put it. I know exactly where to put it next to my sink. I have... A weird cabinet that runs vertically slided in there. So we'll throw that in my kitchen. We'll put the copper gloves in the coin supply area. Oh, because I wasn't the high super chat amount? Well, Rick, there was two $20 on the button. So if you want the highest one for the lead bar, 20 and a penny and a higher. It would be the current highest. Yeah, two different people sent 20. Man, I haven't broken down these weird penny boxes before. I see. Right here. Dime box. that for now get the cardboard into the recycle
Yes. Yes. I forgot to eat my fortune cookie earlier. I just threw out one of the funny ones I opened last time. It was really misspelled. Like the words made no sense in English. I couldn't even decipher it. Um, but I forgot to have this. Thank you, Rick, for the 2250 super chat. You are definitely the highest so far. Let me give you a dunk, and then I'm eating my fortune cookie. Ah! Rick Howell really wants that hunk of lead. Fortune cookie time. Such a nice surprise because I ate the meal earlier and didn't even realize. Didn't eat my fortune cookie. I think this is a challenge. <laughs> you are capable, competent, creative, and uh, careful. Prove it. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I've noticed on these fortune cookies lately, sometimes the second line has nothing to do with the top and they, they're mismatched, like they're printing errors. I had one that said something that was indiscernible the last time I opened one. I, I didn't know what it meant. It was literally, it literally made no sense. That one, that one kind of makes sense because the punctuation's careful. I don't know, really weird though. <laughs> really weird. Okay. Sheila? The highest amount to beat is $22.50. And if you send <laughs> $22.51, Rick Howell is probably going to be like, ah! But yes, the highest so far is $22.50. <laughs> I love that comment. <laughs> 55K. And uh, just to be fun, uh, Rick, if Sheila beats your super chat and sends higher than twenty-two fifty, I will send you a consolation prize because uh, I know you are excited in sending smaller amounts. <laughs> I'll send you. Um, I have not lead ones, but I have some miniature bars. And um, if 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 Sheila beats you out, I'll be kind and I'll send you. I will send you a miniature bar. I won't tell you what metal it's made out of. I have a few different ones. Um, so I'll do that for you. Go put this away. Oh, hey, yeah, Sheila, on the, on when I'm giving something away, it's for the single highest super chat. I don't add them all together. So uh, that's the rules I do for the highest thing. But regardless, um, I mean, you've been really kind to me, e even vice versa. If you don't get this, I'll, so basically, I'm going to do something for the top two tonight anyway. So if somebody, Sheila, if, uh, if you don't get this, then I'll send you one of the other bars. But for this to be fair, I have to give it to the single highest super chatter because that's the way I set the rules and I can't change it to be fair to everyone. But no problem. If you don't, if you don't beat uh, Rick's super chat, I'll send you one of the miniature bars. It won't be, uh, it'll be a tiny one. It'll be a one gram bar, but I, I have some cool one gram metal bars also. It's just, they're just not lead. I think I have, I have brass, I have copper, 
Um, believe it or not, I have 10 bars. It's hilarious. I know I have all sorts of crazy metal bars that are stamped. I have copper, nickel, brass, tin, um, German silver, which are a little more expensive. I can't remember the blend of what German silver is. It's not actual silver um, and other stuff. Anyway, I got all kinds of crazy cool stuff. Uh, let me check something here. Just make sure I'm caught up on the emails for the YouTube account here. I get so much spam to my YouTube email. People trying to get me to get into MCNs and uh, there's all kinds of marketing schemes or people want me to promote their become. It's just so many startup goofy things that are like really bizarre. Nice, Rick. Here, let's look. German silver. Um, I'd have to make sure this is right. German silver is an alloy of copper, zinc, and nickel, sometimes also containing, containing lead and tin. I think the one I have is just copper, zinc, and nickel. I don't think there's lead or tin in it, but don't quote me on that. It was originally named for its silver white color, but the term silver is now prohibited for alloys not containing that metal. Obviously, if I ever, so if you ever resell it, you have to market it as, well, I guess you can't say German silver or, or your people get really mad, I guess. Way back in the day, I marketed it as German silver like a decade ago, um, but I had a very clear disclaimer that there was no actual silver in it. Um, but I wouldn't even try selling it anymore because that's just too confusing. Bear with me a moment here. I'm just checking a few things on my end. Yeah, there's no silver in it. I knew there wasn't because I know that I didn't pay a lot for the German silver. I knew they didn't have real silver in them. Yeah, I would never on a stream telling somebody I'm giving away a German silver bar and then everybody's going to be expecting they're going to get some kind of cool German silver. Like, no, it's that's why I said as soon as I said German silver, I said there's no actual silver in German silver. I guess it's kind of like um, uh, what they say. What, there, what's that one joke? Um, like if you only have chance, like if you're paying, if you have a lot of coins, you're Polish rich. <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of just like a just one of those uh, cultural jokes, I guess, of Polish people being poor. There's all sorts of yeah, but yeah. German silver. Like if, if somebody tells me German silver, like I'm thinking of, oh, that's probably some cool like World War II silver coins or something because a lot of people call that German silver. But no, I don't actually know how it got its name. I'd have to keep reading into that. So what I'll probably do on one of the future streams, just so somebody can get like a collection of them, maybe like on the 
next stream, I'll give away to the high super chat. We'll do like a mixture of mini bars. Maybe I'll give away like four miniature bars of different um, alloys. I think that would be kind of cool. But today, I just wanted to give away one of the chunkier ones because I think it's just hilarious. Just the concept of a, of a stamped lead bar, I just think is hilarious. I've always been fascinated by this stuff. As you can tell from the basis of my channel, I'm like into precious metals and metal detecting, coin roll hunting. I just, I just think precious metals are super cool. So all those bars are just really fascinating to me. Yeah, Sheila, if you send me an email, even if you're not the highest super chat tonight, like I said, send me an email. I'll send you one of the miniature bars. You've been super nice to me over the years here on the live streams. I have no problem sending you one. Is German silver ever used to mint coins? Uh, not that I know of. Like I said, a lot of these bars that I have are just like a, from a private mint. I think the, uh, I don't know, are they still in business? Uh, the, the mint I used to buy these from in bulk, honestly, they were a little bit shady. Um, they used to sell some of the really gimmicky, like one mil thick silver bars that were just a thin coating of silver and all copper core. So people actually used to sell them on eBay as one ounce silver bars to try to scam people. So this mint, they sold a lot of gimmicky products that I, I don't want to say they, they didn't misrepresent them, but they made them confusing, confusing intentionally to have like a items that had a very flashy, like retail appeal to them, but yet had a very cheap amount of metals in them. Um, so I actually had some problems with this company in the past the, and they worked with people from China. I kid you not. Like here, here's one of my, I, I've got crazy stories, right? So this company there, I think they were based in Canada and you would order from them. And, and most of the time the orders would come from China because they had a lot of their minting done in China. Sometimes they would ship from Canada. Sometimes they'd ship from the Northeast in the United States, I think. And a lot of times your packages would come from China. Um, and I've had a few instances with them before. Like I said, hey, you advertise this product as this. They came damaged. I got the wrong amount. Or they're like really, they just weren't, they didn't look as like they've got spots on them. They're supposed to be brand new products. I can't retell them. So it was a pretty, um, I don't know what I would want to call the company. Just it wasn't super professional of a mint. Um, I don't know what ever happened to them. I don't see their website when it comes up unless they change the name of it. Like the, the top searches for CMC mint show Etsy, Reddit, eBay. Um, so I think they they must have closed down. Does, if anybody knows in the chat, let me know. Um, Rick, I am not 28. I am four years older than 28. Um, yeah, I, I think they closed down a long time ago. So the one time I ordered these lead bars, they didn't put them in hard cases. As you can see, they came in these bags like this. And when they shipped them to me, like they all came flattened in a package and they were all bent like rainbows. And I'm like, come on, you can't sell somebody 999 fine lead and then just like lump it all in a pile and send it off to them. The whole purpose of these is to kind of try to leave them in good condition so you can see the detail on them. You don't want to, I don't want, I didn't want to order a mangled pile of lead in a bubble mailer. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just funny, but I'll show this up for, show this for one more time for anyone just coming in. But that's the, that's the lead bar. The detail still looks really good on this one. But uh, you can see it's not perfectly flat, but, uh, like I said, that meant, who knows, they may have got shut down. I don't know if they went out of business or if they had legal issues, but they did have some really cool, uh, 
cool products that I liked. It's just that honestly, I wouldn't have trusted them for the metal content because they, like I said, they seem to be a little bit of a shoddy business um, with just some various issues. So I say this is one troy ounce of lead, but if it's slightly short, don't, don't, uh, don't sue me, please. It's just a fun giveaway. Very nice, Rick. <laughs> Uh, Michael, I found five silvers, um, two 90% 1964s, and then I found three 40%, two 1969Ds and a 1967, then in only five rolls of nickels, I found two 1939s, which is awesome, and then a 1953D. So we had some pretty good finds tonight for the little bit of coinage we had to go through. But yeah, going through that that time capsule was awesome. Oh yeah, Rick. I was, I figured you I autocorrect or something might have got to you, but uh, I, I kind of had an idea of where you're going with it. <laughs> but yeah, autocorrect is autocorrect is awful. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me check this one more time. So Rick, if you can send me an email while I got the stream going here. So I make sure I get it from you. A lot of people tell me they're going to send me an email and then I never get it. I want to make sure I get your email. I just want to make sure it shows up. If you're, if you can send it now, if not, don't worry about it. See, like, here's one of those weird marketing things somebody sent me. They're always trying to get YouTube influencers for goofy new ideas. More effective marketing, the title. Site, ytfame.com, YouTube services. Oh, li literally, this is legitimately an illegal one. I haven't had one of these. This is funny. Here, listen to this. They're trying to get me on, uh... oh, did I just delete it? Where'd it go? Did I accidentally click the, oh, no, here it is. YouTube services. Um, and they put the dollar sign after the amount. So this is definitely some foreign scam of people that don't even know how to properly write out dollar amounts. YouTube views, $5.6 per thousand, five, $5.60 per thousand views, $1.90 uh, per 50 views. Or no, that's YouTube likes. You can pay. This is literally like a one of those click farms. That's the spam I got. And it's so illegal. If you ever do something like this, I mean, not like illegal. I mean, like it's against YouTube terms and conditions. Like if you ever buy views or likes, they can shut your channel down. Like you're not allowed to do that. YouTube subscribers, $5.90 per hundred. YouTube comments, $2.90 per 10. Oh, that's a deep. I mean, I'll do that all day. I can type out 10 comments for $2.90. That sounds lucrative. Um, and then they have Instagram services. $2.50 per hundred followers. <laughs> oh my goodness. So that's actually some funny spam there, trying to get me to buy uh, illegal uh, services. We'll pass on that. Hi, Aqua Point. Hey, Todd, what's going on? Uh, sorry, you missed the coin search. This was a fun one. We basically got a gigantic bag of all coins from the 1970s, only a few from the 1980s, and some of them were silver ones from the 60s. It's literally coins that have been in storage, literally in rolls, I think, since the early 80s. It was pretty fun, but it wasn't loaded with silver, so it wasn't like mind-blowing, but I've got a massive bag of half dollars from the 70s that I'm going to save and check for the the rare varieties uh, at another time with my scope because these have literally not been been opened or looked through, I think, since the early 80s. So that's pretty cool.
Some China websites stole a few videos from Silver Seeker to promote their fakes. He did a reaction video on it a few months back. Yeah, it's really common. Um, a lot of videos, especially more popular videos, like my Penny video that has 21 million views has been stolen probably a hundred times. Um, I mean, I literally, literally um, have constantly sent out uh, like them DMCA claims against people who re-uploaded my video, like people from like India and all over the world. Um, uh, okay. Okay, so I'm caught up on stuff. But yeah, if you um if you're here, Rick, send me an email now. If not, don't worry about it. You can send it later. I just want to make sure I get it. JD's variety channel at gmail.com. Yeah, Todd, you if you want, you can just skip the beginning a little bit because I just hang out with everybody and eat Chinese food. I, I I don't know. I you'd just have to skip through it a little bit at first, but I think it's it starts, I start going through them, I think like maybe 35, 40 minutes into the stream, probably half hour or something like that. But yeah, it, I definitely say it's one, it's worth watching. It's pretty cool. Okay, so I think I'm pretty much caught up on the YouTube emails here. And then... Okay, so Kelly, if you're still here, I still have your email because you sent me one before. I don't know if you're still here. I'm just going to put, I'm just going to respond to yours and just say, send me your address. Okay, Rick, I'll send you, I'll just send you a short email real quick. That way you can just respond to it. That'll be easier for you. I'll do it right now. I have it all up. title it lead bar that's an interesting title to get your email if you didn't know the context what's a lead bar uh let's see just send me your address okay i sent you an email rick so you can just respond to it whenever you can hey kathy how's it going I'm just going to continue to clean up here. my marbles back in the garage. Hey, Rob, thanks for stopping in. Yeah, you'll want to watch the beginning of this 
this one back when I started looking through the coins. It's pretty fun. But yeah, we're we're done with the coins now. But yeah, have a good have a good evening. Don't worry, Vaughn, man. I won't lose my marbles. Nope, good to go, Vaughn, man. <laughs> but I did have a good clean out about 30 minutes after uh, the last stream. That's all that happened. I had, it gave me a good clean out. Steven said, back from basketball. Very nice. It's been getting a lot warmer out here. I've been shooting some hoops in my driveway and practicing my dribbling and stuff. What do you think, guys? The night's early. Should I go run and try to find some goofy foods at the grocery store by me? Just come back. I can leave you all hanging here for like 20 minutes. Yeah, you're fine, Rick. No hurry. I just wanted to make sure there was no loss in translation and that I got your email. Uh, I just wanted to make sure. Oh, so anyway, I'll catch you up all on the story real quick. Um, I think I told everyone before I had a lot of weird things happening to me. And then, like, I couldn't get my teeth cleaned at my dentist's office because there was a sinkhole. And they can, I found out now, I actually drove past it. So, they condemned the property. It's an old house. It's like kind of close to Victorian period, an old, amazing brick house. It's like a late, a late Victorian, and they converted it into a dentist's office. It's really cool. Um, and that was my dentist's office here locally. And um, so there was a sinkhole under the road a little bit around the side of them, and I guess it was under the house and then another house on across the street. There's another office next to theirs. They're on the same side but next to them. And um, – so they said like the settling that happened, they went in the one morning and they said it looked like the windows were ready to blow out and it had definitely moved. So apparently they told me that the sinkhole under this area, um, when they probed for it, I guess the insurance told them or something like that, that the sinkhole was 50 feet, a 50 foot sinkhole. Um, so I said, well, that's crazy. And thankfully, no, you know, everybody wasn't working in the office and then just disappeared. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, they merged with another dentist's office close by, and I was able to get my teeth cleaned yesterday, finally. Um, so, isn't that crazy? My, my dentist's office. Uh, so, if you drive past the property now, it's condemned. They have, they have signs up all over it. It's, you're not allowed to go in it because it's a hazard. Yes, Michael, hopefully very soon on the detecting video thing. Yeah, Sheila, it is pretty scary. They told me they went in in the morning and, and the, the, everything had physically shifted and then it looked like the windows were ready to blow out. That's crazy. It was crazy. All right. I'm going to keep tidying up here. I'm almost got this all back to normal here. And my printer needs more paper. Maybe I'll do that now. Finding all kind of random stuff to do while I'm here just chatting. I'll be back. There is something that is very oddly satisfying about stacking paper and, and refilling a printer. I 
can't explain it. It's just fun. I'll seal this up, I guess. So I'm gonna save these wrappers, customer wrapped ones. Oh, that goes over here. Uh, ink can be expensive. I actually, I just use um, black ink. So if you buy the um, ink um, cartridges on uh, eBay, you can get like three or four packs of them for, you know, like, I don't know, only like eight, nine bucks a piece. And they last a very long time. But yeah, if you buy the, especially colored ink is a lot more expensive. And depending on what kind of cartridge you have. I have a pretty standard printer, and um, I can take this out. So I have it like this, and I just get these new cartridges like this and put them in there, and I buy like three at a time, and it's only like 27 bucks, and three of them will last me like a year, and I print a ton of stuff, like shipping labels and whatnot. But yeah, those little color cartridges, like, cause you need a bunch of them, those old style printers that have all the cartridges lined up of different colors. Yeah, those are super expensive. And if you don't use them for a long time, they'll go dry and go bad. Like, yeah, those aren't cheap. Uh, but I, I strictly use black ink. I don't print anything color. This printer's getting a little bad. It gives me a lot of errors sometimes. It doesn't run really smooth and paper gets stuck sometimes, but it's been working for like four years hanging in there. It's been a hardy printer. Uh, it's a brother HL two twenty seven zero DW or ODW. Same difference. I have an Epson printer that you refill it, refill the tanks. Have had this printer for two years. I used to have an Epson way way back. It wasn't as reliable. It was a little bit more uh, fidgety and not as heavy duty. Um, I had to go to one that was a little bit more rugged for like business use, but um, some of the Epson printers are good. Some of the older ones are not very good. All right. Wow. Everybody cleared out earlier today. There's only 44 people here right now. Pretty slow, but I finished up early. So everybody knows there's no more coins to go through. So what do you think guys? Should I should go get some snacks and come back later? Leave the stream running. What do you say? I'd have to go do some shopping because I'm going to have to get something, a little bit of something for supper anyway. And I don't have a lot here. Pawn man said, yes, I could at least get something goofy. The model is the ET2550. Yeah, I haven't had an Epson printer for a long time, so I have no idea how they've evolved over the years. Dizzy Drab's coin says, do it. Where's the camo cap? Michael, too hot. We're dumber. The cap's going to be the cap's going to be off uh, probably till uh, uh, fall. I'm doing good, D D Dizzy Draft. Thanks for asking. Steven said, oh. Sheila, all right. Thank you for stopping by, and I appreciate the uh, um, super chats. Make sure you send me an email, Sheila, if you're still here. If you didn't leave yet, please make sure you send me an email. Uh, that way, whether you're the highest super – well, you're not tonight, but um, I'll, like I said, I'll still send you one of those really cool uh, mini bars. So please, please send me your address so I can send you one of those. I would really like to do that for you.
And I open a new page and there goes my computer sounding like an airplane again. Do I have the munchies or what? Uh, no, I'm just kind of bored here, sitting here talking now. I've been here four hours and 20 minutes and it's kind of getting mundane. So I, I, I could just leave everybody here hanging. Um, let me see, Sheila, I should still have your email on here. Maybe I'll send you one to respond to. Yeah, I still have it here. Okay, I'll respond to this. I'll respond to one you sent me a while back. Send me your address again. Okay, Sheila, if you're still here, I just sent you an email, so you can just respond to that. I just asked you for your address again. So it looks like uh, Sheila's getting a mini bar. Kelly's getting a mini bar. And I'm getting a protein bar. <laughs> Boo, I know, really bad joke. Okay. Um, and then maybe, maybe Rick will get the lead bar if it holds. If not, he's going to get a mini bar. It's kind of like a mini bar for everyone tonight. Um, and we'll see who gets the big head honcho bar. So if you're in the chat now, you can ruin Rick's day by sending a super chat for $22.51. You can ruin Rick's evening. <laughs> and he only gets a consolation prize. All right. So we got it all sorted here. All the emails are out to make sure everybody gets their mini bars. And... I'll probably do it. I'll probably go shopping. Why not? Why not? Let's oh, pull the hangnail. I want to see really quickly what's the value of the silver I found. I'm going to go to coin inflation, look up silver values today. So, to give everyone an idea, if anyone's watching this back, um, let's look at the silver here. So today, 90% oh, silver coins have a silver value of $9.58, 58.49, so 58 and a half cents. And then the 1965 to 1970 half dollars have $3.91 worth of silver. Um, 391.91, so basically 392. So let's do, so 392 times three plus 958 plus 958, and then we'll minus the face value of $2.50. So coin roll hunting today, I made a $28.42 profit Wow, silver's that's nice that silver's going up in value. So these five coins netted me a profit of $28.42 today. Um, so that's pretty cool. Really adds up when you think about it. Like I wasn't even thinking, like, yeah, I mean, silver's no joke these days. Silver's no joke. My mind still wants to think like, oh yeah, silver, yeah, it's still 16 bucks an ounce, but nope. Okay, so that's cool. Cool. Sheila, I got your email. Thank you if you're still here. All right. So let's go spend some monies. Hey, Paula, how's it going? I know I started earlier today. I probably got you. Paula, you will have to watch this stream back. Uh, or at least the good coin hunt part of it, because it was a good good stream today. I got actually got to go through a, a collection that was uh, um, cashed in. I guess that was uh, looks appears like they were customer wrapped in rolls since the early 1980s and had hadn't been looked through. Pretty, it was a pretty fun pretty fun hunt today. Now I'm not leaving the, like the stream now. Um, I think I'm gonna go. Uh, shopping real quick because I've been here for a few hours and I'm tired of sitting and stuff. 
So I figured since we started earlier today, I could go do my shopping, leave the stream running and come back in like 20 minutes um, and could just go grab some stuff. So I think that's what we're going to do. Hey, Albert. <laughs> Vaughn man's convinced every time I leave, I just, I just say that as, as an excuse to go take a dump. He's convinced. So I think I'm going to go to Walmart uh, right now. Uh, I don't want to drive too far and there's a Walmart close to me. Get some more bread for toast. I actually do have, uh, I have some bread frozen here right now. Thank you, Albert. You too. And, uh, yep, got pretty much everything else cleaned up in here. So, yeah, I need to get some fresh air too. So I'm going to leave the stream running. I'll put a little Be Right Back sign up, and I'll go do some shopping, and I'll go do some, uh, I don't know, I'll try to find some kind of crazy food. But if not, I'll just come back and hang out for a little bit. But I'm sure I could find something weird in their international aisle or something. We'll do some trying. So uh, I'm going to take my leave here for by the time I get over there and shop and come back. It'll probably be about 20 minutes. I'll try to make it quick. I'm not going to uh, lollygag around. Uh, so, all right, let me get my sign written up. Do my big BRB sign. See how this works out here. Oh, I can't even read that from the light. You read it there. Can I tape it here? I gotta figure out a new system for this. Can't even read it. You barely see that. Can you read that from there? No, you cannot read that. That's crazy. It's the lighting. Let's try this out. Oh, I unplugged that earlier. Kind of see it there. Uh, I think it's the angle. I can't even tell. I guess you can see it. Tell me if you guys can see it. Can you read it? Oh, I think it's the angle I'm looking at my screen. I think you can read that. Tell me if you can read that in the comments. <laughs> Can't really see. <laughs> Great. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> that's funny. Um, Hmm. I got to come up with a system here. I wonder if I could rig it up on my microphone, which would sound really loud. Oh, it kind of almost stays on there. I'll figure something out. Hmm. When there's problems, there has to be solutions. I guess you could just, uh, wonder if I could do this. Put it down the whole way there. There, here we go. Wait, which way does that have to be facing? Is that backward? <laughs> Is that, I don't know which way this has to face. I'm so confused now. Nope, meaning it is backward or it isn't backward. <laughs> Not backwards. Okay, there you go. The problem is, I hope that doesn't fall off here. We'll put my calculator on the edge of it there. There we go. 
Okay, I'll be back. Hold down the fort. Just got my phone. <laughs> and my glasses.
Hello. I am back and it got dark. I know that took a while. I needed to chill out for a while and I just roamed around the store. But guess what I got? Oh yeah, we're gonna have some fun. <laughs> now I don't know how much, much of this you're supposed to eat, but aloe vera. And uh, I'm going to see what's going on here. All right, what did I miss? Hi, Tammy, if you're still here. Hey, Koya. Uh, Dave's here. <laughs> Are you still in here, Dave? Perplexed Mind, how's it going? Michelle, thank you for becoming a Silver Level member. Thank you very much, Michelle. Ed, how's it going? <laughs> Please tell me you're not going to eat that. No, I'm going to research it and how much you're supposed to eat, if any. Um, I have tried, I believe a long time ago, I may have tried raw aloe vera before. I don't know. We'll look, <laughs> we're going to look into it. Um, but for supper tonight, uh, and I got some other stuff too. But I think for supper tonight, I'm going to do chicken breast chunks. They're kind of like a specialty newer one. It was expensive, but I wanted to try it. Chicken fed a vegetarian diet, blah, blah, blah. All the usual. And make some mac and cheese with that. Oh, those mushrooms I got, that, that was awesome. I'm going to see if that regrows in the same place this year. And I'm going to try to harvest another one in August. That was amazing. I get these once in a while as a snack because I like them. Uh, just more like a healthier dessert type thing. I, I wouldn't exactly call it healthy because they have a bit of sugar in it. But it, it does have protein because it's yogurt and then it's chocolate coated. But these uh, Greek yogurt bars. I got to turn more light on in here. But uh, I guess that will be dessert tonight. Depending on how much I eat. Maybe I won't have one tonight. And I tried to find something that I wouldn't like out of a can. I'm running out of ideas. Come on, focus on me. Oh, I think it's that light in the background. Hold on. Let me turn this on and that off. Turn this on. That'll work. 
So if somebody super chats, uh, I don't know. We'll come up with a price. More than 99 cents, something like that. Like five bucks or something. I'll try these sliced bamboo shoots. Plain. That'll be nasty. I never liked bamboo shoots. And these are just in a can. So that's not gonna get not gonna be good. Vaughn man, no, I didn't buy gloves because I got my new pair from Robert earlier, which I think are gonna be great for the coin roll hunting. Um, so I'm gonna start cooking first and then we'll figure out. So I gotta figure out somebody you all are gonna have to help me research while I'm here. Is there any reason you shouldn't eat this? Of course, let's see. See what potential issues could come up with that. Slice off the green, eat the inside. Yes, I did know that. I did know you're not going to be eating that skin. And I'll have to clean it off really good. Because who knows how many people touch this and where it's been. And it's from Mexico. So, like, that thing's got to get washed down really good. Um Let's see. Aloe vera leaves are comprised of three parts, the skin, the gel, and the latex. They're best known for their gel, right. Um, used to put it on burns and stuff. That's what I used to do. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe we'll save that for another day. When most... When most people apply the, mo, while most people apply the gel to their skin, it's also safe to eat when prepared right. What does that mean? Prepared right. Ah, da -da. Apparently they tell people to not take it who get like cramps easy and stuff like that. And, uh, so Paula, I'll show you later. Uh, a subscriber sent me a pair of copper infused gloves that have the fingers cut out of them. They're pretty awesome. They should be really awesome for coin roll hunting and they're breathable too. So I won't have to worry about my hands getting sweaty. Yes. And I leave the mask in my car though. Yes. I wear a mask when I'm in grocery stores. I'm not sure if you're uh, still here, Michelle, uh, but uh, for upgrading your uh, membership, I'll give you a dunk. We got to get moving. Got to get a dunk rolling. Ah! All right. Anyway, I'm going, yeah, I, Linda, I've had the aloe vera drinks before with the chunks of aloe in it. Um, but I've never, I've never, this is, man, I keep poking myself. That hurts. Um, <laughs> your cat is barking. I think you have an issue there. Um, but I'm going to start cooking. We'll probably do that last, but, uh, for now I'm going to start, uh, cooking my chicken and getting everything ready to go. I'm going to make this in the skillet instead of the microwave.
So I got the chicken going with some extra virgin olive oil. Yes, JD's Kitchen. You take us in the kitchen with you. I can't. There's a, the only way I can do it is you could see me through. Like if I point you toward that window there, you could see me, but you can't see my stove in there. I don't have any way to take this in there with me, the camera. Um, I Maybe I can in the future. If I get an extension uh, USB, then I guess I could set you up in there somewhere. And I could still see the screen from here to see if it's in frame. So I could maybe do that in the future. You should try the Sir Strumming Fish Challenge. What is that? I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to look it up. I do not know what that is. That looks really bad, though. Yeah, probably not going to do that. That looks brutal. Okay, I'm going to get my mac and cheese in the microwave while I'm waiting on that chicken. And I also got these. I tried these a while back. I decided to get them one more time just for something to munch on. Chickpea snacks, Rock and Ranch. Let's give those a try real quick. Ed, I didn't buy any ice cream, but I actually have some. Uh, take my glasses off. I actually have some. Uh, I'll show you what I have here. Might be dessert. We'll see. Oh, maybe the ones I had before are bad. These are pretty soft. Chewy and crunchy. I mean, of course, they're dry. Those aren't bad. Go ahead and stir the chicken.
Why you just leave it in there? And put it in the bowl. I had to put a lot of olive oil in there so it doesn't burn my nonstick pan. Uh, I'll be back to look at the chat here in a moment. ASMR, listen to that sizzle. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like that noise. So white cheddar mac and let's this is up a little bit too high here. White cheddar mac and cheese and chicken breast rib meat nuggets. I call them nuggets. So pieces of breast. That's gonna, that looks good. That's gonna hit the spot for tonight. I had my broccoli earlier today, so I got my veggies in today. See what's going on in the chat while well, that's cooling off. Uh, picture's a little blurry tonight. Yeah, at night it gets a little little funny. Uh, it looked good earlier today, but it just changed now that it's got dark. Uh, did I get the jab yet? No, I don't do... Um, I don't do jabs. <laughs> I'm, I don't want to use trigger words because YouTube doesn't like when creators talk about that topic. $50 if you eat a dozen oysters, it would probably make me sick, Todd. I couldn't do it. Well, I don't think I'd do it. If you want to make a super chat, I'm willing to try these nasty canned bamboo shoots tonight. Oh. That would be awful. <laughs> now I need a body cam. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea, Linda, to, to especially wait to just to, until things settle down, uh, until you know how they may react with other things. Um, I watched John Campbell on YouTube. No, I disagree with him on some stuff, but he's he seems like a very level-headed um, uh, nurse, and um, I've been watching him since the 
uh, pandemic started and um, a lot of useful information. I've learned a lot about it. Like I, I, I like studying the topics he talks about. So even though I don't take um, jabs, uh, I still learn a lot from him and there's still a lot of things you can use practically learned a lot from him over the years. I recommend any, anybody watch him on YouTube for general information. Hey, Michael, glad you like the channel. Appreciate you stopping by. Todd, I don't know. I just I have a, like, seafood kind of scares me, especially, like, if I could get it fresh, maybe maybe I would. But, man, uh, I've never had oysters, so, like, eating eating one would be an experience, experience for me. Now, I would try that. I would start out – I would I would try one, but um, never never did that before. Yeah, this chicken tastes pretty good. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. What is the weirdest thing you've eaten for a super chat? Well, I haven't been doing this too long as far as adding the food stuff into the live streams. Um, haven't done anything really crazy bizarre that I would say. Probably. Oh, yeah. Actually, those those canned Vienna sausages, that certain brand I bought, it was like, man, that was literally like, wet cat food that was literally to me personally the the most gross one i've ever tried i couldn't even smell it the can was making me nauseous just leaving it in the room i was doing spoonfuls of raw pumpkin um pump organic pumpkin in a can the consistency was nasty and that was a little bit past its best buy date so it was really sour so that wasn't fun but it wasn't bad i don't think i wouldn't say it was horrible and for anybody who's just coming in now, yeah, those sugar-free gummies after I ate the whole pack, um, I did get a clean out that night. About 30 minutes after the stream, yeah. This is really good. I should probably eat the gross foods first. <laughs> yeah, if anybody wants to super chat now. Get me to try the bamboo shoots. You should do that. We could save it for another time. There's not a lot of people in here. I've been here a very long time. Most everybody was in here earlier. I'm not in the mood to do all kind of crazy stuff, but I could. Time travelers, that's pretty funny. I hit the spot. I was going to get ground turkey with the mac and cheese, but I am very tired. Very tired of uh, ground turkey. I've been eating it a lot lately. And this is hitting the spot. Cook up pretty good with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. In the skillet. Still very soft. Oh, yeah. That bag of pistachios I got, there were some really gross ones in there. This is pretty good, though. I like this. This is like a kind of like a comfort food, but not like... I wouldn't say it's the best thing for you to eat, but I would, wouldn't say it's unhealthy. Just a lot of chicken breast. Vegetarian diet fed. Real olive oil. And some mac and cheese. Makes everything better. Dr. Killjoy's oysters are like eating hot nose drainage. Try, trying to keep it clean while he is eating. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that just makes it sound so much better. That somehow sounds about what I envisioned, too.
I mean, why don't I just eat elephant snot or something? We'll call, we'll call it an African oyster. Oh, Todd, it's very good. Um, my, I like, I, I, I get the white, uh, the shells and white cheddar, the Annie's frozen mac and cheese. It's actually, it's really good. Um, that's specifically what I use when I make, uh, when I put my, like the chicken or the ground turkey in it. I've been using that one. I'm kind of addicted to it. That Annie's uh, white cheddar shells. The Walmart by me just started selling that. See, that sounds terrible to me. I, I had talked about in a previous stream. I hate the whole seafood with garlic butter mix, like shrimp and stuff like that. I'm okay with shrimp. Fried, you know, like fried shrimp's either better, even better. Like, you know, then you dip it, you dip it in like a, uh, like a, like a cocktail sauce. But no, this whole like seafood with garlic butter stuff that always made me feel ill. I'm not a huge fan of garlic. I'll eat it and stuff cooked, but like garlic butter to me is like so oily and rich. And then you add like seafood to it. It's like, to me, that's gross. I was never into that type of stuff. My brother and my dad were really into that type of thing. And it, it always made me like, nah, you eat it. I ain't having any. Dave, what's going on? Glad to see you're back. So in case you didn't hear, um, I didn't have, apart from the not-so-fun bloating, um, about 30 minutes after the stream, I had a big clean-out and um, felt pretty good after, after that. But if you were already having digestive issues and you ate all them, it might not be pretty. Antonio, what's going on? Grilled chicken breast, rib nuggets with uh, mac and cheese, white cheddar mac and cheese. It's really good. Didn't you? Oh, yeah. Um, so that was the... I tried a pickle from the cellar of the house I moved into, the canned pickles, the old lime pickles. Um, yes, I did try one. Um, yeah, that was at the farmhouse uh, that I bought. And um, they left canned food in the cellar that looked really old. But yes, I ate one of, I tried one of the lime, the lime pickles out of one of the jars that didn't look tainted, like it didn't have mold in it. Yes. That was back in 2017, I believe. I only took a small bite in case they were bad. I didn't because I didn't want to get sick. I didn't want to, but I did try it. That was no joke. I didn't fake it. But Dave, if you're feeling it tonight, <laughs> the price isn't very high on this one. But this would be really gross. Sliced bamboo shoots out of a can. So, uh, eh, what do you say? I won't be greedy. Say a twelve dollar super chat. I'll take a nice big, uh, nice big, nice big grab of those. You like? <laughs> Not out of a can, like no. See, because it's gonna be in the water and the citric acid. It's probably gonna have a really weird flavor. Now, if you, you know, if you drained them and you put it mixed a few in with a stir fry, yeah, it's not gonna taste bad. But these are probably very fibrous, kind of sour, stringy, and just nasty. I, I'm talking right out of the can. Preferably, I'd rather try some of these before I finish this, because this would be this would wash it down really good. Oh yeah, see, Linda, I actually like water chestnuts. 
um, if they're in a stir fry or like a meal or something, but even plain, like plain water chestnuts out of a can would be really, really weird too. But this is, this is significantly worse. When I was growing up, I used to get, um, Dave, you're good. It's just a, it's just a, it's just for fun. Ooh, what do you, what happened though? A bunch of deductibles due to baseball hailstorm. Oh, that's not good, Dave. How bad was it? That doesn't sound good at all. Where do you live again? We had a little bit of hail here a couple weeks ago, but it didn't do just minimal damage. Well, I wish you the best with that, Dave. Oklahoma. Yeah, I know you get a lot of crazy weather out there. I'm sorry to hear that. So up at the farmhouse, some of the hail we had a couple weeks ago got a dime, uh, dime sized, maybe slightly bigger, but it was pretty substantial. Always seeking silver. What's going on? I'm just having grilled chicken and mac and cheese at the moment. Busted windows, root. Roof, uh, cars. Oh man, that's crazy. What are you doing in Fargo, Michael? <laughs> Definitely not time travelers. There's 56 people in here. That I would say that would be a far cry from famous. To be completely honest, since I stopped posting a lot of normal videos, like I haven't done a lot of normal uploads over the past like year or so and the channel's really slowed down and um, I've actually kind of been enjoyed it um, hanging out on the streams and that and having it not be like super crazy. Yeah, I wouldn't say my live streams make me famous. It's more of like a town hall meeting. There might be like one community of people in here. <laughs> Man, this is so good though. I don't actually don't want to eat any gross foods tonight. I did some detecting um, earlier in the year. I haven't been doing much over the last like month and a half. Uh, but yeah, here and there, I, I am, I haven't been doing a lot of editing too. I probably maybe did, uh, maybe like seven or eight detecting hunts this year so far. And I'm planning on doing an, another one this week. So I haven't quit. Um, just haven't been doing it as often as I used to right now. Um, but yeah, when I get to editing though, I have a few really good videos coming up yet. Um, I found one of my rarest relics that I've ever found recently, earlier this year. Um, a very, very special Civil War related button. Remember balloon versus sword? Yeah. I still have the the balloon is still alive. You plan on doing any swinging in NC? Um, I did actually do one dig in North Carolina earlier this year. Um, but I don't know how soon I'll make it back. But I was invited earlier this year to do a hunt in uh, you know, the western part of North Carolina, close to where I'm at. So I did do a hunt over there earlier this year. Um, I made one good find. Um, yeah, I, I mean, nothing like rare or significantly old, but I did find some silver and a few neat things. I 
Am I tired of detecting? Not really. To be honest, um, around here, I kind of got burnt out on door knocking. And um, if I'm not on private property around where I live, you really can't find anything old, hardly, far and few between. And um, also, unfortunately, I can't do like back-to-back -back extreme long hunts like I used to um, just because of my muscular issues make it a lot harder for me to detect. But um, I definitely still go out. I like to do smaller home sites too where I can swing around in a small confined area, not be out like in a gigantic field tearing up my shoulder all day. But for that, I need to I need to start putting a harness on. But uh, yeah, just kind of take taking a break from it and focusing on other stuff in life. But yeah, I'm still getting out and detecting on average, like you know, once or twice a month. And I'm still planning on. I've been saving it, but I'm planning on doing my name my yard here. This house was built in 1959, and the front yard looks mostly original. I showed you guys that marble I found while landscaping a couple days ago and um and still need to do the my neighbor's backyard i did his front yard and i have permission to do his backyard yeah michael i i'm not gonna go over it but i, I just have some issues um back in 2015 i had an, an inflammatory response from some stuff that happened and it really aged a lot of my upper body like around my muscles around my spine and in my neck it caused me a lot of issues so um Long metal detecting hunts can give me stress headaches. It goes up through the back of my neck. So I'm basically uh, aged to my body a little bit faster than I should have. I don't know what it is exactly, Michael. It, it's a complicated thing. It's a very complicated thing. I think part of it was due to uh, an, an, uh, an immune response that basically my injury happened not at one time. But I, my life literally changed overnight. When I woke up in the morning, one morning in 2015, um, I had like a searing pain and I had my muscles bowling up really bad, some and a couple notches next to my spine and in my neck. And uh, my life was never, never the same since. But I don't really want to go into it too much. It's kind of a complicated thing. Um, but basically, in a nutshell, um, I was kind of, um, yeah, I, it was overuse. I was, um, and I was in basketball tournaments and like lifting weights and metal detecting and doing a lot of stuff at the same time. And I think it was related. I had like a hyperimmune response to something that took place. Um, it's hard to say if it was a specific injury or not, but I had like a hyper um, immune response. And um, for lack of better terms, it kind of like fried some of my muscles. Thank you, Michelle, for the $5 super chat. Appreciate it. Good to see you. I'm glad I did that. It was actually a very good supper. That hit the spot. I just ate, but I can still give you a dunk, Michelle. And also, too, one of the things for metal detecting, too, um, I just took a lot of time off just to see how my body was going to adjust to, for a while, it was hard quitting metal detecting because I had such muscle memory. I actually felt better when I metal detected, but I know it was making it worse long term. Uh, cause I had such a muscle memory developed. Um, but also where was I going with that? Um, so taking a long break from it, I wanted to see how my body reacted. Cause I used to get headaches when I didn't metal detect because of that muscle memory and just coming out of that injury for a long time. Um, but now that I haven't been detecting much over the last year or so, just a little bit here and there, um, my body's kind of re, uh, readapted. So one of the issues I'm having too is there's always been something a little bit off with my right knee. Uh, since I was about 14 years old, it's always made like a severe snapping or clicking noise when I walk uphill. And sometimes it was worse than others, but I do remember having it even when I was younger sometimes and being like, hey, listen to this. But um, after digging like half a million holes uh, in my 20s, um, my right knee started to get worse. So when I used to do a lot of detecting, but not a lot of like jogging and like exercise like that, um, my knees started to get into worse shape. So 
when I stopped detecting, I actually had to deal with swelling for a little while. Like when I got back into running, my knee wanted to swell up. So when I stopped detecting and got back to normal exercise, like long hikes and jogs and stuff like that, it improved uh, greatly. And, um, but also I do have uh, my knee. It's just, I, I'm getting like arthritis in it. And I, I, th- I know if I keep compulsively metal detecting like hard for the next 10 years, I'll probably end up needing, needing a knee replacement by the time I'm like in my forties. So while I try to sort out that portion of my life, um, I'm just trying not to do a ton of digging where I'm just up and down all the time. Uh, so I'm just not metal detecting as much, but I, I still do it. Like I said, I'm pretty much on average now. Um, last year was my biggest break where I didn't detect much at all. I even a few months where I didn't even touch a detector, but this year on average, I did quite a few hunts in the beginning of January and then going into February. I'm probably on average doing about two hunts a month right now. Yes, Michelle, you've, you've been around for quite a while, but yeah, man, in 20, um, or actually, no, that was, yeah, that was late 2015. But man, after 2015, I didn't tell anybody about it for a long time because um, I didn't want it to affect the channel and I didn't want to just be complaining about things, but I had to reassess my entire life. And that was, that was the hardest time of my life because I went from a really athletic, I went from a really athletic guy having to deal with uh, limitations and it, um, I mean, there's, I, I look for the good things in everything, you know, it, it um, it made me go really introspective and, uh, you know, put my ego in check too, you know, from being a, you know, really athletic person in my twenties, you know, it, it, uh, man, I just, I went through a lot of changes. Michael, uh, the e-track is simple. First of all, that thing, I call it the bowling ball. It's really heavy. It's four and a half pounds, and I have this uh, the probe on it, so it's like over five pounds. It's bottom heavy. They never balance that one good like they did with the CTX. Um, so sheer weight alone after my injury, I couldn't use the E-Track. It would have destroyed me even worse. Actually, it, I don't like to say this, but it's possible. It's, it's, it's a complicated issue, but metal detecting at the very least greatly exacerbated my injury. And the E-Track was part of that, of the overuse on my, uh, the strain on my neck. Um, and the all, and the only other reason for that is not weight, not weight and balance related is the fact that the E-Track does have a very, very slow processor. It's amazing for cherry picking like silver coins, like deep and among trash and stuff like that. But it's actually not the de- best detector for home sites and especially in clay and areas that I look that are iron rich. The Technetics 2 that I use, even though it's a significantly cheaper detector, it has a super fast processor, like lightning quick. So it's better for hunting in clay and looking for all sorts of targets. Now, naturally, with the T2, I dig more iron and stuff like that. But the the E-Track worked a lot better for the type of metal detecting I did in Pennsylvania. Um, it's not as good for the type of metal detecting I do in Tennessee. Um for various reasons. Also down here, targets usually don't tend to be very deep. I don't need to look 11 inches for a silver dime or something like that. There's a lot of reasons for it, but the E-Track, it's too heavy and it doesn't fit my detecting style anymore. But once in a while, I bust it out of the closet. If I'm getting the itch, maybe when I'm doing my yard here, um, maybe I'll bust it back out and just for, you know, for old time's sake. That's awesome, Paula. Yep. But yeah, I mean, in life, I mean, you know, you you know, injuries happen and, you know, we age as we get older, but, you know, I never plan on quitting. You just have to reassess. And I did need a lot of time off anyway. I mean, most people know me for like, man, for a while. I mean, I was putting out videos like every other day for like a year at some point. So, I mean, I was, I was overextended, but it was really my injury that just really, really changed things. Let me rinse this out real quick.
But anyway, I've made a lot of um, strides for the better, especially when I moved in here. I changed just the structure of almost my entire life over the years and needed a major reset. And um, last summer, I got into the best shape that I've been in since my injury. Um, I had myself trained. I was jogging in the woods when it was like 85 degrees and humid, built up my stamina, got my mind back where I wanted it to be. And um, so a lot of goods come out of it too. I just haven't been filming as much like I used to. But I ha haven't stopped doing stuff. I know, Michael, you've told me before you like that one, coin roll hunting on the roof. Michael J., I, I really appreciate the kind kind words. I do try to keep the content as entertaining as I can. I think part of part of the change that I went through mentally with YouTube is when my channel started to really, really grow, I got into this thing with my mindset where I didn't want to post a video unless it had a right feel and a right edit to it. Whereas way back in the day, and when I'm talking like 2014 and earlier, it was literally just me turning on the camera and going. And if you didn't know what you were looking for, you probably a little bit confused. I was just kind of nerdy and spouting things off and detecting and I never showed myself. And so I think now what I need to do on the channel now that all the dust has settled, I probably just need to start making videos again where I don't overthink it and I just turn on the camera and don't worry about if I'm getting the right thumbnail and the title and doing all the business side of YouTube. Um, because I know there's quite a few people out there that just would be happy like if I posted anything, you know, and tried to keep it fun and entertaining still, but any any metal detecting hunt or any anything interesting that's treasure hunting or old house related or, I mean, anything in the woods or a cemetery or something. So I probably should do that. Just turn on the camera sometimes and just may, maybe just shift more to like vlog style. And that way I'm not concerned about if the video is too exciting or not. I can just show what I'm interested in and take the camera on some of my adventures. Hey, Marie, how are you? Um, the, the bees are doing all right. It's gotten really warm out, so they're really, they're really active right now. Now, Jeff, thank you for stopping by. Uh, I'll see you later if you're still here. I missed your comment a second ago. Yep, I got a bee suit. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of them active from down there now. If I do any work on that hive, I definitely got to put it on the suit. I'm not comfortable to do like some people do on YouTube. They, re they remove swarms and stuff barehanded like i don't know if any of you've watched those beekeeping videos like i'll just take the bare hand and stick it through an entire honeybee swarm and just lift out layers of honeybees with their bare hand. i am not comfortable enough to do that todd that's 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 the plan
Yeah, Linda, those people are really crazy. But they're so used to it, too. They know how not to panic. Like, if they get bit once or twice, they're just kind of like, oh, that's a nuisance. See, like, for me, if I had bees all over me, I, I think it'd be kind of cool, to be honest. But if I ever got bit or one or two started biting me, I'm afraid that I would panic trying to get them off, and then i get stung like 100 times. So I'm just not comfortable doing that without the proper gear. But I go down there by the hive, and I'll sit by it, like, this far away. I don't care about that. But I'm not sticking my hands in a swarm and, you know, doing it that way. No, Vaughn, man. We all know you're going to the bathroom. You're taking a huge dump right now. We all know. Uh, five flapjacks. I don't plan on harvesting the honey. I never had my hive, what do you want to say, cleaned out. So it's it's like it's combed over many times. So I think I'm just going to let the bees do their thing. I don't think I'm going to do anything with that colony other than make sure they have a good environment to live in. Also, hey, Dave, you mentioned Chig's not doing as much diving anymore. Diving is really hard on your body. And when YouTube was going through the diving craze, like in the end of 2016, when diving just turned into like a genre on YouTube, that's when my channel was growing too. That's when my penny video went viral. I had some metal detecting videos getting a lot of views. My channel was really, really hot, right? When diving was getting popular. But the main reason I didn't do any diving, well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, it's illegal in a lot of the areas that I'm in to remove anything from the waterways um, in most of Tennessee. And um, also, diving's really hard on your body. And my injury, thats that was only coming like a year out of my injury. And I tried diving a few times, and it destroyed my neck. It, it was just very, it was very hard on my body. Like I, I remember diving one time and I got a severe, um, I got a severe stress headache, headache up through the back of my neck that night. And I'm just like, it's a lot of work. You got to have all the gear. Um, and also one of the things is it's not really that safe to do alone. And I didn't have any diving buddies either. Maybe I would have done it a little bit more if I had somebody to do it with me, but, um, I just didn't get involved. There was a lot of reasons. But yeah, I mean, that's awesome that, you know, Shig's getting up, up there in years and the fact that he's doing as much he does is awesome. Because people don't know, people like um, uh, the, like Chig have been, um, he's been treasure hunting for a long time and it is hard on your body. Treasure hunting in general, if you're like a compulsive tre treasure hunter like me and some of the other people on YouTube, and I'm sure a lot of people that watch my channel are the same way, compulsive treasure hunters. I mean, you'll wear yourself out if you do it 20 years. I mean, it's taken a toll on my body, and I've only been doing it since 2012. But my big injury is the main part of that. So I would account a lot of that to stupidity when I was younger, like when you think you're invincible. Um, I just had one bad event, and it changed my life. And I don't know if you're here, Rick, but I just saw the notification for email pop up, so I got it. Zaytoth, what's going on? Yes, Michelle. Um, I did a lot of collaborations going into the end of 2016, and um, 
Yes. One of the, when I collaborated with Michael Oliver, um, I got one of his videos to really take off. Well, I basically took a lot of his footage and compiled it and put it's kind of some subtle but intriguing background music to it to try to make it a nice production and it took off and um it really worked out well for both of our channels more so his um because people usually subscribe for the type of content they see and i didn't really do any diving after that but um yes that was um yeah man that was so long ago now but he's been doing awesome i mean he's a Michael's a workhorse. He's been putting, he's putting out like three videos a week still like of diving videos. His channel is really growing. Um, it's actually, he, he's probably going to have more subscribers than me possibly by the end of this year. He's really doing a great job of taking the, the underwater treasure hunting and, and rolling with it. I know he, um, once his channel started to really grow, and the fact that my video went viral of his content and his channel was growing on its own. Don't get me wrong. He's a great guy. And um, he was eventually able to go from YouTube as like a hobby or part time to making it his full time gig. And now he just runs around and, you know, finds expensive rings for he's even found uh, jewelry that celebrities have lost and stuff like that. And he films it all with his GoPro. He's doing an amazing job. He's taking it and he's running with it. I'm, I'm subscribed to Michael's channel to this day. I think he makes great videos. He sticks to the point, keeps it exciting, keeps it exciting, keeps it focused on treasure hunting and, you know, sometimes mixes his family in with it. And I think he's doing a fantastic job. I had just popped in on Michael's channel today, actually. I think he, um, I think he's up to like 190,000 subscribers or something, but his channel's definitely, definitely growing faster than mine. Mine's at a snail pace right now because I haven't been putting a lot out a lot of normal content and a lot of my older videos have slowed down. So I'm maybe on average right now doing about a thousand extra, I'm gaining like a thousand subscriptions a month. So for a channel my size, that's actually horrible to be honest, but I mean, I haven't posted. I'm thankful I had a, two semi-viral detecting videos I posted last summer. I didn't post any videos for quite a long while. And I'm not sure if people were just waiting for me to post more content or what. Um, and that's why, but I have no idea. But the, the videos I did last year, of like in the woods with my treasure map that I made, and that one I did of metal detecting the 1860 house, they both still get views. And without those, my channel would be really slow right now. But a few of the treasure hunting videos I've done over the last year have done quite well. So it's buyed me some time until I kind of get back into it. Missy, how's it going? It's weird. The stream was really slow, like an hour and a half ago and now all of a sudden a lot of different people are coming in it's like the new crowd there's like the day crowd the night crowd it's kind of funny so i am about 180 subscriptions away from 231,000. so at this rate i'll, I'll be at a million subscribers by the time i'm like 80. So Luis, I'll do a recap here before I end the stream. I'm going to wait till I'm done eating so I don't touch dirty coins. I'm still munching. Which I said in the party crowd. There you go. But man, anyone who didn't watch the coin roll hunting part of this stream, you will want to rewatch it. Um, I legit, I legit, um, got a collection of coins that appear to have been wrapped in the rolls since the early 1980s. Absolutely amazing. Never thought I would get a score like this. I didn't find a ton of silver, but I did find silver and it was just a really fun hunt because that anticipation was there. But literally these like 95% of the rolls that I opened 
as part of that collection don't look like they've been tampered with since the early 80s, which is crazy. And I had no idea when I picked them up from my bank. I thought it was going to be a bust. Uh, Michael J., um, right now I'm actually on a schedule. I've been streaming every Tuesday. Now, normally I haven't been starting till like 7 or 8 o'clock Eastern time at night, but today I started super early. I've been here. Well, I took a break to run to the grocery store and left the stream running, but the stream's been running for six hours and 20 minutes now. These are actually kind of addicting. They have a good crunch and a flavor to them. They're a little dry, but um, they've kind of got a weird layered kind of crispiness to them. And I do like that ranch taste. They're bas it's basically just dried chickpeas with um, some kind of like ranch flavored here. What's in them? Uh, chickpeas expeller pressed high. I like sunflower oil, ranch seasoning, which is salt, sugar, tomato powder, garlic powder, onion powder, gum arabic, yeast as extract, spices, natural flavors, mustard, dehydrated parsley, and malic acid, lactic acid, and citric acid. They're actually pretty good. Best coin to buy for $300. I honestly couldn't answer that. I don't know. Did the tooth implant injury heal? Um, yes from them having to dig into the implant. Yes. I still have my cap one. And then I basically just got to go have them uh, pop in the new one. I'm a little bit upset. Something went wrong with my, um, my um, impressions. So they have to have me back in this week instead of having my implants ready. I have to drive two hours back into Knoxville for an hour so they can take new impressions with that nasty putty and take x-rays so they had a problem when they were going to try and remake my crowns and now i have to drive two hours back in so that they can redo my molds i'm not happy about it but what i mean i gotta do what i gotta do paula these are probably high in carbs i'm guessing but i know they have six grams of protein per serving the carbs are um 16 grams per one ounce, which is about, or no, per, you know, yeah, serving size is one eight, one ounce, which is about 60 chickpeas. Um, that's actually not too bad. So 16 grams of carbs for about 50 chickpeas. That's not bad at all, actually, especially because it's six grams of protein. Yeah, these are good snack not while you're driving or something your hands get kind of oily and get all that seasoning on them unless you're doing it this way but these are dry i did that once when i was driving and i got a huge mouthful of these it was so dry it was it took all the moisture out of my mouth i haven't talked to rusty recently um but i gotta catch up with them I see Paula dietary fibers high in that six grams for one serving. So that's 21%. So the, the, the fiber and the protein are the same per serving. All right, I'm done with these. Ah, Jamie. Okay, I'll try the bamboo shoes. You got me. 
right after I just had this great taste in my mouth. You, you're, you're killing me. All right, we'll give it a try. I gotta get a drink here first. And here's the dunk. Ah! All right, I gotta get a can opener. So these apparently have a very long shelf life. The best buy on there literally said August of 2023. Now I'm going to have to drop, I'm actually going to have to dump a little bit of this juice out. Yeah, they, they really smell like raw bamboo shoots. They have that real woody smell to them. They don't smell bad though, because it's just water and citric acid, but there's something, there's something green floating in this water here i'll see if you can see this see that little speck right there some kind of little green fuzzy floating in there i don't know what that is if that came off when i was opening the, the can but that's got to come out that can't be right come on get over here what that is it's a piece of plastic or what? I don't think it's a piece of the wrapper anyway. You can see it on my finger. Something little green fuzzy floating around in there. That's not good. Okay. Um, I don't need, I don't need a fork or anything. This is not going to taste that great. I hope I just none of these are really like that hard fiber where it tastes like you're eating wood. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is quite awful. It literally just tastes like I'm eating the inside of a plant. Like the fibrous bamboo wood. Yeah. Oh, it's just so plain too. The water kind of makes it worse. <laughs> yeah, Dave, I guess it is wood. Um, it's not as potent as I was expecting. So I guess that's a plus. It has a little bit of that. Not as bad. I've had some that worse, but I don't know if anybody's tried. Sometimes certain bits of bamboo have almost like a real perfumey taste to them. These are a little more mild, but I am getting that little hint of like a real perfumey like odor. Like when I bite into it, I can taste it. <laughs> well, you're back again, bird dog. I literally ran to Walmart and came back while the stream was on. Um, I'm going to eat one. Let's eat this crazy one. I don't know what happened here. It's like a key. Maybe there was something crawling in here and ate part of it. Um, but yeah, this is not this is not cool. Ugh. Eating them right out of the can like this, I can almost taste that little bit of more earthiness, almost kind of taste with 
like fungus, like mushrooms, like a little bit of that super organic tasting kind of raw earth taste. Um, I'll eat one more. I'll eat one of the bad looking stringy ones. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to call that quits there. If I eat too many of these with all that citric acid, I'll be needing to eat some of them gummies. Um, mm, yeah, just not cool. Not cool. Bird dog, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> What's next on the menu? <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know if that's going to happen yet. I'm trying to research it to see if I'm going to have any adverse re uh, reaction to it. Um, I have eaten, uh, I have had aloe drinks before. And I've used it on burns and stuff when I was growing up. We used to have a plant, but I don't think I've ever eaten it like that. Marie, I bet they taste better in a stir fry, but I've never actually been a bam, uh, fan of bamboo shoots. Now, I absolutely like baby corn. Like if you get baby corn put into a, a, a stir fry, I really like baby corn. Yes, Linda, I know not to eat the green part. I know it's just the gel. I do know that. Ooh. See, I just had that awesome chicken, grilled chicken and macaroni meal, and now I'm going to just taste nothing but those bamboo shoots. Dave, if you get the right aloe water, it's really good. The only reason I don't buy it is most of the products you can buy with it in, they add like a ton of sugar. It's like just like a soda, basically. Um, but no, aloe vera flesh inside certain drinks is actually quite, um, interesting. You kind of, I like it. Um, but I just wish they made it with like less sugar and find a different way to do it. <laughs> Don't eat it, plant it. <laughs> nice. You're supposed to boil that in butter. Uh, very funny. Yeah, I did see that. People that get cramps easily are not supposed to, or have like any type of abdominal issues are not supposed to eat LO. It can cause uh, a lot of uh, discomfort. Can't be any worse than the whole pack of gummies, right? How many fingers are you holding up? I have no idea. I can't, I, I can't, I can't see you. Um, but, I mean, you should be able to eat this. I mean, it's in Walmart's produce section. So, I mean, right? Product of Mexico. Aloe vera, the best solution. What does that mean, the best solution? Uh, it's Ivan Big Tree. Great aloe vera. Premium quality. It's distributed by Ivan Big Tree LLC. Um, hey, we can go to www.ivanbigtree.com. Let's do it. Ivanbigtree.com. Um, our premium products, mango, coconut, papaya, avocado, banana leaves, malanga, cocoa, aloe vera. Here we go. And chayote squash. Um, aloe vera. Aloe vera is commonly known for soothing burns, dryness, and other irritations. However, aloe has many properties that make it more than just a solution for sunburns. Recent studies have shown that when consumed, aloe vera helps the immune system, encourages normal blood sugar, and reduces redness and swelling. Individuals have claimed that it relieves constipation. We did that on the last stream. <laughs> I don't think I need to ease constipation anymore. Um, eases stomach acid, um, reduces acidity in the body, and encourages normal stomach lining. So I guess it, it probably helps balance your pH. Some even claim that it supports memory and learning. So, like, if I'm a genius next week, we'll know what happened. But if I'm if I'm dead, we'll know what happened, too. Um, aloe vera contains vitamins A, C, E, and B12, as well as the minerals, potassium, zinc, and magnesium. Hey, that's good. I could use some zinc and magnesium. Uh, potassium's good, too, because I usually don't eat a lot of bananas. 
uh, and that's good for muscles. Oh, uh, they make aloe vera great for balancing a healthy diet. Here at Ivan Big Tree, we prioritize our customers' health. We know that a healthy body re requires healthy diet. And a great way to have a healthy diet is by consuming aloe vera. Our aloe vera is always of the highest quality, and our customers know it. Ivan Big Tree has become the leading distributor of aloe vera consumption in the United States. Join our community of healthy and happy customers and get in contact with us today. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what uh, an evil person would say, too. They would just make their product sound like a million bucks. But um, I, I guess I don't have any reason to doubt them other than just uh, general caution. So... It looks like a fairly basic website, but uh, they look they look legit. Obviously, this is being sold in Walmart, so. But yeah, they main, mainly do those products I said before. Uh, so yeah, tell you what, if somebody super chats, ninety nine cents or more. We'll give it a try. Put it, submit your bid now. <laughs> um, and I keep mercilessly poking myself with this thing this 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 is this is sharp um but if i try it tonight um i'm gonna have to clean it really good i'm gonna have to give this a little scrub down um because i don't want any bacteria on the front of that <laughs> yeah that's why i know i've tried to pick out one that i felt was had the right consistency not too hard not too soft not that i know how to pick them and this is a gigantic one i know right I'm not eating the whole thing. Don't get me wrong. I'm just going to try it. Uh, probably, I don't know, maybe I'll start down on this end. That way I can store it in the fridge. And if I use more, I can like cut out a juicier part another time. Um, all right. <laughs> Grown by a nuclear plant. Well, if it came from Tennessee, that wouldn't surprise me because we got nuclear plants all over. They sell at our local save a lot. Tamarind, tamarind is another thing you could try. I, I've had that Mexican can, candy, um, they call it, what is it, tamarindo? I don't know how to pronounce it, where it's like tamarind in a, in a candy. Um, I first tried that when I moved to Tennessee because I never saw that growing up in Pennsylvania. It actually tasted pretty good. Well, they added a ton of sugar to it, but the candy, I liked the taste, the tamarind taste, so maybe I could try one of those. Google how to prep it. I thought you just eat it raw. Can I just eat it raw? Say, <laughs> Dawson, you should really research that thing before eating it. Well, I'm not going to eat the whole thing. I mean, I'm not going to be like, all right, all right, guys, here we go. Ah, no, we're not going to do that, though that would make a good thumbnail. Um, let's see. Raw aloe vera. Not for skin or for hair. Eating raw aloe vera. Here are eight reasons to drink pure, uncolored, low anthro anthroquinone aloe vera juice. I don't know what mine is. Um, can you eat aloe vera raw? Aloe vera gel and skin can't skin. Ugh. Uh, aloe, vera, aloe vera gel and skin can be eaten. Be sure to wash the gel or skin thoroughly to remove all traces of latex. Oh, I don't know how to do this. Um, be sure to wash the gel or skin thoroughly to remove all traces of latex, which has an unpleasant bitter taste and may cause harmful side effects. Never eat aloe vera skincare products. Duh. Um, they do not offer the same benefits as the leaf and are not meant to be ingested. Uh, I'm not that dumb. Can we eat aloe vera in an empty stomach? Well, I won't have that problem. I just ate a whole ton. Um, remove the latex by washing it. I'm confused now. Can be toxic. Um, Jamie, thank you for the $6 super chat. I appreciate it. Okay, you've been on for six hours and did try the bamboo shoots, JD. You eating machine. <laughs> yes, let me give you a dunk. Okay, that's good to go. Oh. Ah, missed. I didn't want to step on my black light. Let's move this over here. Oh. Ah, all right.
processing aloe vera can remove the healing effect. Yes, this isn't, I mean, this is pretty as unprocessed as you're going to get right here. They don't sell blowfish for those exact reasons. Uh, for those exact reasons. <laughs> worst comes to worst, you can eat some gummies to cleanse. Very nice. Um, well, let me, uh, I mean, I actually kind of want to try it. I don't know. Let, let's just open it up and see what it looks like. We'll, we'll figure it out. I, I won't, I, I'll maybe just try it for taste. We're not going to go crazy here. But let me give this a good scrub down real quick and try not to cut my hand open. And I'll be back in a minute. And if you want, if I can turn this this way, there, you can watch me in my, in my window here. that was but it'll have to do now oh, let's just cut this open and see what it looks like here um, let's just Try to get further up here where it starts to get a little bit juicy. Let's put this. Oh, I don't want to poke my eyeball out. Let's try this here. Ouch! I gotta be, this thing hurts. Okay, we're going to cut it about right here. Okay. Oh, this smells awful. Oh, this smells awful. This smells absolutely hideous. I don't remember it smelling this bad. Oh. Oh. Oh my goodness, I don't think I can do it. There's something about this that is turning my stomach off. Oh. No, oh, that does not smell good. There's something nauseating about that smell. So, what are you... Oh, man. It's actually... Oh, that's just water on the bottom of it. Okay. Um, oh, that smells so bad. So, what do they mean here? Removing... Oh, that's not cool. Oh, that's the, you got to wash it. That's the latex. Okay. I think I got it. So the sticky stuff, I guess, is the latex. So you want to cut it and wash it out so you're not eating. Hold on. I think I got this figured out. So apparently you don't want to eat this. Because that would mess up your stomach, even if it's not bad for you. Like, you don't want to eat that. I have a story where, like an idiot, when I was younger, I ate, like, a whole bag of okra without draining it with all the slime in it. That was probably the worst 
cramps I've had in my life. Okay, so I know you don't eat stuff like that. So uh, I just got it all over my computer. So let me go try to manage this sticky mess here and figure out if pff, that smell. Oh, okay. I'm going <laughs> to bird dogs and get a straw. I'm going to see if I'm able to peel some of this out and then like clean it. I don't know what's going to happen. Let me, uh, let me really quickly go mess around with this here a second and see if I can figure this out. Ah, it smells so terrible. Oh, it's dripping into the sink. This is nasty. It's like dark orange or yellow. This is gross, man. Hold on, I need my knife. I need my knife. Where do I put my knife? Why is my knife on the floor? Okay. This is going to be fun. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Okay, so um, I think I figured this out. So you can see now without the uh, dark orange slime, and I cut a piece off, it's kind of like translucent like that. Looks are very deceiving, but so what I have to do is basically carve that out of there and then finish rinsing the edges of it, and then we'll be down to the edible part. So um, let me carve this out of there rinse it really good and that made the smell a little bit better by removing all that um but i better be getting some super chats you guys better be getting busy because i didn't ask for nothing for this this is self-inflicted pain too hard to carve out. Uh, oh, that's so nasty. Ugh. Okay. Oh, that's so slimy. Ugh. Dub dub with aloe in the tub. Okay, here we go. I cleaned this off about as good as I could. Cut the knife through there and carved it out. So it's got some fibrous ends there I might have to pull out. I think it'll be okay. Some like little fiber stick ends there. I'll show you this side. It's a little bit cloudy in color. I mean this I mean this much wouldn't kill me I don't think. <laughs> it, it it doesn't look appetizing. It smells 
significantly better than that nasty latex juice or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's still got a little bit of stickiness to it. Like it sticks to my finger and I can pull it up a little bit. Um, probably rinse it off a little more maybe. Should probably scrub it with a brush. Um, Linda said it will be so bitter. I bet. I bet. I'm going to make sure I have it rinsed off really good. I'm going to rinse it off a little bit more. This is kind of scaring me. If you saw in the sink, though, the color of that gel when it oozes out, and that one literally looks like pee. I'm not kidding. All right. This is this is for everyone. This is, show this one more time. This is raw aloe vera. Going in. Hey, that's not bad. That is not bad. I like the gel-like consistency of it. Um, I actually got all of that odor off of it. It didn't have much of a taste. It wasn't bitter. I mean, it, it, it's just, it kind of tasted like gel, like, like, in, like it tasted like air, but had a weird, a slight odor at first to it, but hey, it wasn't bad. So, um, it really wasn't that bad. I expected that to be much more pungent. Um, no, I could totally put that in something, uh, like a drink and chop it up in little bits and do like an aloe vera drink. Um, that wasn't bad. That's what I said. How much did that thing cost? Believe it or not, Walmart, they were a buck 98. Um, yeah, but how are your innards feel about this? I don't know, Flapjacks. We'll find out. But no, that, that was not bad. I got to find a way to wrap that thing up because I'll tell you what, that gel, that sticky stuff smells absolutely nasty. Um, but that, that, was not, that was not bad. Okay, so I'm, o I'm over my fear now. If I ever need to clean an aloe vera plant, I'm a pro. I could, like, I could skin it like a fish. I could, I could debone the top of it, you know, and cut it all around into an aloe vera fillet, right? I could have I could have an aloe vera fillet, just you know, spray it down, get all of that nasty yellow juice off, all of the guts out, and and just have a nice big clear aloe vera fillet. So I could totally I could totally do that. Um, no AAP when I when I when I cleaned it off, uh, it wasn't it wasn't that it wasn't really slimy anymore. If you give it a good wash. Uh, but yeah, I could totally make that into an aloe vera filet. And then I don't know, maybe put like, uh, what could I put on it? Uh, you know, what, what seasonings could I put on a big aloe vera filet? Uh, what would be good? Hey, we'd probably have to go sweet with it. Like you wouldn't want to do a chili powder. That would be nasty. Uh, you could do, you could do like a sweet honey maple glaze or something like on a ham, you could give it a, you could give it a maple glaze on that big filet and then you'd be talking. <laughs> Ketchup. Oh, that sounds awful. Fruit salad said mud spot. There you go. Actually, that wouldn't be bad if you chopped it up, put it in with some blueberries and banana and strawberry, but you can't just throw the whole filet in a fruit salad. Salt and pepper. Yeah. Put some Put it like a pineapple chutney on it or something. No, I think the maple glaze is on something. Maple glaze in, um, or how about, uh, 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 what am I thinking of? Uh, 
sugar, like a, like a, uh, uh, like, um, like a sugar bacon. You could put like, you know, the bake, a brown sugar bacon. That's what I was thinking. You could put brown sugar bacon over it. There you go. <laughs> Bird dog, you have microwaves on the brain. You want to know what happens. I don't want to risk heating it up. First of all, I don't want it to explode in my good microwave. Secondly, I have a feeling if I heat that nasty gel up, it's going to leak everywhere and make my whole house smell like just absolute terribleness. Like I actually remember that smell now because I smelled one before. I think I was going to try it when I was younger, but I smelled it and I said, there's no way I'm trying that. Um, maybe we'll have to do a video on it. Maybe I'll have to do brown sugar bacon aloe vera filet. Yeah. Grapefruit and maple syrup. Definitely not grapefruit. I'd rather have chick the chicken and mac and cheese. Yeah. Uh, you're not the only one. I got to get that put back in the fridge here and get it wrapped up. And then I'm going to eat one more thing, and then I'm probably done for the night. Start hiding aloe and fruitcakes and jello molds. There you go. If you put it in a fruitcake, nobody would ever know because those are so potent anyway. Because it's definitely not going to fit in here. I think I'll just wipe the end off and set it in my fridge. I threw the end of it away and I noticed, I think when it gets closer to the, the smaller portion of it, as it gets smaller, it seems like the darker color is more toward the tip there. And um, the end of it especially sm smelled bad. I think it gets a little bit better as you get closer up to the meaty part of it. Um, so I just kind of wiped it off with a napkin and threw it in my fridge. I don't know what else to do. Like I'm going to finish it. I don't know why it's in my fridge. But yeah, I'll, I'll try to do something with it a little bit. Hey, Kelly, how are you? Anybody just coming in? You missed a crazy night. Had a really crazy, awesome coin roll hunt. I just ate some raw aloe vera and bamboo shoots and cooked dinner. And uh, we just having a jolly old time. I think this is going to be my last bit of food for tonight. My little bit of a dessert, Greek yogurt bar. These things are really good. They're a little on the sour side, but hey, it's Greek yogurt and they add sugar to it. I, I like it. It's like a, a healthier version of a dessert. Okay, bird dog. I hope I make it through the night too. Um, but I, um, I'll holler at you. See, there you go. I just say it. it's habit. Um, I can, I'm still, if you want to, I didn't check the weather, but if it's not raining, I would still like to meet up tomorrow if you're able to. So just, uh, just text me. I haven't looked at the weather. Cover the aloe and chocolate. Now there you go. That's not a bad idea. Yay, something I don't have to worry about.
Now that looks a lot better. Focus. Thank you. Yes, my, my, well, refrigerated. They're not frozen. It's basically just Greek yogurt with a thin layer of like milk chocolate. Um, they're pretty good. You got to be in the mood for them. But it's basically just yogurt with a milk chocolate coating. That's basically all it is. And to give them protein, they add a little bit of whey protein to it because they have eight grams of protein. I probably don't need any more protein today, but. This is my dessert. That makes sense, Marie. Put it in the freezer. Oh, when you cut it, the latex doesn't ooze out. That makes sense. Linda, I'm not a huge fan of yogurt, but I like these once in a while. And sometimes I'll get Chobani flips. I like those, and I, I crunch up pretzels and throw them in. You like the blueberry? Um, for me, the only reason I can eat it this way is because it's got a chocolate coating. Or if I buy them, like I said, I'm eating more pretzels than yogurt. I crunch up a bunch of pretzels in it, and there's only a few flavors I like. Um, there's the Chobani flips. I like the salted caramel. And, um, and they have the flips. They have like a little dish on the side that sometimes has candy or depending on what flavor it is, they have different things. Um, like the salted caramel has like little bits of caramel and then like pretzels and different things in it that are sweet. Um, other ones, the almond one has like little dark chocolate bits. And then I think, I think little pieces of almonds, but anyway, it depends on what, which one you get. It normally has something sweet on the side, like a candy or like nuts or a mixture of stuff that you put onto it. And then I mix that all in and then I crunch up a bunch of thin pretzels that are my favorite ones. And I eat that and it's really good with the pretzels, but to eat a whole thing of yogurt plain, even if it was flavored to me, the taste and the consistency is not fun. So I always add a bunch of pretzels to it. And then it's kind of an enjoyable snack. What brand of pretzels do you get? I just bought them. So I will show you guys the only pretzels that I buy for munching on in yogurt. Best texture, best taste, very salty, and just all around good. Good night, dog. This is literally what I get. Great value, pretzel, salty sticks, ultra thin. The ultra thin ones are the way to go. They have the most crunch, very salty. They taste really good too. They're kind of addicting. And I crunch those up and I throw them in my yogurt. And then that's really good.
And um, I get those at Walmart, just where the pretzels are in Walmart. They're like two bucks a bag. Dave, I haven't gotten to try Dot's pretzels yet. All right. Well, maybe I won't stay too much longer now because I have been here a very long time. Yes, Mutt's what I know Ravenhawk really loves his dots. I, I, I'm going to have to try them now. So last two times they were on uh, Rob's uh, Monday streams when they have guests on. He's been talking about them. Oh, yeah. So, Dave, if you approve them, too, then I'm going to have to try them. Vaughn, man, I, the stream has been on for seven hours and, and seven hours, nine minutes and 12 seconds. Yep, you'll have to go back and watch the roll hunt. I did the roll hunt pretty quick because they were customer wraps, so they're really easy to open. You can that actually didn't take too long. Do you put your coins in a coin book or or in holders or well, the silver I find um, I just throw into a jar. Um, but if I have really high grade coins or ones that are similar like proof coins, I'll put them just in actually the plastic roll holders. I don't do a whole lot of individual coin flipping anymore where I put them into like the cardboard flips and stuff. I still do on occasion, but I more so just kind of st store them in rolls um, and stuff like that. Or if I have a really special one, I'll put it in a flip. Yeah, long enough for JD to have four meals. No, I only had two major meals, right? I had my chicken and broccoli with steamed rice, and that was around 3 o'clock when I started. I don't know, like, was that around? Yeah, that was about around 3 o'clock or so. And um, then I just had a big chicken and macaroni meal and then snacked on some chickpeas and a yogurt bar. So that was two big meals today. Let's see. But yeah, that probably put me up to about the 2000 calories. There are pretty some high calorie meals there. Uh, yeah, I'm probably at about 2000 calories. Uh, no, I don't actually send coins in to be graded. I probably could put a bunch aside and eventually do it, but I never really got into it. <laughs> yes, Rob, seven hour stream. I wasn't here for about half an hour of it. I left to go to the grocery store. Do you think you will ever finish the junk pile at the farm from a couple of years ago? Um, so I did. Um, there wasn't, it didn't go much further. I did dig it. I did take one, uh, a few hours to finish digging it out this winter uh, on a day. Um, and there was not a whole lot more. It didn't go a lot further. I got maybe another 20 to 25 bottles out and they were pretty much mostly the common ones. Um, but I can do a wrap up sometime possibly of once I get them all sorted. Um, so I did finish that. Not going to do a video on it. Cause like I said, I, it, it took me a lot of effort to reopen the hole and um, I didn't find much else. It ended. Um, I did try to start filming some of it, but it didn't get very interesting. So I didn't really ever get to editing and posting it. Um, but there wasn't anything else too interesting. I knew I was close to the end of it before. Um, but yeah, that was fun. It was on my property.
you had chicken and broccoli as part of your program dinner. Yeah, I had chicken and broccoli with steamed rice right from the Chinese place. Nice on the first place. Awesome, Rob. Awesome on your video. What happened to that girl that used to metal detect with you? Do you mean back in 2015? Well, yeah, that's the only, yeah. So that would have been, yeah, that was Nikki. So she lives in Colorado. Once in a great while, I'll talk to her on Facebook. Like she'll ask me what I'm up to or something, but we don't, we haven't really kept in touch too much, but um, they lived, um, lived in Tennessee here for a while and uh, she lives in Colorado now. Well, maybe we'll play the hostage game here. If somebody super chats any amount, I'll stay for another five minutes. Maybe we'll end the stream out like that. Oh, but I'm going to give anyone a last chance here. So before I call it, um, let's see here. Let me make sure I have this right before I do this, because this has been on for so long. Let me make sure I have this right. So yes, it was Rick Howell that has the highest super chat so far tonight for $22.50. This is the prize going out to the highest super single super chatter tonight. This is a one ounce bar of 0.999 fine lead. It's got the rhinoceros on there. So I'm going to call it. If somebody sends the super chat higher than Rick's, of 2250 you're going to get this because that's when I'm going to call it. Otherwise, he gets it. And don't feel bad if you beat him because I told him I'd send him something anyway, even if he's not the highest. But I figured I'd show that. It's really fun. It's from a mint that closed down, a private one from a long time ago. I used to have a bunch of these different exotic bars. This one's from the CMC mint. But it is, you can actually bend it. I mean, it's lead, but uh, it's pretty cool. So, this is your last chance to get the 999 fine chunk of lead. This is your last chance. Haven't shown that in the last couple hours, I don't think. I completely forgot about it. Tyler, are you falling asleep? Hang in there. I actually, now that I ate, I've got all kind of energy. I'm like ready to go right now. I'm like, let's go. And let's see. Yeah, I have been here for a while. We're going on seven hours and 20 minutes here soon. I'm running out of motivation, but I do have energy though. I'm just getting kind of, I've been here too long, getting kind of bored of just chatting. Would have been nice if we had some. Oh, yeah. So I'll do a recap of the coins for anybody who's just here. Who's who, if, if you don't want to watch it back. Um, did, well, does it is there anybody here that wants to watch it back? I won't do it because it'd be a spoiler. Um, I could show you all like the good stuff. And now, I, I mean, I have a big bag of half dollars from the 70s now from that hoard where I can go through and look for rare um, varieties and stuff. So that may be a separate stream. I may do it just on my own time. I'm not sure. Yeah, Linda, you were here. I mean, you came in at the very beginning.
Yeah, you came in early on, that's for sure. <laughs> Fallen Man said me too. Yeah, you've been here most of the time too. I can't, it really flew to, it doesn't feel like that long. Maybe it was the break that did it because I went over to Walmart. That's what I need to do from now on. I probably need to start early, just leave the stream for an hour, let everybody wonder where I'm at, and then come back. Because I like, I, I got like my second wind. I got like my second wind. And I probably had more energy earlier because I almost never stream while it's still like daylight out. So that was kind of weird. Yep, AAP, you've been here too. Actually, yeah, it's been the, the three of you have been here a very long time. Very long time. I'm going to zone out here for a minute and just check a few things on my end. And get ready for all this for the stuff I got to send out tomorrow here. Make sure everybody gets the stuff I said I would send them. Pause. Yes, I still use my metal detector. I just haven't gotten any videos up recently. <laughs> That's okay, Paula. Gotta have a cheat day every once in a while. How's the bike looking in the garage? Um, I actually... Um, moved the antique bike and I'm planning on just giving it a really good clean and um, I actually moved it into the farmhouse to decorate with um, since I'm no longer using my office up there I still use the upstairs that place there and my parents use the downstairs so I have like a spare bedroom up there and an office that my dad uses too I let him use that office up there um, but I put it up there so it looks kind of cool now because I needed to clear some space out of my garage to get ready for some other stuff and I have a lot of yard equipment and detecting equipment and all sorts of crazy stuff. So um, I actually put it up in the farmhouse to give it that more of the antique look. And it looks kind of cool. Been doing some interesting things. Dun, dun. Yeah, I may as well finish cleaning cleaning up while I'm just hanging out and getting ready to end the stream here soon. We'll save my BRB sign for next time. I will be right back. I'm taking my garbage out.
got anything in, interesting in the chat to talk about, let me know what you guys want to talk about while I'm hanging out here a little bit. Cause I've completely run out of ideas. Um, because I'm losing, uh, not concentration. I've just been on here so long. I'm just on autopilot. So if anybody has any interesting to talk about, let's talk about it. Keep from snacking is the hardest part. Uh, yeah, I'm a munchy monster. Anything that crunches, I'm down for. Anything that crunches. Crunchy, crunch, crunch. And it doesn't help when one orders pizza and the other brought cake. Yeah, that doesn't help. But pizza and cake isn't a great mix. Um, that's a hard question, though. It depends on how hungry you are, where if you'd rather go for the pizza or the cake. Um, hmm, that's a tough one. Oh, I guess it depends what kind of pizza and what kind of cake. Rob, that's usually how it works. It's, it's the cravings normally come at night. That's when I, I get the munchies around, like, as soon as I slow down at night, I'm like, oh, yeah, I could get something munchy. You know, I'm getting spaced out when I start humming to myself or whistling. I'm just doing something on my phone real quick. You lost 20 pounds in two weeks. Awesome. That was random, Vaughn, man. <laughs> I have some sugar-free pudding in the fridge made, but there are vanilla wafers in the cabinet. <laughs> Rob, why don't you put the vanilla wafers in the pudding? You're missing a great opportunity here. That'd be like... I mean, you're missing a big opportunity. <laughs> That's like banana pudding. Then put a few banana slices in there. You got banana pudding ready to go. Man, you know how long it's been since I had banana pudding? You're making me really hungry now. I want banana pudding. Man, wafers and pudding, man, that's good stuff. Sixty pounds in two years, awesome. AAP, I'm glad you and your wife are feeling better. I it, it's one of those nasty things. I told my mom to be really, really, really care careful because she's having respiratory issues. Long story short, some of the doctors think that when she was young, she had a rib removed and they're thinking it's causing complications with her lungs now later in life. And I, I told her she does not want to get it because it, you know, it's a more of a respiratory virus. It really hits your lungs hard. So I just told my mom to be really, really careful, try to stay away from crowds. You know, if she goes places, make sure she's really masked up and my dad too, especially because I don't want him to pass it to her either. Yep, banana pudding with vanilla wafers is yummy. But like for me, I mean, I, I just assume I'll eventually get it at some point in life and I'm not concerned about it because I'm young. And um, But I still try to use common sense. Like when I go out into businesses and stuff, I wear a mask and try not to touch my face before my hands are washed and that kind of stuff. But
Yeah, Linda, that's the strange thing about it. It's it's really, it does seem to be something that really more so is focusing on individuals who are very advanced in age, like seven or like above 70 or people that have, you know, um, comorbidities. So it, it, it does seem to be, it's, it's almost like it's mostly affecting people who are already not well or very ad advanced in age. And of course, the different variants, there's some slight variation, it seems there, but mostly it seems to affect just the transmissibility. Um, but of course, it doesn't sound like a breeze, like something you don't want to get. But I've heard for a lot of people, too, the uh, response to the jabs is uh, some people get really, really sick for a few days from that. And that's that's a little bit uh, concerning, too. I've known some people that uh, have gotten really sick from getting the jabs. Um, so the whole situation is not ideal. Sounds good, Rob. Yeah, you Rob, you just got a sore arm. Yeah, I know some people have gotten felt felt pretty ill for for like two or three days. Has your brother ever been on your videos? Um, no, because um, he still lives in Pennsylvania. And I the only time I've gotten to see him in the last many years was in 2019 uh, when I went back up to Pennsylvania and I filmed that YouTube video. But I didn't like put him in the video because that was like a whole separate thing when I was visiting him. Um, so the only time I've seen him recently, I, I didn't get him in a video. Um, but no, he doesn't do YouTube. So he, I can't remember the name of it. So he was in the uh, Marine Corps uh, for several years. When he got out, he went back to his old job. He's done a lot of work uh, working at a greenhouse and then he eventually quit that. And um, now he's working uh, on, um, I can't remember the name for it, but he basically works on telephone lines and uh, stuff like that. He went to school for that and now he travels uh, all over Pennsylvania and sometimes other states, he gets sent on jobs all over the place to work, work on telephone lines and stuff like that. But no, he's never made a YouTube video in his life. Yeah, AAP, the same thing both ways with a lot of these issues. It's, it is really sad how things get so polarized. It's like, to me, I mean, it's a health decision. People have got to make their own educated uh, decisions. A lot of people focus more on belief on the science. Other people are more into holistic medicine and letting their body do its own thing. I, I can see rationality for both. And not to want to get into the topic too in depth, but I just think it's really sad that people make a big deal out of it either way. I mean, it's, it's, I think people should just in this specific topic, you know, make the choice that's best for your conscience and, um, you know, just don't hammer anyone else for not thinking the same way you do that you do. Now, I think there's a lot of topics where I just flat out agree with a lot of people, but when it comes to this, it's quite a complex issue. And, um, like if you go on like the odds of something, here's the, I guess here, here's one thing that I do. I will say that I think is odd about this, um, whole thing, um, and how quickly it came about but because we know it's in government's issues to have people jabbed because they don't, they want things to return because they get a lot of the backlash when the economies aren't going well and stuff. So across the board, most governments are always putting it out there. Get it, get it, get it, get it. And the interesting thing is I can especially understand it for people who are older or, or who have pre-existing conditions that they would have a very high chance of not doing well if they uh, got it. But the strange thing is 
for people in my age group who are very healthy, the, the data shows that someone like me in my age group who is very healthy would literally have like a 0.01% chance of, of not making it. And at that point, I've had, I had the worst strain of the flu that circulated in America for a very long time in 2018. Um, and that was really, really, really bad. So your odds of like dying from something like that are similar. It, like I said, within certain parameters. So I don't see why someone like myself in my age group, in my, in my condition would want to get something, um, that there is known side effects uh, because even, even most doctors admit, even the ones that are pro jab, they admit that um, fighting off something naturally is the best way to a build build immunity to something. So they know. So they tell, like I know some credible doctors who have said, like, well, like if you've already had it and you have the antibodies, why on earth would you get it? Because you already have natural protection. And it seems like it's just really getting promoted. Like, uh, like governments want everyone to get it across the board, all age groups from young to old, even if you've already had the virus, it seems, it seems like there's just a bit of a frenzy. You know, I, I think it's being pushed very, very, very hard. Uh, and, and I don't think it should be pushed as hard as it is. But I think a lot of people fall into the category of, well, they want herd immunity. So they want as many people to get it as possible. Um, so it actually works. So at that point, like, how do you know that many people are going to get it anyway, unless you try to make something mandatory in which a lot of people would rebel? I know I'm rambling now, but it's kind of, it's interesting. Um, it's interesting. I choose not to. I mean, actually, since I was, I had a few th when I was younger. Um, but I think, I know my parents forewent a lot of the normal ones for me when I was younger, but I haven't had one since, oh my goodness. I mean, since my single digits. Um, and I've been metabolically very healthy through most of my life, except for nerve damage I had, but that was not from like not being healthy or from like a, an illness or something that was nerve damage from rapid, like from really bad tooth decay when I was young and my diet and hygiene wasn't as good. And I had complications from dental work that caused me issues with like my ear um, and some things with tinnitus and various things. But Americans don't like to be told they have to do something. Yes, that's very true. Very true. Now, AAP is cool. He's just putting out his opinion. Yeah, I don't. He doesn't really. He doesn't really argue and get into it with people. I'm. I'm cool with everybody putting their opinion. I think most of us in this chat have been very, very good at being able to put our opinions out, but not fight with each other, which I think is awesome. Now, I do think there are some people. Um, thank you, Indiana Tones, for the 199 super sticker. I'll give you a dunk in a second here. Um, <laughs> now that we're getting into these type of talks, my uh, I probably will get this stream demonetized, but uh, that's okay. But um, I actually do think for some people way up uh, – there are some depopulation agendas, but I don't think it's widespread. I, th I think that's a very small group of hyper elitists that really care about that type of thing. I don't, I, I don't think you can, I don't think that's as prevalent in America though. There's people all over the world that pull strings. Um, of course there's some tr a little bit of truth in just about everything, but I don't think that's the widespread issue. Let's do a dunk for Indiana. Please. Oh, I didn't even put it down. Okay, try this again. Oh, well, that's good. She couldn't even see it anyway. I didn't have the rim down. Oh. Ah! I, 
I agree. I think, I mean, there's a lot of people that are very sound. There's a lot of people that are even pro jab uh, that have been holding off on this one because a lot of, a lot of people don't want to be the guinea pig. I know a lot of people that were even all for them wanted to hold off and waited to see how things pan out. That makes sense, Linda. Um, that makes a lot of sense because actually um, uh, any type of – my understanding of things is actually any type of painkiller like ibuprofen or something, if you take it when you have a virus, it can actually make it worse. I did learn that. So that makes sense that they would say before that as well because um, I had an instance once – actually, this was when I had the strain of the flu that I gave to my mom and it almost killed her. Um, a lot of people don't talk about it. 60,000 people in America died in 2018 due to a, a severe strain of the flu. And I caught it when I was traveling and um, I had a massive headache and I took some, a, quite a bit of ibuprofen before I realized I had a virus and it wasn't just a headache. And I think it made it a lot worse, but yeah, any type of painkillers you're not supposed to take for viruses, I believe that cause it can make it worse. Um, yeah, they can actually make things worse. So that makes sense. Now, of course, I'm not a doctor. I'm just saying things that I've heard. You have to know what you're doing. <laughs> nice bird dog. Steven, wait till you watch on a little bit further. I got some, uh, I'm not sure if you got to the part where Robert actually sent me a really awesome pair of gloves. I have them put away now, but I got a really awesome pair for coin roll hunting now. Yeah, Linda, it's definitely more complicated when you're on stuff too. But yeah, man, I, I think this, uh, I was just talking some earlier on some other channels um, and, um, that are more in current events and stuff. And a lot of people know my beliefs and my angle on stuff, but I, I've also been thinking it hit me really hard in 2015 when I um, saw that this, this YouTube age and this uh, rampant increase in technology and social uh, interaction, I saw where it was kind of headed and uh, it's kind of eroding principles at the same time. It's uh, inflating egos. And also it opens up the world to a lot more propaganda for people who don't know how to utilize information. And there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I think this world is going to be headed for some very difficult times. And, um, man, I tell you what, guys, this isn't the realest I've been studying the real estate market recently, and uh, I'll just share a little bit about this because I'm into this type of stuff. It's really nuts. I've never seen the perfect storm of making prices go up. So I'll go through this a little bit. I'll explain this. So there are certain areas in the country that are definitely benefiting more than others. So there are some trends of people leaving high tech states more liberal leaning states and moving to lower tax states and warmer weather states. There's kind of a lot of nuance there about why and where. Um, so that's been happening for a while, but the virus really exacerbated that. So there's a lot of people getting out, getting out of New York, uh, going to places like Texas, especially as Texas seems to be the hotbed right now, but generally the, the warmer tax free states, but Texas is the big magnet right now. Still a lot of people coming here to Tennessee and, of course, Florida. Um, so home prices 
in my area, like at home prices in Tennessee and Texas, Florida have already been going up over the last several years and doing very well. So they were already naturally going up by just having more people move there. And the existing markets have been already quite solid, even with outside influence. Um, so also for Tennessee, people have been fleeing some of the coastal areas too. That's another reason why some more people have been coming here, but more specifically, Nobody knew when this all started, this pandemic, how it was going to pan out. A lot of people were very afraid of the real estate. They thought there might be a big drop. But what happened was it created a huge shift from commercial real estate into residential real estate. So resident, I mean, so commercial real estate got hammered. A lot of it went down in value a lot. And of course, brick and mortar storefronts, who wants to open something when the future is uncertain? And a lot of places went out of business. So commercial real estate got hammered. And, but what happened after the initial lockdowns last year, the housing market kind of stalled for a little bit to, in, in a wait and see. But right after the lockdowns were listed in most states, real estate didn't just go back to normal. It like excelled past normal. And I, one of the reasons for that is that people started working remotely and, um, prizing more time of being distanced from other people. They started to really realize, hey, my lifestyle is based on a city and now I can't go out anymore. Now I'm crammed in this little apartment that I'm renting. So a lot of people wanted to own their own house or have a nice place that they can work from if they're working remotely. So there was a rush into especially the rural real estate or semi-urban like suburban real estate. So the already strong market in some of these Southern tax-free states saw even more of a boom. People stopped selling their houses and then other people, like some people stopped living, listing their houses and then other people were looking to buy. So it started to even cause more of a um, more demand than supply. So prices started to go up from that. And then if that wasn't enough and things were already starting to take off and be a seller's market, then when the lockdowns happened originally and everybody was unsure, um, lumber production went way down because people were expecting to man, demand to drop. The exact opposite happened. And when people got stuck at home, Lowe's was blown out. People doing DIY projects. And now with the real estate boom, now people are building a lot. And it were coming out of this. So the lumber companies and producers – started to fall behind on demand. And now two by fours are like $9 a piece. So it adds like $30,000 if you want to build to a house. So that's pushing more buyers. Instead of wanting to build their own house, they want to buy existing houses. It's getting to a point in a lot of areas where people don't care of what shape it is. They don't care if it's got mold and it's old and it's they don't know what they're doing. They just want a house. So you have... The lumber issue, the lumber skyrocketing in value for many reasons, pushing people away from building new homes and moving into the single family market. You have the fact that people have already wanted to stay home. The fact that the markets have already been strong. And I'm not stopping there. This is literally a perfect storm. Then when Biden announced this whole tax change thing that we all knew was coming and he's doing this trying to high end to hit the rich heavier, like the a million and above income earners. He's trying to raise the long-term capital gains with the surtaxes to like 43% instead of 15%. And this is toying with the real estate market. So now big giant investors that were in these like hundred unit apartment complexes and different stuff, they can't leverage it the same way. And they're seeing this boom. So now big investors, people from out of the country, well, that was already happening. But investors from China have already been pouring a lot of money into the United States. Um, and now big companies and a lot of entrepreneurs that are small end millionaires that are making, you know, on the low end of a millionaire, probably one to 10 million, you know, they're all of it in big businesses, Zillow, um, the, the um, just so many people, people from Wall Street, all of a sudden, they don't want these big, huge units anymore. They went in the single family market. So what's happening is now all of this perfect storm put together, say 
I'm an average person and say, say there's a young couple in their twenties and they want to buy a house and they're in an area where the market's booming and they have all this competition because of all the reasons I put out there. Like it's going to be unaf- unaffordable. It's, it's turning into another bubble. It's not a bubble yet, but in some big cities, it's going to become a bubble. But right now it's, it's ridiculous. I can't, I don't know how long this is going to go on. Some of it's natural, um, the demand increasing. So it's not just a bubble. There is some actual organic demand um, going into all of this. So I'm careful not to say, well, it's a bubble, but this is all mixed with the fact that there's been so much money pumped into the economy also over the last year through the stimulus bills and stuff like that, that inflation is going to occur. And how that inflation gets infused in is has yet to be, be seen. It's kind of hard to follow right now because there's are a lot of things going on. Inflation, they usually try to hide it, but it has to go somewhere. So there's a lot of things happening. And this real estate thing is just absolutely crazy. Um, but I've never seen such a perfect storm of like the mishap in the lumber industry with the shortages mixed with tax policy changes mixed with a natural booming demand, you know, mixed with certain states being the beneficiary of a relocation, like an exodus out of certain states and certain climates. It's been absolutely wild just to watch. Like I'm here, I've lived here in Tennessee. I live in an area that's not very populated and the real estate here has still gone up like 15% in the last like a year and a half or two years. Um, actually more so a year and a half. That, I mean, that's crazy. All right, Rob, see you later. Yeah, Indiana Tones, I can see that. Yeah, there's some areas like, um, and, and I've looked into it a little bit too, because I don't really know. I, I'm very careful to say what's happening in other states I'm not familiar with, but I did listen to a few people that seemed to know that they were talking about. And like, I don't want to make it sound like there's a max a mass exodus out of like high tech states. There are people leaving, but there's also more people going to those states too. But I did hear in California, it appears that the, they're getting hit the hardest on the um, ultra luxury homes, like 2 million plus, but their market in the, in the 2 million and under range is still very, very solid. But I think in this time in history, it it seems like, especially in the States that are struggling uh, with keeping people in the, uh, the tax um, laws and the government's getting worse. Is this the ultra, uh, the ultra rich homes are taking a massive hit in California. That seems to be what I'm, Hearing, I can't, I haven't confirmed that, but it seems to make sense. Basically, the markets are booming in the affordability level all across the middle class. So all over the country from the, like, you know, from the $50,000 houses up to getting close to 2 million. But of course, in most areas, what's really booming is anything that's 500,000 and below. In my area, there's not a lot of wealth. So for my area, it's more like the homes that are 300,000 and below that are really moving. Um, Not quite half a million around here. There's not a lot of people throwing around half a million dollars where I live, you know, in Northeast Tennessee, not a lot of people throwing around half a million here, you know, not getting a loan for half a million, not the average person, certainly. But in California, that's normal. Indiana Tone said, I live in the suburbs of NYC. Our borough is bombarded by city folks because they want a backyard. They are outbidding others. Exactly. No one wants to be cooped up in a small apartment with no backyard. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. I think some people are saying, well, be careful. You know, people buying these homes, once everything goes back to normal, the market's going to get an oversupply and it's going to reverse. I don't think so. I actually, I do think a lot of this trend is actually organic. Not all of it. I think there's some inflation hidden hidden in there. Like I said, tax manipulation going on that are causing investors to pour money into it. So yeah, can prices go back down? Can things get stagnant? Yes. But 
I don't think we're going back to the levels that were a few years ago because I think there's enough of an organic move here and a change of people's lifestyle that I think part of this is the new normal uh, as far as people, how people view real estate. Like you said, they just want, even if it's a tiny backyard in a not so nice neighborhood, they just want some space. They don't want to be cooped up in a city center that's all locked down. They can't go anywhere. They're worrying about being more distanced from other people. They're working from home and they're being a little apartment and they're going nuts because they're, you know, working from home in this little box all day. It changed a lot of people's lives. And I don't know if anybody remembers when I moved to a more rural area in 2017, I told everyone in 2016 after being living too much of a city life for a while that I felt like I was dying in, inside. And I knew that uh, in bad scenarios, um, when there's civil unrest, it's the major city centers that always see the most violence and the most upheaval. And I saw the way a lot of things were heading. And I said, you know what, before any of the protests and riots started, before it even started, or I could say it was just beginning to and start, like after the 2016 elections and stuff like that. I was like, you know what, I saw where things were heading and, and, and I was already getting tired of it. It was wearing on my soul, being in the constant traffic all day, the craziness. And I'm like, I want to get out. And I got out um, and I didn't even live in a big city. I mean, a lot of people know Knoxville, still a pretty nice place, even in the urban areas. But even that was wearing on me. And I'm like, I want out. I was thankful that I found a cool place. Um, just very thankful that I was able to find a cool place up here, Northeast Tennessee, close to the Virginia border, fell in love with this area, had that amazing opportunity to buy the farmhouse. Um, and, um, I, I just am super thank, thankful for it. But anyway, just to give everyone an idea, I, I am thankful I put money into real estate um, and have always in Tennessee owned my own home. So just for example, I'll tell, tell everybody I don't mind. Um, so when I moved into the farmhouse in 2017, I paid 188000 for the farmhouse. And at the time... That was a very unique property, but on a square footage and acreage basis, I paid top dollar at the time. I paid what it was worth um, because I really liked it. And it was still a fair deal. It wasn't overpriced, but I paid I paid what it was worth. Um, and that was in 2017. So the farmhouse, with it's only one acre there. The only reason I was able to afford it at the time is because it was subdivided off of an original farm. If it was the whole like 60 acres, I wouldn't have bought it because it would have been like half a million dollars or something. So, um, well, more than that for 60 usable acres. But anyway, land's expensive here in Tennessee. Um, so I paid 188,000 for it in, 20, in, in the end of August in 2017. So the property now is worth about 250,000. So, in all of 18, 19, 20. So in about three and a half years, um, it went from 188 to about 250. So it's pretty substantial. Um, how high is Nashville? How is Nashville? Nashville has absolutely gone nuts. I only ever visited Nashville twice and I hated it because of the constant traffic. Um, but yeah, properties in Nashville have gone through the roof. When I was there like a couple years ago, they were building condos downtown and advertising like like 800 like 900 square foot condos for like $750,000 and that was like 4 years ago. Um like 4 years ago, the 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 single family houses, the three bedroom, two baths out in the suburbs were like starting to push 400,000. Um, so I couldn't tell you what Nashville looks like now because I haven't followed it, but I'm sure it's absolutely booming. The only thing I kind of regret, I was stretched really thin, but I wish I would have had the, I wish I would have really thought about it at time and not have sold my condo in downtown Knoxville, the historic one that I lived in because it was super easy to maintain. It was in like a brick fortress. It was in an old school. It was completely fenced, really tame. And um, 
when I moved out of Knoxville, I sold that for 125,000. Even though I got an offer for 135, the the market was moved so well even a few years ago there that the tax appraisals were lagging behind badly. So you could only sell it if it was a financed offer. You could only sell it for what the bank told you it was worth. But I decided to sell it anyway, which helped me buy the farmhouse. But now I didn't check, but I sold that in 2017, early 2017 for 125,000, that condo, which ended up being a really prime piece of real estate. I checked two years ago and it was already worth about 160. So I'm thinking right now that my condo, um, that I sold would actually be worth a minimum of about 180,000 right now, potentially more. Um, so that one, if I would have just rented that out, cause the rent was really high downtown too. I could have probably got for that beautiful loft. I probably could have got 13, $1,400 a month. So in retrospect, if I would have rented that out for four years and then sold it, I would have made a lot of money. Um, but I did well, you know, I put the money into the farmhouse and it's not like I completely missed out. It's so, um, but looking in retrospect, man, I was sitting on a little miniature gold mine there, but yeah, it's great. You know, I'll be honest. It's nice just to live in the area that's being a beneficiary of just growth. Um, and just, you know, being in a place that that's thriving, here in Tennessee, because I literally grew up in a rust belt town where it was just constant decay, things getting worse and worse and worse. And when I moved here, uh, it was just, it was just a whole different story. So like the house that my parents and I kind of moved in together, uh, that was a duplex, like a top and bottom floor. We bought it for $65,000. I mean, real estate in Johnstown where I grew up is dirt cheap still is. So we bought that property in like 2010 um, for 65,000. It's a two unit for 65,000. And it, it was in great condition when we got it, or at least good condition. 11 years later, it's worth the same. It's worth about exactly the same. I'm not kidding. That's how bad the market is there. No increase in over a decade. If anything, prices have actually trickled down a little bit. So of course, this real estate thing um, is dependent on where you live somewhat. But actually, even in, even there, well, the market's really bad. I've talked to my realtor from up there. I'm in the process of selling that last property in Pennsylvania. I couldn't even get somebody to look at the house, like to, sh to, to schedule a showing. Um, but I'm working on phasing out of that last property up there. And um, even up there, the real estate people, even though the price points are a lot lower and the market's not as good, people started buying houses to have more space. So it's even in, happening in little towns and in, in towns where the economy is absolutely terrible. People are, there is an organic move of people trying to buy their own homes right now. And it's even in bad areas and in small towns. All right. Well, I, I hope any of you garnished something from that chat. I enjoyed it anyway. I like talking about real estate. I'm really into real estate. You can still get 40 acres in upper Michigan for 18 K. That's awesome. So like 40 usable acres here, um, AAP, uh, 40, well, it's once you get into the higher range, like you start to get a deal for the, the volume of it. Um, but like 40 acres here, I mean, is easily 40 usable acres here is easily like 10,000 an acre. Um, it's super expensive. Like I said, it varies on where at and like the type of terrain, like the usability of the land. Good night, Paula. Why have you gotten three boxes of full 21, 21 halves every roll? I don't know, but you're saying, wait, you, you've gotten three boxes of all 2021s. I would have definitely kept one of those. You might be able to resell them for a pretty penny. 
they must be pumping out some initially pretty neat. Not if you're looking for silver, though. Three in a row, yeah, that's not cool. But I don't know. If you piece them out on eBay, you might be able to sell them on circulated 2021 rolls for some above face value. True, Dave. If the population continues to increase, uh, yes, land goes up. But a lot of people now, this probably won't play out for many decades yet, but there is a, a pending demographic crisis that will eventually hit this world. And with modern economics, it's going to hit hard. It's going to hit hard. If, if you look at the projected um, populated population uh, charts and stuff like that, I can't remember, but in, in many decades, Nigeria is actually um, predicted or projected to be the most populated country in the world. Yes, I said Nigeria. I think they're having an average of like eight kids per uh, woman, which is absolutely insane. It's a, obviously a different cultural thing. Most of them start having kids for sure by the time they're 18, and that's they're encouraged to do that. So Nigeria eventually is projected to be the, as China's one child policy hits hard, like Japan's demographic crisis, it's going to start hitting China. Um, it's stagnant to lower in a lot of Western countries. It's not like off a cliff, but it's not like really increasing either. Like a lot of Western countries are flat kind of, um, but there's going to be a lot of shifts in the next several decades. And when this world reaches its peak, it's not a peak population yet, but the way things are headed, it's still upward. But man, I can't imagine for the next generation, um, the next generations after me, whenever the demographic crisis hits there, I can't, I've always thought about this, the world when the, the population say decreases by like half or something like that. We're talking shaving billions off. Of like I can't imagine just all the abandoned places and infrastructure that's going to be all over the world, especially in certain areas, especially in certain areas like Japan and China and crazy stuff like that. I think about all this. I mean, I think that's when the world's going to be through some major, major, major problems. Is when modern economics meets the the end of what they think is infinite growth. The two. It's the one thing I focus a lot is this demographic thing and how it course correlates to economics. When those two things are no longer compatible, when this phase of what people think is infinite growth, what what government government wants wants to do, keep importing people and you know keep just increasing more and more and more. When the demographics go off the cliff, that whole game, that whole economic game of who can print the most money and who can uh, have a debt-based economy. It all, it all goes. It all goes with it. Yeah, Dave, you'll, you'll uh, probably be gone by then. It seems like that issue um, is probably – I mean, I can't say when it's going to start, really. There's so many things that can push it down the road or make it quicker, but I don't think that's going to majorly hit for probably – 30 years. I'll probably be in my 60s by the time that starts to really hit off, take off. But um, I think that's going to be like one of the most major events of human history. I think it's probably going to be one of the darkest times that the world has ever seen. And I don't think it's more than, I think for certain, it's going to be full force within the next 60, 60 years around in there could start sooner, especially if everything starts to fall apart before then, which is very possible, which is very possible. So are you all having a good day? Not a very lively discussion. <laughs> I hope you're all enjoying it, though. You got to hit some heavier topics. It's been a while since we hit some heavier topics. Yeah, and eventually, I think coins will be done away with eventually. I think eventually the world will be mostly digital, if not completely. Um, 
it's taking, it's going to take longer than I think some people are projecting because generally a lot of people changes are just technology is increasing that up, but I think that's not going to go as fast as some people anticipate, but I do think it is coming. I remember it was 200 an acre around here and now it's 5k plus. Yeah, pretty crazy. And that's why in certain markets around here, people always subdivide the old houses off because nobody wants to just buy a, a, a two bedroom, two bath house that has like 50 acres with it, unless it's like an actual farm. Um, so that's why most people subdivide the acres off and just sell the, the plot with the house on it. So they sell the house and keep the land until they get a good offer for it. That's what really happens here in Tennessee most of the time. Like I said, which is why I was able to afford the farmhouse in 2017 when I bought it. Yeah, I think especially here in America, if you buy the right land, the right real estate, I mean, especially if it's usable land, like for agriculture, if it's agricultural land, I don't think you can go wrong because especially if supply chains and um, things get complicated in the future, your, your land is literally going to be like gold. I mean, obviously, you just have to have to hope it doesn't turn into a Zimbabwe situation where the government says, all right, hand over your land. It's mine. It's mine. So, yeah, when you own land, you just got to keep the uh, you just got to hope somebody doesn't try to take it from you because people don't realize how valuable land is until it's needed. And then everybody wants it. But of course, that would have to be a very dire situ situation in America uh, because uh, for people to start getting their land grabbed from them in, the, in America, that would cause a massive uproar. But keep in mind, there are federal laws in place that if you know if somebody wants to put a road through where you live, they can force you to sell your land. Um, people, be careful where you buy. That's all I'm going to say. Be careful where you buy, that you're not in an area that the government has interest in. Be very careful because they can force the sale of your home. Remember that. We have much more rights than the objects and property that we think we own. So a lot of people don't know. And yes, there's a story behind this dollar bill. There was a bunch of $1 bills on the corner lot where I own the project property. And there was four $1 bills floating around. That's why this one's torn apart. Got hit by the lawnmower. But so... This changed a long time ago, and you can see on the top of here, these bills no longer say United States note. They say Federal Reserve note. So a lot of people know that you do not own, you do not actually own your, your money. It's not yours. You are permitted to trade with it. You are permitted to use it as a means of barter, which is why you're not allowed to deface it. It's not yours. Uh, if there is a suspected crime on your property, it can be seized by civil forfeiture laws. You as a person have much more rights than anything you think you own. If you think you own your house, you do not own your house. There's very few exceptions to that because of naturally yearly taxation. We are renters from the government. So there, there's fine exceptions to that. There are people that actually have properties that are free and clear of taxes, but that's a story uh, for another day. But generally, we do not own property. We do not own our own money. The Federal Reserve owns the money. And just like gold was confiscated, especially Federal re re Reserve notes can be confiscated legally. So um, just keep that in mind. Easy come, easy go. But thankfully in America, individuals still have a uh, fairly decent amount of rights, although the courts are eroding those. Uh, so we'll see where it all ends up. Um, but yes, we live in quite an interesting world. Awesome, AAP. I hope you stick with it. Yes, eminent domain that the government can take it. Yes, there's a lot of... Uh, pretext in which the government can seize your land. Now, at least there's some laws in place uh, 
based on eminent domain where my understanding of the laws is that's not a civil forfeiture. If they want the land, they have to pay you sort of around what the market value is for it. So they're basically forcing this. So there is is a big difference between them forcing the sale of your land or, you know, uh, confiscating it, you know, through civil forfeiture. That is a huge nightmare. And I've heard of some people, you know, gone through that. You hear of stories, but that still doesn't happen all the time. Normally, normally it's the forced sale of your property, which is highly more, hap- you know, palatable than having it um, confiscated from you. I'd, you'd obviously rather want to get the market value for it if you were going to have a forced sale. Exactly, Dave. When I learned a lot about economics, I realized that this is a measure of confidence. That's all it is because it no longer has any backing or intrinsic value. This is a measure of confidence. The people still have confidence in the U.S. dollar to some extent all over the world. And that's what keeps the scheme going. And I say scheme because, well, if it always had confidence, then they could always find a way to kind of keep it going. But this is a game of confidence. And if you learn about any economies in the future, when it's not when it doesn't have any real value behind it, the problem is when that confidence leaves, the value leaves with it. So when will the time in history come? Because kingdoms comes and kingdoms, kingdoms come and kingdoms go. America will not last forever. That's fact. That's fact. It's a matter of if, not when. So the question is, when will this be worthy of toilet paper? And I can't answer that, but it will occur. It will occur. This will eventually be toilet paper. So the only thing holding this together at this point in history is confidence. Because behind the scenes, it's a very dismal state of affairs. So when the confidence leaves, people don't realize how fast. I mean, I have studied Zimbabwe's hyperinflation since 2010. And I'm thankful I got into that business because it really opened my eyes to a lot of things but about how fast when confidence leaves you can go from one dollar printing one dollar notes to 100 trillion dollar notes when hyperinflation hits it is a cascading effect that first the markets get in turmoil and then as soon as that confidence switch is turned off it just goes downhill fast so we're definitely not there yet in america i don't know how long Um, I think it can continue going on for quite a while yet. I don't know how much longer. It really just depends on futuristic events. Um, But like it could happen super quick, but they could probably stall it another 15, 20 years. I don't know. It just really depends on what happens and how, you know, if it gets worse and worse and worse. Uh, I think the bubble's getting bigger, but uh, I think they can, I think they can stave it off for a bit longer. All right, guys, I think I'm going to head out. So I appreciate all of you. (laughs) Vaughn Man said no. Okay, well, we'll give you a chance, Vaughn Man. I'll give everybody two minutes. If somebody sends a super chat, I'll play it. I'll stay for another five minutes. We'll play Keep Me Hostage. That's the only way I'm staying because otherwise I'm going. I'll give you, I've been here for eight hours and 18 minutes. You guys got till eight hours and 20 minutes to send a super chat of any amount. And I'll stay hostage for five more minutes. All right, Dave, have a good night. This is your last chance if anyone wants me to stay. Thank you, Linda. It was nice while wow, you're still here. Oh, yeah. Man, you've been here almost the whole way. Awesome.
Forensic man, I do not, not, okay, well, so, well, let's not get into another topic. I don't do the whole girlfriend thing, um, but uh, if if I find the right woman, then you will date or court her or whatever you want to say it with the intent of getting married. So I don't do the whole try out a girlfriend thing like you're trying on a pair of clothing. But uh, no, I have not met anyone yet that I would uh, share my life with. All right, time's running out. <laughs> Plug said the night's still young. It is, oh, it's actually 11.30. I've been here way too long. All right, so that's it. I need to go anyway, so I'm glad nobody sent a super chat. It's time for me to get out of here. It would have been funny if somebody did. It's always funny, but I'm out of here. It's been a good night. We all, what was our record live stream? We actually didn't make a record because I started early, but I'm leaving before midnight. What was the record live stream? I think it was nine and a half hours or something. Let me look here. It was nine hours and 20 minutes. I am one hour off the record, but I'm not going to stay. We'll do it another time. We'll, we'll make a record another time, not tonight. See y'all later. It's been fun. If you haven't, if you haven't, Make sure you watch the coin roll hunting part of this stream back. It was an, a rare opportunity that I probably won't get to do for a very long time, if ever again, going through coins that have been stored since the early 1980s, it appears. And I got to go through them. Very interesting coin roll hunt. I think you'll enjoy it. All right. I'm out, everyone. I'll see you all later. And hopefully I'll get some other content up soon other than these live streams. So stay tuned. Take care, everyone.